The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Watt Wednesday, December 13th. Wow. 2023, this sports program starts now. Football is not happening on this particular day, but it will be happening when week 15 kicks off in beautiful fashion. Tomorrow night. As... As the, the Chargers and the Raiders there's take there's on boom. each other. We, we're excited. <laughs> yeah. We so are excited. We are pumped up about it. Uh, obviously, that will be a great way to start a weekend that has NFL football on Thursday, what? Saturday, what? and Sunday. What? We will have the honor and the great fortune to be at the Steelers-Colts game, 4 o'clock Saturday. Woo. I don't know how we're watching a 1 o'clock game, but we're going to have to because the Bengals could continue to do something on this beautiful mm-hmm. AFC journey that they're having with backup quarterback Jake Browning, who can spin it. And then the Minnesota Vikings, welcome to the starting lineup, Nick Mullen. Yeah, yeah. Add to the number. Yeah, Nick. Then obviously Steelers, Colts, a couple backup quarterbacks there, one of them being Gardner Minshew. Need to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Need to watch that. And then the Denver Broncos take on the brand new Ooh. Lions. Well, Not as many people uh, eagerly getting to their microphones to say that <laughs> alongside of you now. <laughs> Lions have a chance to obviously turn this thing around after a couple weeks schneid. But what will MCDC have the boys doing? We assume answering. Speaking of answering, Denver Broncos, Sean Payton and Russell Wilson have done oh, yeah. as such. Same with Vance Joseph, defensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos, who was almost fired like five, six weeks into the season. Mm-hmm, yeah. They gave up 70 to Miami at yeah. one point. Russell Wilson in that offense was just as inept as it was last year with Nathaniel Hackett. Then you start looking at stats, it's like, wait a minute, Russell Wilson's actually not doing too bad. Oh, Carlin Sutton all of a sudden is becoming no. a E guy out there. Yeah, pretty good. And Sean Payton's back in his bag whenever he's calling plays. Look out for the Denver Broncos. Getting four in Detroit. Ooh. I, think yeah. one, I think they're one game back of the Chiefs. They are. Uh-huh. That feels tasty, doesn't it? But this could be the brand new lines. We should oh, see. Yeah. We got a great weekend, and we got a lot of conversation today. There's some rumors coming out in New England. We're about to dive Whoa, into yeah, in a few yeah. moments. We got JJ Watt joining Why? us. Another right. weekend from the past. Obviously, AJ Hawk will be here, and and all the other rumors and mm-hmm. congestion that's happening around football. We'll talk about. Hell yeah! There's a story that has led every sports media show. Yep. This morning, mm-hmm. I'm pumped about it. Out of the NBA, rightfully so. Good lord. See, what Ty just said I don't think is accurate. We are so confused on why. Mm -hmm. There was a 30-minute segment to lead off. A guy who's in two Hall of Fames, Mike Greenberg. Mm -hmm. Get up. Why Draymond Green conversation about him smacking a guy in the mouth last night in the middle of a basketball game. Yep, mm-hmm. okay. Draymond? Draymond Green did what Draymond Green does. Is this his yep. first time doing this? Or? Third time this season. Oh, not, okay. and, remember, and remember, we're not even at we're not even past All-Star break yet. It's not even Christmas. This is just standard operating procedure for Draymond Green, and we all know Draymond Green. He's the founder of New Media. Yep. Uh-huh. Remember yeah. Remember his yeah, guy? Yeah. Yep. Hashtag New Media, Draymond yeah. Green. Bingo. That, that's what he, while working for another person that's uh-huh. in the media company, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. doing that whole thing. This is Draymond Green stuff. Why is this? a 30-minute conversation. The way people led this off today with every single show, you would have thought that he would have went to the bench, grabbed a katana, and put it through someone's chest on the floor. A what? He grabbed a what? A katana. You just learned that name, it sounds like. What? What is that? I know. Katana is a, it's a beautiful sword. Samurai sword. Oh, yeah. Samurai sword. Yeah. It's like calm. Now, was I scrolling a katana. website last night? A great website. Nick and I scroll it all the time, and boy, do they have some great katanas on there. For why sure. are we scrolling sword website? What, what's yeah. going on? The it's not a place? sword website. It's one of those websites that have a lot of cool things, like you oh, know, a porn website. Close. Mm. 
That's what I thought. I mean, look, we know people not. say that's a lot of hot things. That's what they say. Oh, like, cool but like things. they have like the latest like tech gadgets, like cool watches, stuff like that. And you just scroll through it. And, and they had a katana on they it. They had a bunch of katanas. That's one half of the hammer. Don Cowboys tongue digs. It, they were acting like he grabbed the katana and stabbed somebody. <laughs> a little yeah. bit. This is like maybe the best thing Draymond Green's ever done. Mm -hmm. Like the nicest thing Draymond Green's ever done. Yeah. Remember, he did punch his own teammate. Right into another right planet, yeah. pretty yeah. much, at up. practice on film. This is Draymond Green basketball. I don't know what the big deal is, but we will certainly uh, not talk about that anymore. Uh, the talk stick was here <laughs> at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Nine-year NFL vet, host of Everything DB, and today, good day and bad, bad day. day. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into the big news story of the day. Yesterday, it was broke by the Greenlight Podcast with Chris Long's Twitter account mm -hmm. that Tommy Curran said on NBC Sports Boston that basically the decision's already been made. Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots are going to part ways mm -hmm. at the end of the season. That decision came after the loss to the Indianapolis Colts in beautiful Germany. Sure. Robert Kraft and the people that Tommy Kern talked to, he didn't say it was the Krafts, but the people he talked to in the building had decided at that point they're moving on from Bill Belichick. Since that point, not a lot of great has happened other than primetime win over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, yeah. So Tommy Kern basically mm -hmm. reiterated the fact on NBC Sports Boston that from his understanding and from his, it was like a matter of fact that they're moving on from Bill Belichick. Yes. Ty Schmidt, we obviously have relationships with Tommy Kern. Mm -hmm. We've seen him at his lake house. Sure. Mm -hmm. We've seen him at his house house. With yep. Bo. We've seen him at Bingo. Yep. We've seen him at work. We've seen him. We we know Tommy Kern. Oh, yeah. Tommy Kern's been covering the Patriots a long time. Tommy Kern has connections in the New England Patriots world. I said, I don't envy your position to Robert Kraft. What Tommy Kern was basically saying is that the decision's already been made. We reached out to him to get a little clarity. Mm -hmm. What did you learn in that conversation with him? He's saying this is just what's happening, or how did he kind of reiterate the message? message to you. Yeah, very similar to that. He basically said that as of that time in Germany that the decision kind of had already been made based on who he is talking to in terms of his sources. He didn't meant, he didn't say whether it was in the organization or it just sources that he has close to the team that would be in the know. And then he said uh, if he said now things could change. It's possible things could change. Uh, but he said you look at Post Colts game, like things haven't gotten better. Like, granted, they won on Thursday night. But oh, said, great win over Pittsburgh you know, Steelers. But he said Matt, Matt got benched, get beat by the Giants, get beat at home six nothing by the Chargers. So he said, yeah, you know things things could change. But as of the Germany game, when he was talking to his sources, the decision had already been made, and that's not like that's not his opinion, and it's not like necessarily a statement of fact either. But but from what he is hearing, like. That decision had already been made after the the Colts game in Germany. That tweet from Chris Long's Greenlight podcast. Yes, that one went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they went. It, it said per NBC too. Didn't even say like Boston. NBC Sports Boston, nope. which I think would have even more. Oh, it, oh yeah, would have amplified it all, which is where Tommy Curran is. They have since deleted that tweet. I think put another tweet out that kind of like reclarified it. Oh, is that but right? that thing went. Yeah. And yesterday, all of a sudden, I'm on the internet. And I'm just having a little time, mm -hmm. you know, and I just one one little refresh of the thing, and it was Bill Belichick's gone from New England pretty yeah. much. Decision's been made. That's pretty much what happened whenever Tommy Curran says this thing, and then it gets kind of amplified by everybody. How'd Boston and New England respond to this? I assume it got loud over there pretty quickly. Yeah, it, it got loud. I, I I think a lot of people are split on it just because, like we said on Monday, people don't really Hair looks sweet. That. That, thank you very much. It, it, That's it, at Boston College. It's finally here. It's finally got here. But... Uh, first thing with Tom Curran. That stash is good, too. Nobody, stash is really good, too. Thank you. Yeah. Nobody knows he found out the, the new ratio England. of the yeah, stash. Yeah, JC. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to the yeah. back porch yeah, barber. Yeah, shout he out. Got it. He got it. He nailed it. Yeah, the mustache looks yeah. really good. Yeah. Good to go. Is that about a 2 o'clock shadow? Yeah, so it was three? 1, actually. So there's more wolf? I've been going 2, but mm -hmm. it's it's a 1. He said 3-day three three day scruff. I want to yeah. let you know, you can even drop that down at noon. I was thinking about it. Mustache is really good. Just yeah. maybe just let that thing shine. Well, you know what I mean? Spotlight. Yeah, spotlight yeah. that thing. No, absolutely. I, I think I'm going stash beer just because the stash people already have. You know, I, mm -hmm. I got to do my own little flair with it. Mm. Par Parker McCollum, you know, uh, introduced light ranching into my life. Bingo. And then also uh, word curtain as a mustache. Type. I like that mm. one. That's sweet. Yeah. This, that was, this might be light stashing. 
That, that's what I was thinking. Oh, not bad there. You know? Yeah, how's the stashing up in New England, though, with the news that Tommy Kern basically said after the Germany game, lost to the Colts? Sorry about it. Oh, my God. It was a huge game. Was it the Colts? <clears throat> Could have been. Sounds Might like. Be. Oh, my God. This would be back that's back what Tommy here. Kern was reporting. I'll tell you what, Indianapolis Colts people need to hear that because there's a lot of bad days. Yeah, Kraft uh -huh. was like, oh, my days. God, we lost to the Colts. Well, and if you think about what Jim Irsay did last year against the New England Patriots. Bingo. Immediately after losing to the Patriots, you get out of here. And he hired an old, co old ball player, Jeff Saturday, to be yeah. Yeah. After the New England game. That's Beginning. funny to think that that rivalry felt like a genuine one, yeah. a real one. But let's go back to what Tommy Curran said in the reaction. Whenever yeah. that thing runs and everybody kind of across the football world hears that and just assumes like, okay, that decision's been made. How does New England react? Are they pissed at Tommy Curran for saying this? Or how, what is it all, you know? I don't think they're pissed because Tom, it, genuinely, you mentioned it. He's worked for, you know, covering the Patriots for 28 years, 27 years. And every year. That's a lot of sources. Yeah, a lot know? of sources. Well, a lot of a lot of people. Whoa, 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 whoa. How, how, how many sources are still around 27 years ago? Whatever, who cares? He wow. is spot on every year with how the team's going to do. So, like Tom Curran, when it comes to like the X's and O's of the Patriots, I personally believe he is one of, if not the best guy to listen to when it comes to expectations. I mean, shit, he came on last year and he talked about before the season. You know, this isn't a 10 win team. This is nine and eight, eight and nine. What they do, they went eight and nine. Max rookie year. He said if Mac could play well. This team is going to do well, 10-7, and seven, go to the playoffs. So when Tom Curran speaks about the Patriots team, I always listen because I genuinely believe what he says. When it comes to this and when it comes to anything that comes out of sources, and I believe the term was used, sources he had at the time in the know. What a ridiculous <laughs> statement. What, did a, you write notes? what an asinine thing to say. Uh, Even if it. that is you know, what the situation is, what a sellout buffoon type of thing to say. If you're going to report on something, report it and say, my source says, insert whatever bullshit quote you want. But to, to dance around it like that, I have a problem with. I wouldn't believe Jonathan Kraft if he came out and said, yeah, we've made a decision. Oh. It's going to come down to Bill and Bob sitting in a room and whatever thoughts were before that are out the door. It's essentially going to be like Kraft, Bill, and Tom when Kraft had to kind of mend the fences of Tom and Bill because there was that report that it did get pretty hectic in 2017. They mend fences. They win the Super Bowl in 2018, and then 2019 he leaves. But until that happens, no, I'm not going to listen to anything that comes out. They could report that the decision has been made every single week from here until the draft, and I won't believe it until – Bill Belichick's talking about it or Robert Kraft's talking about it. And that's just the state that it's in just because so much shit gets out. So much. How many times in the offseason do we have to dance around sources telling somebody about something, about a player that's entering the draft, about a relationship with the team, a la Stefan Diggs and the Bills? Like, sure, there can definitely be smoke where there's fire, and I would be an absolute idiot to say that there's no way he gets fired. That's a real situation, and it's possible. But – no, I'm not going to believe a source who is in the know at the time on an opinion that it could be right. Definitely, Tom, could 100% be right, and the decision could be made, and it could be done. That bill is gone, but it's very, very hard to believe that in the middle of a season to Bill Belichick, they decide, you know what? You lost to the Colts overseas in Germany with Mac Jones throwing two interceptions inside the 10-yard line. This one's on you, Bill. Time to go. Pack your, pack your shit. We're not, we're not sticking with it anymore. I just don't believe that. But Tom Curran, as a Patriots reporter, unbelievable best. I, I do love that you started that with – people aren't mad at Tom. No. no. People aren't, and then he wrote his quote down. And so what a buffoonery, <laughs> yeah. terrible, well, asinine, I believe you even threw in yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's – that's I don't know if the people feel that way because some people obviously do want a new regime and they, they do want to see a change. But me personally, as – Someone who comes on here all the time and we talk about reports and how much bullshit using fake sources or terminology like in the know at the time and how ridiculous that is. And I think it kind of seeing the tweets and other things get deleted, I think kind of shines a light on maybe how that article was received by, you know, the people through the ears of Tom Curran. Uh, and, you know, we'll see if he says anything today. I assume he's got a few shows to go on to to talk about it, which would make sense just because it is. That is, that is not what we heard. What? I don't, I don't think he's going. Tom's laying low today. <laughs> what? Really? He's, not, he's yeah. not doing any shows today? He doesn't have anything more to add. Oh, okay. He said in the know at the time. Yeah. 
Okay. So, okay. So he's kind of like, this is kind of like. But once again, Tommy Kern was probably just trying to answer a question yeah. that was yeah. handed to him. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not his fault that that's how he answered it. Now, granted, he should know that the fallout of that is going to be immense. Yeah, Tom. And the only reason why I think he should know that is because the reason why they started this thing is because I told Robert Kraft, oh. I don't envy your position. And he shook my hand. Mm -hmm. I didn't even ask a question, give a statement. I didn't even say, hey, I don't envy that you're going to have to make that hard decision to, you know, let him go. You know, that he might extend Bill Boat. That's a hard, that's not an easy thing right. to have to do right now, especially right. with how the conversation is going. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to move to a new quarterback, obviously. That's a whole other thing. And then if he is to let go, which I'm not saying he's going to, it's one of the potential opportunities. You have to let go of the greatest head coach and the great. You heard the way I, yeah. what yeah. I think. You have to let go of the greatest head coach and the greatest GM of all. Those are two roles mm -hmm. that you have to, that's not easy at all. No. I appreciate you bringing up the fact, though, that at some point they're going to get into a room together. Yes. And there's going to be a lot discussed. That was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. maybe, hopefully, even a little nostalgia. Oh, yeah. for sure. You know, because you're listening to Robert Kraft talk, and I got a chance to chat with him during a commercial break and obviously on the show as well. One of his first answers to uh, Herbstreit whenever he asked him about why all of his businesses do. The Patriots do good, but also he has a lot of other businesses, oh. and they all do well. And one of his big things is like loyalty, you know, like we mm -hmm. keep people around a long time. Like that's a big mm -hmm. part of our entire, uh, you know, a pillar of all of our businesses is people working for us for a long time. And so they know they get the culture, they do that whole thing. So it's like whenever you think about that and then you go back to the fact that I heard, I don't, I don't know if it came from him or somebody he was with, I think it was somebody he was with, uh, you know how many like home playoff wins they had in the first 37 years of the Patriots. Mm -hmm. It was like one. And, you know, in the last 30 years since this guy's been the owner, it's like 30-something or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's like a complete – and a lot of that is obviously because uh, during the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick era. For sure. So Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft have a lot of history. And then there was those quotes whenever the Tom Brady, Bill Belichick stuff was happening where Robert Kraft was going down an elevator and he was caught coming out of the elevator and he said, I got to go deal with the biggest asshole in my life, Bill Belichick. <laughs> and that like, boom, 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 this is how Robert Kraft feels. He's picking Tom Brady over Bill Belichick because mm -hmm. he doesn't like him. So there's been so much that has come out since Tom Brady's release. Yeah. I, you could tell Robert Kraft has great respect for Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. Very loyal and thankful for Bill Belichick. So this is not an easy time nope. at all for anybody. And he mentioned how this is it, 30 years on the team, never been like this mm -hmm. before. No. So once again, I don't envy your position having to do all this. In the end, if Bill Belichick stays, I think he wins. Oh, yeah. If Bill Belichick goes somewhere else, I think he wins. I think he's coaching, though. And I think that's what everybody around him has oh, said. Yeah. And could you fathom if he went somewhere else? It looks so weird. Weird. At, at this yeah. point, it looks so odd. But at the end of the day, you spoke about him business. He is to crab. He's still an asset, right? You still got one year left in his deal. So yep. even if he, you know, hey, negotiate your own trade, Bill, find a good trade. Obviously, Kraft will have to sign off on it. Yeah, first. Um, but I, I don't think I, I'm kind of with Connor here. I don't think this that decision will be made, you know, middle of the season. And then would it get out? Um, you know, they're so locked in on what's going on now. And obviously the the season's been shitty last couple of years, and then you get you know, you're Mac Jones, you don't have a quarterback. Where are you going to be in the draft? I don't see I don't see that decision being made and then getting out at some point. But I love your uh, – I love how fired up you are. Oh, yeah, he was jacked up on <laughs> Oh, yeah. The, I, uh -huh. I, I can't remember the last time Connor went to some notes and get an see. exact quote. That Let me was, see uh, what this awesome. – uh, well, Sources at the time in the no, – In the no. In the no. Yeah, you got yeah. so mad about it. Yeah, no, because it, it, it's frustrating. It is. Obviously not just that situation. Like, the Patriots being 3 and 10 sucks. Like, I haven't looked forward to a Sunday since week three, and that's when the Cowboys won, like, 30. But you've done a little reverse where you're like, yes. yeah, I want to lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this point, no, bingo. Like, I, I had to reframe this season in my brain completely because, you know, going into it, you always think, hey, we could squeeze out nine, ten games, no no doubt about and it. Get in the play. Once we get in the dance, who knows, our defense might just get hot. It happens all the time. But once you do get to the threshold of, okay, we're going to be a bottom five team and we need a quarterback, it's easy to pivot because then it's like, okay, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if they win or lose. If they win, it's hilarious because the other team's going to be pissed. You bringing up loyalty about Robert Kraft really didn't kind of kind of hit me or made me think until right now. Because of him saying that, if Bill were to leave, Gerard Mayo will be the next head coach because he was supposed to leave last year. Instead, he took a deal where he probably would have been a DC or at least uh, possibly a head coach, and he decided to stay. So if the Bill thing does leave based on what Bob said there, it is without a doubt Gerard Mayo. Why, then this is an honest question, why fire Bill if you're just going to stay within his Tree or yeah. someone that's already on the staff. Oh no, believe me. New I, voice. I agree. I just think the loyalty and yeah. 
New voice. I mean, I've, Gerard Mayo is beloved, you know, in the area, on the team, and the organization. And it will be a lot of the same things. I'm sure that he learned from Bill as a player and then been a, an assistant coach. But it will be a new voice. It will be a fresh voice, younger, uh, different, I guess more uh, with the – because things change. People change. Players change. Uh, different, you know, different dynamic within that building. But uh, I think Gerard Mayo will be it. Just Excellent to, choice. Just to give an example. I don't know Gerard Mayo. I assume he will be. And if he's loved in uh, town, you'll win the headline, too. You'll win yeah. a news conference whenever you sign him, the whole thing. But just to uh, reiterate kind of his point about a new voice, and I could see where you would you would think that, and maybe that's true in some places. Frank Reich had Sirianni in his tree. True. Then Sirianni goes to Philly. Yeah. Guess who's in history? Shane Steichen. Yeah. Shane Steichen comes to Indianapolis. Yeah. Completely different team than Frank Reich, who's the main – he's – He's the he's the he's the seed of that tree. Maybe yeah. tree wasn't the right he's word the of Trump. what I was saying. Is someone that's already the in the building yeah. that is there every day. Oh, you're right. How you need maybe fresh eyes. Mm -hmm. You're saying a little fresh eyes from outside maybe. looking I, in. Speaking of fresh eyes and on something, we lose one game in prime time to the Tennessee Titans. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -oh. on hard knocks. Uh oh, yeah. Will Levis is saying, are you not entertained, America? First rookie quarterback to throw for 300 or something on Monday Night Football, mm -hmm. whatever the story is, and he. Certainly had a great night for those Tennessee Titans. Yes, he did. The Miami Dolphins, though, they were without Tyree Kilt for whatever reason. <laughs> we have no idea why he was not playing football mm -hmm. for an extended period of time during that game and then why they chose to utilize him in the manner that they did in the second half when they certainly could have you know, utilized him. And there's a lot of people taking shots at Tua right now, like, oh, without Tyreek, look at him. He's nothing. Tyreek is that offense. Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we even, why aren't we acknowledging that? There was times when Adrian Peterson was playing for the Minnesota Vikings. Guess who was the offense? Uh -huh. Adrian Peterson was the offense. So are you just going to bury everybody else because that's the case? Like, Tua is a phenomenal quarterback. He is incredible. He makes all the throws. He is the perfect quarterback for this particular offense. But whenever you're talking about defenses preparing for an offense or why an offense goes, it's because that guy who's getting a horse collar hip drop tackle. Oh, Outlaw it. Jerry Jones is on the side of that now. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Chair. Just Chair. trying to tackle Chair. people at 20 miles an hour. It's not easy or whatever. But Terrible. that guy right there is faster than anybody. So the late motions that you run, the reason why it's so effective is because everybody on defense is taught 10 is who we are paying attention to. So whenever he's moving right before the ball is snapped, you got everybody's eyes going to the most dangerous player on a football field. And then the ball is snapped, and all of a sudden, just a slight little delay. you got better leverage on your blocks. you got people a little bit open. It's like he is the straw that stirs the drink for the Miami Dolphins offense. And for whatever reason, he was not able to play for uh, an extended period of time that he <laughs> yeah. would then come back and play. Like, what are we... And he would come back and be full speed. And bouncing yeah. and yeah. hopping. Mm -hmm. So it's like they have one loss to a team in which they don't have their main piece for a majority of the game, and they're already calling a players-only meet. What is going uh, on? Uh, okay. Omar Kelly's been covering the Miami Dolphins for a very long time. Dolphins coach Mike McDaniel said players met on their own today. He hasn't had a team meeting. Oh, boy. That's not good. Michael. We have J.J. Watt joining us here in about 38 minutes or so, and obviously he preached uh, about five, six weeks ago, if you're having players-only meetings, go ahead and start scheduling your vacation. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and start – Planning what you're going to be doing for Wild Card Weekend or maybe first round because your team isn't going to be there. Darius, yep. is this just for the Hard Knocks cameras? What the <laughs> hell? Uh -oh. Why are they calling a players-only meeting? Or do you think there's maybe some stuff going on in the locker room that we hasn't been apparent? Because when you win, it kind of just gets covered up. But when you lose, everybody wants to bring something to a head. Should we be scared to death about a players-only meeting in Miami about uh, the Dolphins' future? Nah, you know, I like the head coach, like the quarterback, like the team. But just how bad of a loss that was. Uh, not only with Tua and how he played, didn't play great. Obviously, Tyreek in and out of the lineup, but uh, the defense, like how you let Will Levis just drive the ball down there. The Tennessee basically tried to hand you the game. So everybody, everybody's hand was in on that loss, coaches, players included. So it was one of those bad losses. Maybe there was some things said in the locker room. Uh, maybe during the week they saw something that was going on. I'm, I'm usually, you know, red flag when you see the players only meeting as well. But uh, where we're sitting at right now, we still got everything in front of us. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned, especially with Tyreek Hill. I expect him to be back in the lineup as well. Lose the center, obviously. That oh, is oh, a, a major blow to a D, our offensive line that's already banged up a bit. But Gumpy, you know, you weren't completely bummed out. No. But pretty close to pretty, the most bummed out. Yeah, that. pretty bummed out. Shout out to Butch Bechtold back there in Pittsburgh. Yinzer Hero, Vietnam War veteran who has passed away. Mm -hmm. We've heard from his family, by the way. That was really cool. Yeah. Really cool to hear. Really yeah. cool. What a moment. Family was pretty grateful 
uh, about how we honored Butch back door mm-hmm. there. You know, the man who was pretty bummed out. Bummed out. I'm bummed out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> after, the, after the Dolphins conversation, there is someone else who we do have to commemorate. Who? What you do right now? We found out more news of a passing this weekend. Oh, no. Who? Uh, I'm a, uh, a warrior. Man. In the form of a farm animal. St- still. Mr. Warpig. Oh, oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Good Lord. Wait, what? Good Lord, yeah. Tony. A man I defeated in Charleston, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. In my first ever professional wrestling match. We broke the whole match down last week. We watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the day of Butch or maybe the day after Butch. I think it was the day after. Day after. Thursday. We were killed people after. I said afterwards, Warpig was a sweet boy. He said he loved cigarettes. He did smoke a lot of cigs. Yeah. <laughs> He's a Warpig. I smoked a cig with I don't smoke cigs. Yeah. <laughs> smoked a cig with him because yeah. of how much he, he was seemingly respect. enjoying smoking cigarettes. Please. Yeah. Warpig was a dog. Mm-hmm. Warpig was beloved. Warpig is dead. Mm-hmm. Damn. Rest in peace, Warpig. Rest in peace, Warpig. Peace, Warpig. Warpig. You, Warpig. Thank, Thank you, Warpig. Pig. Thanks for doing the job for me down there in Charleston, West Virginia. You made me look a lot better than I certainly was. It was an honor to dance with you, Warpig. Rest in peace, sir. My am going for Warpig. That mask had to be so hot. <laughs> he was ruthless with my left leg. Mm. And although I was playing a possum the whole time, mm-hmm. it was a nice little treat that he was attacking the wrong leg the whole time. Yeah, fool. My right leg is the one that made money war big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Idiot. No. No, 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 no. no. How dare you? He was lied to. It was a pig. What? He was lied to. Bad intel. He had a shifty manager. Also, pigs are cross eyes. It was his manager that lied to him. They see backwards. Fool. Images are flipped. Warpig, we appreciate the hell out of you. Rest in peace, bro. Enjoy that great ashtray in the sky. Keep smoking. I don't want to have to do another moment of silence for anybody, but are the Dolphins dead? <laughs> uh, Players only meeting happening down there? That already Is this just for hard knocks? What do you think? I'm not seeing a players only meeting from anybody else. Oh. Whoa. I think this is him Sources just saying Nick know. Daniel wasn't holding court. I have not seen that there was ever a players only meeting. Oh, this is a false... I mean, uh, maybe it's players only meetings didn't used to always get out. Yeah, you know I, I, I mean? don't. So I'm not seeing this as a players to. only meeting. Yeah, because my uh, opinion, there's in the cafeteria, there's players only meetings at every single table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. Okay. Every yeah. single table that yeah. happens, there's player only meetings that are taking place. <laughs> Barbecue. Now, there's some people, you know, that don't really think about much uh, that's happening in football or in the building. They're just happy to be there. Let's have some food. Those tables have a good time. Those tables have good energy. You can see those tables. But there are certainly tables mm-hmm. in the cafeteria that are not happy about some decisions that are being made. And they're holding court potentially. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just one of those. Maybe. And Maybe. that's not good. That's, see, that's worse to me than even players. Only. You're talking you, about the clicks. Yeah, when you get the little silos mm. and people talking Uh-oh. about some issues, mm. those are kind of cancers that spread. But um, like I said, it was just such a, a bad loss. Everyone can look at it. The Bradley Chubb penalty ended up being basically a four-point penalty in the game. Yeah. The the fumble going in. Like, there's just a lot of bad, bad shit that, um, you know, led to this loss. Bad loss, but... Look, we're what, still nine and four. Yeah, mm-hmm. everything's right, still in right front of line, uh, right. A lot of veterans yeah. on that team too, like Ramsey, Chubb, X, Tyreek. Like, Tool. I just don't see it as a terrible thing. I don't think it was a players only meeting. We'll get to the bottom of it with Hard Knocks. Hard Knocks Bingo. will explain all of it to us. Yep. We are. I am not out on the Dolphins. No, by the way, can't so yeah. beat the Jets. Have to win this Sunday. You have, have Tyreek Hill. If he's mm-hmm. healthy, they can beat anybody. They can also still pound the rock. Like they're running the ball for six yards a click here. Moster got like what eighteen touchdowns? Yeah, yeah. like just run the pretty damn good. ball. Pretty yeah, good. Pretty help. good. Now pretty you good. got a brand new offensive line, so we'll be will they be able to run the ball as well? We shall see without that center. That's a big loss. AQ Shipley immediately was like, Yeah, big loss, big loss, big loss. Yep. As a guy who studies yeah. centers. He also said during um in the trenches about the San Francisco Niners offensive line. He was like, They're not everybody sees Trent Williams. That, that offensive line's not that good or whatever. Then some stats came out that were like, everybody's calling Brock Purdy a system quarterback. Does a system quarterback not have a good offensive line? It's like San Francisco 49ers offensive line is hearing a lot of things about themselves. Yeah. And they have a run game that's creating big gaping holes all over the place. 
place. It's like somehow this Niners team that we think is a buzzsaw is continuing to get chips tossed onto their shoulder. Oh, yeah. feels like they're going in one particular direction. A lot of teams at the top of a lot of are going the other. Maybe the Cowboys, I guess, are uh, yeah. the only team that seems as hot as – the San Francisco 49ers? Yeah, they're rolling For right sure. now. Legitimately. Yeah, rolling. Ravens, I guess, we feel very good about, but they Ravens. stole that one from the Rams, so mm -hmm. it, it kind of dampers it a little bit, not only just the rain and everything, but it's like, feels like the Niners and Cowboys at this exact moment, with sources that we know at this time, mm -hmm. <laughs> feels like the Cowboys and Niners are the hot teams right now. I think yes. both, have, both teams have won five straight. And they've done it in... Pretty convincing. Yeah, blowout yeah. fashion. Yeah, like think about Thanksgiving, what the Niners did to the oh. Seahawks in front of the whole country. And I mean, that, what the Cowboys did to the Commanders. They beat them by like 50. And then they did it again to the Eagles. Mm -hmm. It's like those two teams, right? Is it too early? This is the right time. This it's is right. when you're supposed to be doing it. Oh, yeah, this is the right time. Post Thanksgiving, this is when you want. When you want to be playing your best ball, you want to be healthy. You know, we always talk about how uh, fortunate you have to get in that department as well. Those teams are pretty healthy um, as well. Go ahead, so the five in a row for the uh, Niners and Cowboys, second longest win streaks, three for the Ravens, and three for the New York Football Giants. Hey, speaking Woo! of ah. the New York Football Giants, congrats to AFC and NFC Offensive Players of the Week. Ooh. The quarterbacks for the New York <laughs> Giants and the New York Jets. What? Tommy DeVito and Zach Wilson. Wow. Holy hell. What a time. You go back just a few weeks, they're a laughing stock. Yeah, uh huh. These two teams lose on back to back nights of prime time this season and most seasons more than any two teams in the history. I understand the tri state area has more humans than anywhere else, but those humans all watch teams that suck. Mm -hmm. These teams stink. They have stunk, stank, stink for a long, long, mm -hmm. long time. And now here we are after Thanksgiving football. Of course. Who's playing the best? Tommy Cutlets. And Zachy Sweet Boy Wilson. Right. Congrats to both of them. Living a dream right now. Unbelievable. Now, the Jets have less than a 1% chance of making uh, the playoffs in the New York Times' eyes. I think the ESPN analytics and statistics say that they have a 0.4% chance of making it. What does that mean? What no is the point? Idea. What is the point four percentage? Oh. That means they ran the models and they ran the games mm. and who won, who lost, because that'll work. That yeah. knows. Always. That obviously oh, yeah. knows with the scores and everything like that. Point four percent chance. They got Miami. They're coming off a players only meeting. Look okay. out. Okay, could be a buzzsaw. Got the commies. Here we go. Sure. Could do it. Got the brownies with Joe Flacco. Ooh. We assume that's no gonna chance. be tough. That's revenge. And then the New England Patriots. Ooh. The end of the season out wow. there. And remember that Commanders game was allegedly. We're not saying this, but other reports have said this. That was when Aaron Rodgers was eyeing he was gonna come back. That's right. Now he might have been the source that said it on our particular program whenever we were in New York in the mm -hmm. Get Up Studio, but that would have been filthy if he comes back there. Then he would have had to play that Cleveland defense. Then he would have had to take on Bill Belichick at the end for a race to a potential wild card spot. That would have been a great storyline. That's mm -hmm. seemingly not going to be the case, but we do know Zach Wilson's playing good football. Yes, right. he is. We do know that Tommy DeVito is slinging it over there. Dog. The Giants have a whole new burst of energy. Where are the Giants at in the NFC playoff picture? How many games out of wild card are you? Brucey boy? Uh, we were one game out, but the ESPN analytics did give us the same point four. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. You got it. Hope we it we play the Eagles twice. I, I don't see any reason that Tommy Cutlets can't take down the Eagles twice. Oh, twice. Twice. Yeah. twice in three weeks. Of course. Twice. So that's why the point four is there. <laughs> so it's not even the fact that they'll have a book on Tommy DeVito because every time he plays more football, the more they learn about him. But they're actually going to play him a full game. And then he's going to be able to do it again to that Philadelphia Eagles defense. That might be the Tommy DeVito gravy. Yeah. MVP. That might be a little Tommy a DeVito sauce out there. Because mm -hmm. on the ground, through the sky, Tommy Bolognese is mm -hmm. spinning it. Yeah. And now he's a NFC Offensive Player of the Week. That's a big-time title, con man. Yeah, massive Huge. title. I mean, I love watching Tommy Cutlets. I really do. And I do think that there's a chance that he screws around and goes to the playoffs. But we <laughs> kind of talked about it a little yesterday. It, does Dan Jones just change his name to like Danny DeJonzo and then just starts to become the guy in New York again? Is there any way he can do that or is it strictly DeVito? Danny DeJonzo? Yeah. I don't hate DeJonzo. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Danny? It's got to be a G instead of a J. If but, he starts ooh. playing 
a little bit like Dejounze. Yep. Yeah. If he starts running like he had earlier in his career mm -hmm. and throwing a little bit like Tommy DeVito, who's not going to be perfect. Never. Tommy DeVito is saying his defenses for the first time, too. People are saying they don't have a book on Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito doesn't have a book on them. Huh. Yeah. They don't keep good it. books in that particular culture. Oh, yeah. That is something that I uh, I absolutely love. I'm happy for him. Player of the Week thing's a big deal, though, D. Oh, huge it deal. Genuinely is. Huge deal. Love to see it for both of these guys, not only for their confidence. Obviously, you know, when you play in that market, everything you do, you're going to have a big. Um, um, big magnifying glass on it now. More so for Zach Wilson than Danny. Uh, what's the name? DeJong. Tommy, De Jones, Tommy Cutlass. I'm sorry. Yeah. De Jones. Uh, but uh, everything's gonna be under a microscope. So great to see it for this guy. Now for Tommy. Danny Canole. Great, great story yeah. right now. Great story. Four game run. They were asking Day Balls for questions, trying to compare him to Tom Brady already. Yep. Dayball didn't even let him get the question out. And on the flip side, Zach Wilson. But both of these guys, I think they keep playing. We see how bad the quarterback play is around the, the NFL landscape. Hey, you play well, you make yourself some money right now. You can be a backup for 10 years. Absolutely. Spin it for four games. What did Dayball say? He said, uh, Tommy B, okay. Tommy D can run. You see how fast he <laughs> yeah, is? Yeah, legs. Well, he, he's got something that Tommy B don't have. Tommy Cutlets has the legs, cuz. Is that what the Dayball said? <laughs> no, nah, he didn't say that. Ba well, he basically was like, don't even think about it. And that was it. <laughs> didn't even let him get the question. Didn't even let him finish the question. It was awesome. Here's the New York Giants remaining schedule, five and eight. They got the New Orleans team, which obviously sure. we saw almost a fight in the middle of the field. Yep. Look out. That's not good, but they got passion. That's true. They care. That's good news. Philadelphia Eagles, what are they? We'll see. Is that dog mentality? And Nick Sirianni came out and said that the boys who are calling plays are going to continue to call plays. That's right. You need to relax, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Are they going to answer? They're going to respond, you think? I think so. I think Philly responds. Now, you mentioned Cowboys. Niners, wagons, but we always see that rematch. It's tough to beat the same team twice. We'll see, um, you know, how, how I'm sure they'll run into each other in the playoffs. I think they bounce back. And then the Los Angeles Rams are the only other team that they're going to be playing down the stretch here. Which Good team. They'll be dogs. Great team. Yeah, That's tough. They'll be dogs in all those, I think. Tommy Rams, DeVito Rams, loves Rams getting points. Rams yes, at home, it, it might be More close, dangerous. but probably dogs in all those. Tommy points. You know what I mean? Giving oh, yeah, that guy yeah. points out there. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's what you want to do, especially with that defense. Let's go to the Cincinnati Bengals now, who are also having their own backup quarterback who doesn't have as sweet as a name. No, not at all. No. As Tommy Cutlitz. Oh, no. But Close. Jake Browning out of Washington beat up on the Colts this past weekend. But they're not the only team. This dude spins the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's throwing it around. Zach Taylor's not scared at all to go ahead and utilize him in the same exact way that they were utilizing Joey B. Now, we're not saying he's as good as Joey Burrow or has the same thing that Joey Burrow has, but it's starting to look pretty similar over there in Cincinnati, and there's a lot of football left still for this Bengals team that has had success over the last few years. Here's Zach Taylor calling out to the Cincinnati Bengal fan base for their game on Sunday against the Vikings. A lot on the line still. Let's remember that. Yeah, I do challenge our fans. We got outstanding fans to um, you know, drink one more drink and rush <laughs> in the stadium and, and be as loud as you can humanly possibly be uh, when Minnesota's Ooh. offense is out there and help mm -hmm. our guys and and uh, that's, that is a critical element that we get this home field advantage. We're not playing on the road this week. Um, if we were playing in Minnesota, it would be a real problem. <laughs> and so Minnesota's mm. here. Let's make it a real problem for them. Mm. Uh, I don't know what the question was. And I don't know if Zach Taylor was forced to give that type of answer. But Bengals fans, what hmm. the hell's yeah. going on over there? We're not striping it out anymore? Come on, we're yeah. your stripes, guys. What happened? Let's go, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? I Nick like Rick. the stripes. That was Nick Wrong. That, those are Pittsburgh Steelers fans no. that are doing that. I like the stripes. Yes. I like the, the fact that that was self-coordinated. Bingo. I like that the stadium didn't have to do that. They did that themselves. I like the fact that when I watch primetime games in Cincinnati, it feels like a college atmosphere. Yeah. Right. I like the fact that it's windy, it's cold. Right. I like that their fans really love this young team. Why is Zach Taylor giving out bird calls for their fans to be fans? I didn't know that's how it... I didn't know that's what it's like down there by the highway. Ohio? Oh. In downtown Cincinnati. Is that what's going on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is Zach Taylor calling for the, You know, Zach Taylor said, have another drink. He respectful. Since Zach Taylor's got there, now the first year obviously didn't go great, but since Joey B's got there with Zach Taylor, they've had success. He goes to the fans' houses. Yeah, yeah he does. He goes to the fans' bars. Right. He gives out game balls to the city. He drinks beers with them. He loves them. This team loves the community of Cincinnati so much so they're willing to walk through downtown to get to practice every single day. Mm -hmm. Boots on the ground, that team. Talking to the citizens of Cincinnati. Yeah. Walking the sidewalks that the bums are walking on. Yeah. Walking across streets that cars are driving because they love being in Cincinnati, hmm. and now their coach has to say, hey, fans, why don't you love us back? 
What is going on in Cincinnati, Con man? I mean, this is what happens. You get a little taste of success. You go to a Super Bowl, and all of a sudden, you think week 14, week 13, they don't matter. This is the problem with these fans of these teams. You know what I mean? It's not just a Cincinnati it's, issue. It's not just all fun and games. You don't just stroll into the Super Bowl every year. You don't just go to the AFC Championship every year. You got to show up in week 14. I'm assuming he was bamboozled into saying this. I don't, I don't so, think so. I, I think somebody said to him, hey, can you? Maybe it was a high school reporter. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been. He said, like, can you get a message to the fans that we can run? Uh, we have a lot of Cincinnati Bengals fans. And he's like, absolutely. Hey, will you give a motivational a pregame speech for the fans, Basically. baby? Mm -hmm. Instead of the – maybe that's what happened. No, I'm maybe we're hoping. overreacting a little I hope so. Yeah. It's overreaction. He, he was dude. telling his fans to – So know, good. That's what I heard. College football atmosphere. Used the, to. The, the, the fans ruckus get a little cold outside. He, he and was now. promoting overconsumption, which I don't love. I love that. One more drink. He said ten more drinks. One more. Well, one more sometimes is too many more. Yeah, like that well, guy. That would, it would only be one man more. Uh, Impairment starts after the first drink. Let's remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're never buzzed. I get it, but we're yeah. going to a football game. So, sure. a lot of yeah. get a little rompus out there. Oh. He didn't say have 10 more drinks. He said one more drink. Also, you know. Holiday I mean, season, let's be safe. But also, cut it off whenever you need to. Does he have faith in the boys? Because he said, if we're, if we're playing in Minnesota, boy, we'd be in real trouble. Yeah, that was a little. What the hell's that about? It was a little alarming, too. You know, let's run this back. Let's run this back. We're overreacting to this. Enjoy the we're, so. we're, we're overreacting to this. Yeah, I, the Bengals fans are loud on the internet mm -hmm. those primetime games are loud they are chirping hey this isn't us that's this when i us. heard this i'm like what is going on i thought today was one of the best fan bases in the nfl especially post joey b's success era coach no, don't think so you don't shane steichen didn't even say this because loud house and they just beat us yeah what the hell's going on here let's do it one more time here zach taylor press conference talking about the fans i do challenge our fans we got outstanding fans to um you know, drink one more drink and rush in the stadium and, and be as loud as you can humanly possibly be uh, when uh, Minnesota's offense is out there and help our guys. And, and uh, that is that is a critical element that we get this home field advantage. We're not playing on the road this week. Um, if we were playing in Minnesota, it would be a real problem. <laughs> and so Whoa. Minnesota's here. Let's make it a real problem for them. Can't win on the road? Or? What's that? Minnesota's a good stadium. Remember, they got the – They just won in Jacksonville. I <laughs> Skull, 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 skull. That Vikings if, been a little quiet this year, though. Yeah, but what if they take over the state? Oh no, is uh -oh. that what he's saying? And maybe the Vi what if a skull chant busts out in the middle of the jungle over there with their third string quarterback? Okay, not in oh. AFC North. It's not happening in the AFC North. I don't think so either. Vegas. Just Bengals fans, we have a lot of respect for you. You know, we understand what's going on. I, that that had to be a setup. That had I don't I don't believe it. that was AI. Uh oh, that I, was AI. Who's in the so. That was Bengals. the Heaven's FX account. Saying that. Could have been. That's not the actual Bengals. There was no way they would do that. Speaking of the Dallas Mavericks getting things wrong, did you um, Jeez. Did you see this? You know, Mark Cuban sold uh, a lot, $3.5 billion worth of the team to the, uh, the family the, the that casino owns casinos. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. Sands Casinos, what? maybe? Or? Yeah. So, for the first time uh, that in this new family's ownership, yep. the Dallas Mavericks hosted – the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> Deron Bland, but right across his chest on the Jumbotron. Oh, jeez. Javon Diggs. Can't do that. Now, they even said Dallas Cowboys cornerback, right. Yes. Right. There, that, was, that was right in there. Mm -hmm. And I think there was even like a Mr. Pick 6 thing, because remember last year, Javon Diggs. He was Mr. He had 11 picks. Picks. He was all over it. 11 picks. Deron Bland does not deserve this to happen, especially with the record that he broke with Jim Nance on the call, one that will be remembered forever. Hey, Mavs, can't have it. Can't Sell do the team. He's saying to Mark Cuban, remember Mark Cuban, I heard him talk um, to the All the Smoke podcast mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. with Stack and Matt Barnes, Yep. and they talked about how the away teams, the visiting teams, when you play the Mavericks, the food after the game is like a full buffet like, great food, Ooh. take it, go ahead and leave it. Mark Cuban said that he wanted to do that uh, to embarrass the other owners because that's like he's already getting all this food for the home team. Mm -hmm. He's like, we might as well do it for the away team as well. So, like, people appreciated playing against the Dallas Mavericks because the way – and Mark Cuban, seemingly businessman, always forward thing. 
This can't be happening. No. Can't do it. It's not Mark Cuban's team anymore. Remember, he's just running basketball operations. Is that what it is? Yeah. He's not running yeah. everything else. This yeah. would be show and this entertainment. This is not basketball operations? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. This, this is game, game day operations. Look at his girl's face. Like, girl, wife, I'm not sure. Like, oh. She's I'm not. What are we? <laughs> yeah. Maybe hey. Diggs. Maybe Trevon. Gave the tickets. Gifted, yeah, kind of how uh, Burrow gave Brown sure. and family the suite. Maybe it's like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm chilling at home. I'm laying low, mm -hmm. kind of like Tom Curran. Yep, fair. I'm laying low tonight. Deron, take my seats. And maybe they didn't get the memo. Oh, and cameraman was like, hey, uh, got it. Yep. Those are Diggs' seats. I, I have yeah. it right here on uh, – because they have a thing. Yep. Camera people have mm -hmm. a thing on who's going to be sitting where. It's like a little piece of paper that's normally, like, taped right to the side of the, the one thing. And maybe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was Diggs' tickets, sit down, and the human says, yep, that is somebody in Diggs, that's Diggs. Mm -hmm. I think I that's do. Diggs. And there wasn't even a single, like, producer that saw the camera feed into the truck and goes, that's not, that's not him. Just real quick. Yeah. Certainly black guy. Definitely not digs. Not no. digs. Definitely not digs. Is Nobody thought. I don't know how many eyes. Camera person, one of them. Now, he's just doing his job. She's just doing their job. Mm -hmm. I was told somebody in the seat put it on there. When that stream goes to a truck, though, that there's numerous people in there. Oh, yes. yeah. There's a lot of checks and balances. Oh, Too many. This is the new ownership. I feel like this is the new ownership. This is a bad way to start this entire thing. I could be wrong. I think Mark Cuban was at that game, too. So I bet he looked up and said, what the hell is going <laughs> what on? Are we doing? No. You, know, you, know what fix, you know what fixes this? What's that? Invisible helmets. We need to see these guys' faces more often. You're right. Adam Silver told us that the reason why the NBA is so social media driven yeah. is because they're like YouTube stars, because people see them, they mm -hmm. get to make the contact, visible. the whole thing. They're very visible. That's why the NBA players are much more famous. Mm -hmm. Well, also, there's like 150th of them. Yeah, true. You know, because there's, uh, I forget the exact number of people in the NFL. It's 1,600 or something like that. I forget the exact. 1,696 it used to be. Boom, there it is. Wow. Uh, NBA, there's only like... 10, 11 people Percent. per team. So it's like 300. That's a vastly different number. So maybe that's why they're more popular. But wearing the helmet is certainly quite a brand they, we, we showed the cloak the other day. Why not do it for helmet? <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, you're right. Invisible. Mm -hmm. And also, that's why some guys take their helmets off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they get penalties for it. It's like, don't you think somebody maybe want to see these pearly whites after I make a big time play? Bingo. Yeah, exactly. just went to the dentist. The NFL just wants to hold them back. Wow. Speaking of the NFL... Do you know what the NFL stands for? What's that? Mm. Well, some people think it's the National Football League. Right. That is accurate. But the NFL is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. The NFL is an electrifying thing. Yeah. And the NFL is something that creates moments that we get to watch every single week that make us go, damn, how did that happen? It's the NFL in the F stands for filth, baby. Yeah. Now, every once in a while when you're sitting on Wednesday <laughs> and uh, there isn't necessarily a lot to talk about other than made-up rumors from a source at a time and a place, sure. or Draymond Green doing Draymond Green things, you think to yourself, you know, there was a couple plays this past week and they were awesome, mm -hmm. that were fantastic, yeah. right. that were spectacular, that were absolutely filthy. filthy. So here is the filth from this past weekend that we obviously all fell in love with. Uh -huh. How about Josh Allen? Remember this Buffalo Bills team? They had a hit piece basically written about their culture the week before by Tyler Dunn. They have to travel into Kansas City to take on Taylor, Are you? Taylor Swift Oof. and the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning, defending, undisputed Super Bowl champions. And look what Josh Allen mm. pulls off in the fourth quarter against the Chiefs in a game that they would go on to win, obviously, because Kadarius Tony's about a foot up. Look at this. Look at how close. Look at that. Look, ball out, foot down. Wow. Ball Damn out, hard. foot down. Knew exactly where he was. Unbelievable. Fade away pass in the NFL. Are you kidding me? Two dudes throwing him into the sideline. Reporter Tracy Wolfson, Jeez. and he gets it right to Latavius Murray. Now, he almost, you yeah. know, they reviewed this thing. Yeah. For a lot of reasons. Was he in bound? No way he did that. He did. His arm strength is uh, fantastic. And did Latavius Murray catch that? Uh, mm. Close. Uh, yeah, it was a catch. Okay, it sure. Yeah, we just give everybody okay. a catch. Yeah, it, was the, it was in the transition. Yeah, three I mean, steps. there was, yeah, this one was the least catch catch that was <laughs> called this weekend in my eyes. There it is. But I will say, Josh Allen yes, making this play, absolutely 
filthy. filthy. Let's go to another one, shall we, that we got a chance to watch this weekend. That oh. was stupendous. This Puka Nakua fella, oh. in his first 13 games, it's him, Randy Moss, Odell Beckham Jr., and... Is it Justin Jefferson? Mm, maybe. Justin Jefferson. Uh, only players in their first 13 games have over 1,300 yards. Might be because Cooper Cup wasn't in. When Cooper Cup wasn't in, guess who became Cooper Cup? Yeah. Puka Nakua. Yep. Now there's two Cooper Cups on the field. And Puka Nakua, no gloves, in Baltimore. Rainy, cold. Give me that. Ooh. Filthy. Come on. <laughs> Look at the tape on the fingers. Don't get the stove. Oh, cool. Don't get the stove. Yeah, no, right. That's Dallas Clark type stuff. Now the throw is obviously... Fantastic. Yeah. Now, there were some people on the internet saying that ball was supposed to be the Cooper Cup. Well, if it was, it's even more filthy. Look <laughs> yeah. at the dive and the catch from Puka Nakua securing the ball, turning the body, making sure it doesn't budge or move. This dude has been nothing short yep. of impressive. We don't know if he soaks. No, we no, don't. No, no, no. Want to BYU. Hmm. He could. We don't, know if he, we don't know if he's laying up there getting tossed, but we do know that Hope when he throws it. his body in the air and the ball is tossed to him, he's making the catch. Puka Nakua, that is absolutely filthy. filthy. Let's go to the next one here. How about Heath? Ooh. Ooh, knew this guy existed for sure. <laughs> now, this is he just caught a touchdown on a previous play. Yes. They did not call it a catch. Mm -hmm. Look at the time here. Fourth quarter, 136 left, 21-16. New quarterback, new era. They walk right down the field on Monday Night Football in front of Tommy DeVito, his Paisan agent, what? and everybody that is riding this Italian wave mm -hmm. of momentum with Dayball and the boys. Jordan Love says, excuse me, we just threw one cut. Here's another one. The directly down the goal line shot is the one we need to see. Shout out to the ref taking a hit, getting back up. Perfect form. Got it. I'm not going to call this before I get up. Let's have a little respect for the call. <laughs> Heath also, let's get the face out there. Not a bad thing. Fingertip. Jesus. Hey. It's nice. Damn. Hey. Ooh. Great call by the ref, too. Yeah, yeah. Because that was very close. Yep. And he could have got distracted whenever he got his legs taken out from underneath him. But instead, we have a fingertip grab that is absolutely filthy. filthy. From our man, he thought that was a game winner. So yeah, so did I. Yeah. Not when Tommy Cutlets is on the other side. No. We'll just say we don't have any Tommy Cutlets plays, but just know that Tommy Cutlets is absolutely filthy. filthy. What's the next one we have, Foxy? Oh, yeah. Remember this team? They gave up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins earlier in the season. Ugh. This quarterback right here, Russell Wilson, he settled uh, something called the Danger Witch that yep. everybody hated. Yep. He called himself Mr. Unlimited. Unlimited. Everybody was burying him. Had a terrible year last year with Nathaniel Hackett as his offense coordinator yeah. and head coach. Now Sean Payton comes in. What is he? Oh, he's all the way back. Whoa. He's all the way back. Russell Wilson's making plays. The Denver Broncos have hope. And look at the time from the offensive line that was certainly oh. called into question last year and this year. So Russell Wilson can make old school Russell oh, Wilson throws geez. from the clouds directly into little push off, little hold. Oh. Who cares? Oh. One handed Damn. snag for a tud by Cortland Sutton, who's been making these types of catches every week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the new Ty Lockett. This is something that Russell Wilson and Ty Lockett were doing every single day or every single game last year with Seattle and the years before, not last year, but you get it. Now Cortland Sutton has become this weapon for Russ. And let's talk about Russell Fake. Oh, yeah. oh, got oh, 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 oh. And then he throws that thing up. Turnover, nice, down like a missile, right into Sutton's arm and hand. What a catch. What a touchdown. What a filthy play from the Denver Broncos who are back in conversation. Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah, they are. Holy hell. That defense playing good ball, too. They're in. Right. You got this guy making this catch against the Chargers. That's a division rival. Okay. Are the Broncos rolling? I think so, what else do we have from the weekend that's absolutely filthy? filthy. Oh, this one. Oh, man. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Damn shame. This one is not only filthy, it's disgusting. <laughs> okay? And the reason why it's disgusting is because it'll never count. Nope. Ever. And some people say, hey, the first time you do the NFL and the F stands for filthy segment, you put a play that doesn't even count in there. It's actually the main event. Yeah. Don't you think that's maybe discrediting the entire segment a little bit? No, I don't think all. so. Not at all. This is the filthiest play I've ever seen. Now, if it's in the playoffs, if it's in the Super Bowl, obviously it's projected to greatest play of all time. That's right. It is just a regular season game against a big-time rival, mm -hmm. but it is a game winner potentially, and it is one of the filthiest things we've seen when it comes to football IQ, athleticism, what? everything you could think of. Patrick Mahomes, second and ten, gets the ball, down three. What's he going to do with the fourth quarter? He's going to find Travis Kelsey. He's going to find Kadarius Tony. Whoa. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. What? Can't believe With that. With the high step, too. Travis Kelsey, high school quarterback. He, Think- he, lay, he eludes two people. Dark. That was a good mm-hmm. word. That's a great word. And finds his teammate. With a quick release, Dan Marino. Could have got sacked there. Yeah. The ball could have got hit out. Mm-hmm. He didn't hit a quick release. Spins that thing. Flick of the wrist. How you doing? 15, 20 yards. Right to the chest of Kadarius Tony. We have a touchdown. We have a game winner. We have a play that people are going to talk about forever. Mm. All the Swifties are singing about it already all over the mm-hmm. internet. That's right. Kadarius Tony has a clean, has the filthy high step as well. This was supposed to go on the mantle of both of these gentlemen, all three of these gentlemen, forever at the Hall of Fame induction whenever Travis Kelsey goes in. Mm -hmm. They say his innovation whenever Mm -hmm. he was on the football field was something that didn't get talked about much because he's an Ohio guy who's just supposed to be a meathead. Instead, he's one of the most brilliant guys who runs his own routes. He gets himself open. He knows where everybody else is on the field. He was like a second quarterback on the field whenever he was playing alongside one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play football, and they would show this play. Not again. Not anymore. Never again. He's offsides. Damn it. The guy's offsides. Yes, he is. Yeah. The guy's offsides. Quite, quite, yeah. He scored the touchdown. He did. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be on his highlight reel, too. Yep. To go up. So it is disgusting. Mm-hmm. But it was also absolutely filthy. filthy. That was the NFL, and the F stands for Phil. Thank you so much for watching. That was fun. Yeah, that, that was yeah, fun. That was, we that need to do that We should do that again. If I had plays while you were doing it, like, oh, okay, that, that one, too. Yeah, there was a chance Drake London was going to be in here with his catch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But every slow-mo copy we watch, it was like... It's not quite. It was, really just, it was actually just really athletic. Yeah, incredibly athletic. The filth level, although certainly filthy, it wasn't at the level of filth. It was a nominee. Sure. That it needed. It was a nominee. Okay. It was a nominee. The Drake London, and we watched a lot of angles of all of these, and everyone that made it in there, every angle was awesome. Yeah, yes. Agreed. There was a couple angles of the Drake London one where it's just he jumps and catches it. Nobody really. It's kind like of, a standard corner yes. getting a pick pretty much. Kind bad. of a mm-hmm. tough, tough play by the defense. There. Yeah, and yeah, if you're Drake London and you're Falcons fans, I understand you might be bummed out. Sure. sure. Okay, but you didn't even know the segment existed until right now. <laughs> That's right. But you need to know that that seems oh. to be very filthy. It does. That, that The filth level's crazy, but then it's just, yeah, filthy. Yeah. But the filth level not high enough. No, yep. So but. he was a nominee. Congrats, Drake London, on being Congrats a nominee. That was the angle. Yeah, that was the angle. That was the angle right there where it was like. Mm, not high enough. Mm, from a filth meter. That just seemed like. The box guys just really just didn't play it. Yeah, you know what I mean? That seems like just like a, oh. that's like a DB pick. You know what I mean? Yeah, I Great saw. adjustment. High point. Big guy. Yeah, but Great play, Drake. Cu- a couple tweets saying that. It's nasty. As well. It was nasty. Not filthy. It was nasty. Okay. There you go. Right. Like ah. there you go. Okay. So the nominees nasty. are nasty. Yep. Nasty nominees. And then the filth level, nasty if it's up there, you become filthy. I like that. All right. Shout out to the NFL and the F stands for filth. That was a good time. We need to do more of that. We we show no highlights. No, we don't. Only show in the history of sports media that choose not to do like a highlight segment. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we have all the setups to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, look at this screen. It's right here. That's yeah, perfect. It's just like right here. Yeah, but our eyes are going to be looking for filth this weekend. Hashtag. Oh, yeah. Hashtag. What did you put out there? What was the, what did you, we were PMS. PMS National Filth League. Okay, they're going to love that. Hell yeah. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to love that. All right. We'll see them all. We'll see how, we'll, we'll see, see we'll see how yeah. it goes. Yeah. We will see it. Sending your nom- the NFL is a beautiful and electrifying thing. It's the NFL and the F stands for filth. What a play by Josh Allen. Hashtag PMS National Filth League. All right. Big Mitt loves it. Yeah, yeah. big pop out of Mitt back there. Isn't it great? Sign. In a minute. We'll see how it goes. Yep. It's all right. I, me and Gumpy talked about that earlier. Yeah, right? he did. That was Gumpy a- did nothing out of pocket there. <laughs> but once you see it, it's like, woof. Yeah. But it is filthy. It is filthy. It is filthy, dude. Filthy is a good thing. It is. Mm-hmm. Filth. Maybe that's it. it. Has PMS filth. Well, that's still. Oh, you might get some. Yeah, probably get you a lot of suck weirdos. Bots. Let's get to a break. We, we need to stay away from the suck bots on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, next hour, JJ Watt and AJ Hawk. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. See you then. Hello and welcome to Office Championship Wrestling live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight we have a straight to hell match in which the devil will battle against our office wrestler, Dylan Boston. You might be wondering how we got here. Let's find out right now. And now we have to make a deal with the devil. 
Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put I Bostic right to, to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell! No. Don't do Good it. God, no! Come I on, can't. Bostic, man! Oh, no. See in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! Oh, no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! What the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down from Don't do the it, hell. Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my God! God. Oh. Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super kick! Oh, into the casket! Into the, the devil casket. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Straight back to hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins! The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey, why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Sport, sport. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this glorious white Wednesday. December 13th, 2023, hour two of the program starts now. Football! Is a glorious thing, and although it isn't happening today, we are certainly chatting about all the happenings around the football world. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Another Wolf shirt, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was in the locker already. I actually brought this in last week, thought about wearing it, then I was like, you know what, I actually have a different one I want to wear, so it's been sitting in the locker kind of staring at me, so I had to wear it. Back-to-back Wolf shirts is an uh, interesting move, Ty, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if I love it. Well, see, I mean, what What's we, that all about? You what, losing your fastball? I was going to say. The strength of the Wolf is the what? Pack. Oh, okay. Is this wolf not part of the pack? It is. So, I don't know. It's isolated. It's a couple wolf. wolf. It's a couple wolf. Look, That's a lovely. Looking for his pack, guys. Well, his pack is on the other shirt. There's 10 of them. Yeah, I know. I got to get this one home. No, I'm that one seems to be a little bit of a loner. That one's trying not to be a part of the pack. No, you see how it's faded in the background, kind of? There's three of them. Th this isn't just one wolf. This is the wolf itself, and then the spirit wolf that lives inside the wolf is thinking. You do like the cluster your animals. Yeah, but I think like that particular wolf is a selfish wolf. That's why I didn't join the pack over there. No such thing. No such thing. There is a such thing as a lone wolf. The only selfish. Ow! 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 Only selfish wolf is. You ever experienced one of those, Foxy? A lone wolf? No, I have not. 
<laughs> hey, hey, Foxy, what uh, what's a card game that you've never won in before? Yeah, now I know where you're going with oh. this. And yes, I have experienced many lone wolves in my life in the card game Euchre, okay? Uh, not you've experienced them against your team. No, 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 no. My. Yeah. Against you, actually, a lot of times. At Evan Foxy, obviously the man uh, pushing the buttons to change mm -hmm. the cameras around. That is his work. Viva Lazito is next to him. Nicky Moraldo, Nicky Skates is up there. Bubba Gumpino's back there. Dirty's back there. Matt Brown's back there. Mitt is in the phones. Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. one half of the hammer, Dad. Dad. Cowboys, Tone Diggs in the cowboy hat. Yes, I am. Thank you. Tone, how you doing gambling this year? Pretty good. Ooh. Pretty Wait, good. Unders. This is my season, though. Bowl season's here. Oh, this is now we're talking. How many games on Saturday? Ooh, six maybe? Yeah, I think there's like ten maybe. I think there I is a lot. Nine-year NFL vet joining us on the stage here. An absolute stallion of a man. Great onesie today. Oh, Ladies wow. and gentlemen, Darius J. Ball. Yeah, d D-Bot, you look cool all the time. Uh, before we bring in A.J. Hawk, the legend, um, Miami Dolphins have told us that this is a normal day after game schedule. Okay, on a short week. Coaches start working on the rest of the week's game plan. Players watch film together and lift. So this is not a players-only meeting that uh, was being reported. Short week. Thank God. Joining us now, college football national champion and Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup winner, father of 10, current president of Ohio, A.J. Hawk. AJ, now that we have a new understanding of what's going on in Miami, mm -hmm. in the first hour, we read a tweet by Omar Kelly that basically mm -hmm. said it was a players-only meeting. I think that is just what he heard. And although it is a players-only meeting, this is not one of those emergency player-only meetings, if that makes sense, AJ, which is great news down in Miami. Yeah, that's, that's definitely great news. I started honestly thinking maybe I'm just out of touch. Maybe it's passed me by. You know, it's a different generation to where they don't look at players only meetings like we did like hey this is meaning there's a problem and you're terrible that's usually what player players only meetings were so i just assumed kind of time passed me by on that one yeah as we start thinking about that this next generation do they talk to each other as much mm, probably not true right they do kind of though like i don't know at least watching like middle like my daughter's in middle school they they're like ma weirdly mature sometimes on certain things on how they interact with each other. It's really, it's actually kind of cool to see. Yeah. A lot of phones though, right? Yeah, mostly a text. A lot of, so lot of phones. Player only text group? No, I'm, yeah, but I'm saying maybe they don't talk as much mm -hmm. because we're forced to because there's really nothing else. Yeah. You know what I mean? What else are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, sure. We're going to talk to each other. So maybe we are just a different generation and the players only meeting is like, all right, Leave a phone. We're actually going to talk. Put your phone down. Let's yeah. talk no phones. Now, granted, this players only meeting sounds like it is a very normal one, and this is just how it goes about it. The coaches are preparing for the game. Yep. They will kind of do their thing. Okay, we get it. We love that. Gumpy, don't be bummed out. Things are okay over there. We're on the up and up. We're on the up and up today. Let's go uh, beat the Jets. Go. I love that. Let's go uh, beat the Jets. AJ, did you hear the conversation about Tommy Kern and what he said about Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots and how it was reported versus what it potentially is? And then did you hear Connor's response of like, none of this matters? Literally anything anybody says about Bill Belichick and the Patriots' future. And he echoed the sentiment of Al Michaels, who was like, nobody knows what's going to happen right now. He said a lot of people want to talk about it and act like they know. Nobody knows. Until Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick sit down in a room and discuss the future, that's when it's going to be found out. But boy, the thought of Bill Belichick leaving New England is certainly big news in everybody's eyes. And I guess it is almost at the point where we're about to find out if that's a reality or not, AJ. Yeah, but it's it's fun to speculate uh, as to what could possibly happen with all of them. But I also wonder how much Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick actually speak about like the potential future. Like, has that, have they had any weird meetings this year that they usually don't have to where they actually right. talk about? Like, say Kraft, does he ever walk into Bill's office? Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, let me. Uh, he closed the door behind him. So what do you think, man? What's like your what's your two year, three year, five year plan? You know, is it, what do you think right now? Yeah, that is. Uh, what if they're walking down the hall and they just happen upon each other? Bob, you got anything to say? Bill, you got anything to say? <laughs> no, nope. all right. And just two ships passing. Yep, in there. Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow, they'd respect. I mean, it's their possible. Own it's possible. It's very That'd possible. Be so weird. Oh yeah. 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 Do next day they do it again. Robert Kraft in his head. Do I want to deal with this right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. Bill, do I want to deal with this right now? Mm -hmm. Nope. See you guys. Next mm -hmm. old, old married couple. See you later. Yeah. Kinda. Been around each other a long, long time. Yeah, they basically long are long an old married couple. They've been around, they've seen each other grow. 
They've mm -hmm. seen each other go through relationships. Yes. They've seen each other have success, greatest successes. They've seen everything together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Bill has had to ask Bob for a lot of things. And I assume in return, Bob has also kind of requested a lot of things from Bill. They've been through it all, which once again, I do not envy Robert Kraft's position at all in this particular case, Conman. No, it's brutal. And really, too, when you think about it, it's the is it the first time? It's definitely the first time in my life where it's like a decision with this big of a head coach and obviously the New England Patriots has kind of been at the forefront. I can't really remember one to this level, so there isn't anything you can like point to. Well, when they did this, when you know someone else left their team after six Super Bowls, no one's ever done this. It's never been done. So I think the con contract is perfect. I mean, you have one more year if it doesn't really make much sense not to give him that year, but also if you're drafting a young quarterback in the first, you know, three picks, then you probably want the guy who's going to be with that quarterback for a long time, but when you talk to Bill, it doesn't seem like Bill's, you know, stopping coaching anytime soon, so also he could be there for the next 10, 15, 20 years, a la. Yeah, there was no disagreement that he has committed his entire life. While I was elite, I was like, "Hey, you're a kid." Okay, yes. at practice, football yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. And then now you're head coach and G, both time consuming jobs in football for yep. 30 years. Yeah. You know, you, and there was no like, yeah, I'm about ready to stop. There was Worn no, out. there was none of that in the conversation. No, he it's loves like, it. He and loves football. Yeah, Lombardi, Lombardi has echoed that sentiment too. Like, Bill loves the day to day. It's not like he loves winning Super Bowls in this year's hell. Like, he loves just planning and game planning for teams. That's hey, it. Hey, Robert, Bill, good luck in there. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck, boy. Figure it out. Good Keep luck. Them. Figure it out. Smart. Film it. Figure Film it out. That thing. In there. Think how sweet that would be to watch it like 10, 15 years from now. That conversation. Yeah, it, I wish we had the Bill, Tom, and Bob conversation in 2017. Well, that's why the timing of this will be very interesting because the Dynasty series on Apple TV comes out in February, and you wonder if uh, wow, that is coming out. Script. Yeah, it gets announced that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is just wow. That's, Isn't that so convenient? Yeah, that's okay. the date in my head as far as going forward goes. What if? What, so how long have they been playing this? Ten years? They've been playing this entire thing. Sounds this like when it. When, we'll end, yeah. when we release the dynasty yep. thing, yeah. and then we'll do the day of, and then the video, the teaser will be our conversation about yeah. the whole thing. They're so smart up there. Yeah, it's, it's they say cheating. chess, not checkers. That's a real deal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to watch the Dynasty video. I can't wait to see what Robert Kraft does. And I'm excited to see what Bill Belichick's future is. If it's still in New England, which I think we all are kind of on board with. I sure hope. I want to see him coach somewhere else. Me too. Yeah. I think he'd just be neat. Spread yeah, but like, wings. It is neat that he just – he is New England. No, for mm -hmm. sure. For you sure. Know? Like, that's a, like, for instance – in Green Bay, mm -hmm. Lombardi. Yeah. Like, that is. He yeah. went and coached, the at the time, the Redskins. You know, like, he left the what? Packers. Uh, at the time. At the time. That was their name. Jeez. It wasn't the Commanders. Uh, it wasn't the Commanders. You know, Jeez. I mean, I don't know what you want. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. But, yeah, it's like, it's the same Just thing. trying to be historically accurate. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't want people coming at me like, this guy has no ball. They weren't the Commanders back then. But either way, like, that's still kind of same deal. You know, and obviously, yeah, don't look at me like that. What? Patriots fan. Like, what about what about Carr? <laughs> Carr, right? Yeah, same Carr deal. Did the right no. Thing. Uh, joining us now is a man who might have a thought or a take on this. And listen, it's not your fault. That was the name. Yeah, I was gonna. Did I name the team? No, I didn't. Dan Snyder could have changed that team name a long time, Boom. a long time, and he decided not to. There's so. a lot of people that are fans of that team that that is still the name of the team. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're really? ever going. I don't oh, know if yeah. they're ever going to get. I, I don't know if they're mm -hmm. ever going to get those people off of that. No, they're not throwing out that merch. No way. Well, they're wearing it. Yeah, I've told the story before. It's, it's now. It's good time to mention right now. Mm -hmm. When the Commanders came to play the Indianapolis Colts in the Loud House, Lucas Oil Stadium, mm -hmm. wow. somehow Loud House. Yeah, it wasn't the Loud House last year. Somehow well, still, there was a lot of Washington fans that have infiltrated the Loud House. Yep, a lot of them. Somehow. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, like tons. Maybe the most I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, the Browns this year, the with with the Miles True. Garrett. Maybe the most, like thirty five, forty percent of the thing. Yeah. It was it was like it was real. Every one of them had one logo on their chest. Yep, and it was not Commanders or WFD. Mm -mm. It was just it was the the name that I assume they became fans of, uh -huh. and they were wearing starter jackets. Oh, yeah. They had those old school, those super sweet shirts that Mitt wears. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. graffiti shirts. Yeah, like the Division Champs shirts. Yeah, throwback Super shirts. Yeah. Every single part. I didn't see one single Commander's logo at all, and I'm like, 
Business can't be that great for merch over there. Well, for the Washington football current game. owners kind of waffling with maybe going back to it too. That was allegedly not true. <laughs> uh, anyways, joining us now is a man who uh, might have an answer for the Bill Belichick Robert Kraft conversation Ooh. about what he would like to see because sure. this guy's going to go down as one of the greatest football players to ever play. Yep. He'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Obviously, he's the third member of the Houston Texans Ring of Honor. Ladies and gentlemen. How many times did he win defense player of the year? Four? I, I think three. three one back Should have won it four times. Yeah. Should have won an MVP, maybe. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then Aaron, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, J.J. Watt. J.J. I'm trying to figure out who. I love Indianapolis. I love the people of Indianapolis. I love playing in Lucas Oil Stadium. Wow. Who has ever in their lives called that place the Loud House? Oh, everybody. It's a lot Sounds like everybody. Yeah, it's not about I've never, the horsepower. I've, yeah, he's never I've, heard the horsepower uh, rev. I've never heard it called the Loud House. I've never experienced the Loud House. Uh, it's a great place. I love playing there. This this year is, or this time of year is one of my favorite times of year when they play the fireplace logs during warm-ups. I love that every year. Yeah. Um, but I would not describe it as the Loud House. Intimidating. Disrespect. Well, you haven't been there in quite some time, brother. So why don't you pipe down? Do you know how new everything is in that building? Mm. We got traditions that started six games ago. That's right. They are already taking off. They rev the 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 engines. Uh It's Uh called horsepower. Ever heard of the (laughs) 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 nice? We don't. We that we kicked the fire. I love that. Yeah, we kicked the fire. What? Yeah. You stopped it? We don't have time for the log cabin. I understand that people used to call it the Lucas Library, okay? Ooh. That was a sentiment that was maybe shared amongst the locker room in confusion of why these humans are at a football game. You could be doing what you're doing right now at home. Yeah, JJ. Mm-hmm. A lot of people used to think that. But now, oh, oh, it's a tough barn. It is. Ooh. It's a lot of us. With it's a lot of us right now. It's showing up, right? It's selling out. All right, all right. Your yeah. brother, no, your brother's going to find out on Saturday, JJ. Yeah. yeah. Well, Wait till loud. He is. TJ's not going to So you're telling me there's no fires anymore? I told him to get excited for the fireplace. Is he playing? We don't do log cabin fires anymore, okay? It's the uh, That house. sucks. That sucks. That was a great tradition. I enjoyed that thoroughly. JJ, listen. Are you guys using tarps yet? Are you guys doing good business? Shut up. You, Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Fair question. You're okay. taking photographs from before the game. You're taking photos from other weeks. You're piecing <laughs> together things. This is some grade A bullshit. Whoa! Hey. We're journalists. We got to cover these things. I don't want to. Yeah. No. Did you hear what's going on in Cincinnati? Did you hear what's going on in Cincinnati? We don't uh-huh. want to be the people that do no. this. Oh, no, JJ, buckle up. Yeah. Buckle up. Listen. Hang on. Boom. Strap. Yes. You going back to the Houston, Texas? You're already working on a new celebration. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Strap. Okay. I didn't know. Well, you don't know. Uh, here's Zach Taylor in a press conference the other day. I, we're not going to tell you how we took this. Okay? We'll, okay. Let you, we'll let you do your own reaction mm-hmm. immediately after the video. Here's Zach Taylor in a press conference talking about this upcoming game. I do challenge our fans. We got outstanding fans to, um, you know, drink one more drink and rush in the stadium and, and be as loud as you can humanly – possibly be uh when minnesota's offense is out there and help our guys and and uh that's that is a critical element that we get this home field advantage we're not playing on the road this week um if we were playing in minnesota it would be a real problem (laughs) and so minnesota's here let's make it a real problem for them jj we got a chance to watch your eyes that whole time (laughs) what did you hear there what did you hear there I was really excited at first, like have an extra drink. Let's go come in, be loud. Love that. Also, they're one of the only st- I'm invested in kickstand. They got kickstand in the stadium, a cocktail. So big fan, nice. drink some kickstand. But then what a turn. You can't just say it would be a big problem if we were playing in somebody else's stadium. You're supposed to be able to play in a parking lot, in an empty <laughs> yeah, field, yeah. on concrete, anywhere. Right. It doesn't matter where you play. You can't you can't say it would be a problem if we were playing in somebody else's house. I don't also really nice house. Loves Minneapolis. That stadium is Phenomenal. Yeah, we do as well. We complimented Minnesota Stadium and him talking about like what Minnesota's home field advantage would look like versus their own. Okay, cool. but then it sounded like he was telling his fans how to be fans there too a little mm-hmm. bit. Then like the Cincinnati Bengals fans are good fans. AJ, he's one of them. AJ's one of them. Yes. <laughs> AJ, what the hell was that? What was what that? Ha- what, I don't know. I haven't checked the state. Like, did they all just leave in droves once Joe Burrow got hurt, or are they not stick? Like, what's don't the deal? I don't know. We don't. Know. And we didn't hear the question either. We think there was a chance that Zach Taylor was bamboozled. Maybe like a 
high school reporter was like, hey, can you explain home field advantage to us at this press conference? You know, we don't know, JJ. We don't know exactly. Yeah. I just saw No, that. the beginning was good. The beginning was good. Like, to have an extra drink and get loud when we're on, that's fine. I'm fine with that. That That's that's just good old-fashioned, like, get behind us. But, yeah, I, I don't know why the second half of that went the way it did. They, they're, they're good fans up there. I played up there a bunch. I, I like it up there. And they, they seem to have some good stuff going with the jungle, with the uh, – they get the they got the throne now where you sit on the throne with the oh. scepter or whatever it is. Oh, nice! Take a dump Ooh, mm -hmm. on the throne. Sitting on the. I love Bengals fans. I, yeah, the best. I That's enjoy true. them Me too. against the Ravens. That environment, that playoff game where Halbert ran it back a hundred yards. Yeah. It was sick. They're a good fan. It's a yes. college atmosphere. Yes. I thought in these primetime games. I guess at one o'clock when we're not watching. Not good. Maybe a little different. I guess. Maybe the Gardner Minshew show came to town. They were scared to watch what he was going to do to the Bengals. Uh, so maybe this past weekend wasn't as great of an environment because they were all scared of Gardner Minshew and getting a chance to watch it. So he's like, hey, we need to get back to it. Vikings, by the way, Justin Jefferson came out and said he will be playing. Nice. Yep. Uh, wide receiver Justin Jefferson told reporters that he will play Saturday in Cincinnati. <laughs> I'll tell you what, fans. You better hope that skull chant doesn't take over the entire place. Mm -hmm. Like what's happening down in Houston right now. You know, yeah. you guys don't want to go to games. The other team's fans will come, right, JJ? This, this, is, this is ridiculous. This show is just a shamockery. Just a Travis shamockery. Whoa. Whole thing. All right. Well, if we're, we're not just lying on people. No, that's, Lie. Not, that's not what we do. Those photos were real, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just not at the exact time in which we displayed. Maybe not even in the same month. Maybe not even in the same game. <laughs> maybe. Just do whatever you want. AI, AI these yeah. days. You know, you never, you can't believe anything. But how are we yeah. doing? How, how, uh, how's our soccer team doing? How, are we wearing hats still? We, uh, we still. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I. I, I have my mug. I don't do double. Uh, I don't do double memorabilia. Mm -hmm. So it's either a hat or the mug or a shirt. You don't do. I don't do double. Yeah, too much. So I got some. Yeah, it's too much overkill. So I got the turf more. Got the Burnley mug today with a little coffee. Uh, big it? one to one draw on the weekend. Big uh, Brighton quality squad. Let's go. Um, James Trafford had ten saves. Our goalkeeper Huge. stood on oh, his head. Traffle. I mean, stood on his head. Come on, Traffle. Oh, Traffle. Oh, yeah. Traffle's a dog. And uh, I'm going hey, this weekend. Cool. We got a board meeting on Friday, and then the game against Everton on Saturday. Going to be there. Me, Kalia, in attendance. Looking forward to it. Let's go. Pouring yeah. beers. Pouring pints. Yeah. Tyler. Let's talk uh, about. It. Yeah, is Tyler going to be there at the board, board meeting? meeting? Tell me about the board meeting. Is Tyler going <laughs> to take like a pen? And he's going to throw it into that mug yep. that you're holding <laughs> yep. and be like, all right, let's make the deal if I can make this pen into that mug. And you're on one side of the table, he's on yep. the other, and he's got 10 of these things. Yep. He's like, oh, left-handed, bang, boom, boom. Film wow. it, please. Film and we assume the first it, try will go in, and then you're like, all right, we're starting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're firing the coach. Yep. I, what, yeah. is the, uh, what is the board meeting look like, and uh, what type of decisions are being made on Friday for this Burnley team? Because as it – very interested fan. I would like to know yeah. about what's happening behind the scenes with my favorite club. Yeah, I mean, it's just a quarterly board meeting. It's standard stuff. It's uh, yeah. you talk about all the, you know, you talk about the financials. You talk about the marketing plan. You talk about the on field. You talk about the transfer market coming up in January. Um, all sorts of stuff. Stadium, everything. Let's spend, it's just, let's spend in the transfer market too. Jack. Yeah, let's do that. Who's yeah, where, where are we going, Bump, Gump? What 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 kind of money are you spending? Where are you spending it? January transfer window, not notoriously one for. Uh, massive moves, but let's hear it. Where are you spending the cash? Messy, right? How much you got? How much you got to spend? Yeah. What's the uh, What's the amount? Yeah, who's whose money yeah. is it too? Is it just your money? Literally, you walk I'd, in there. I'd look at a guy yeah. like Jaden Sancho who can't get in the Manchester United team because they hate him. Very good. Get your team to pay a little fee. They still pay half his wages. Maybe one of the best players no. in the Premier League. Pitch us at the quarterly go. meeting Boom. on Friday, JJ. You're welcome. Look nah. at us. Yeah. Look at us. We have wow. real impact on the team that we love. That? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Hey, Guppy, that was good. Let's how, go. about, how about Prolific? Gump's great. Great how about stuff, Prolific? Yeah. Prolific? And where's Prolific at right he's now? Balling he's balling at AC Milan. Milan in Italy. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good to get him out of there. Then. Yeah. He's he balling. Like That's it. what we need. Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, <laughs> Tony oh, Miola, ring a bell. I feel like this clip right here is going to be played over the pond and it's going to be tagged with like Americans are stupid. Like oh, that's, this is what they do. Oh, this are we? What? Wait till the next World Cup. Hmm. It's our game now. Yeah. It's coming home. Uh, coming home. Tell soccer. It's coming home. home. Sorry about it, England. <laughs> Sorry about this show. Our game now. I love, I love this show, man. I cannot tell you how much I look forward to Wednesdays every week. This is the best. Well, we're Except learning. for when you 
take on the Texans. Well, we don't take on the Texans. The fans don't show up for the Texans to take on anybody else. That's all we Report take on. News. We are actually big time Texans fans. Yeah. They gave me um they gave us oh uh, my, God, the, uh, my cause my cleats shoes. So cool. The Houston Texans organization takes care of this particular show. Better than maybe more than anybody else in the NFL. I love the Texans. I, I and yet, them. and yet, we're still just take a dump on them. With no, the we're not taking a dump. No. We're trying to motivate and inspire. Like, hey, listen, you got a team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got a guy. You got a team again. This ain't just a turn down for one. Actually, we're supporting the Texans because we want more fans to show up. So, actually, we're supporting the Texans organization. We're actually just questioning, you know, who's showing up. Look at us. We're good. You're. We're that's like why. Taylor. God. Good for us. Yeah. We need to take a victory lap sometimes. <laughs> wow. Pat ourselves on the back. Every man. once in a while. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, a, what a spin cycle. Let's fit spin. You're disgusting. Let's talk about the uh, uh let's wrap up the Burnley conversation. Sure. Cause we're yeah. raising the Charlottes. Yep. The um, up the Charlottes. Up the Charlottes. Clarets, 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 Clarets. Up the Clarets. Up the Jones. <laughs> so yeah, I just looked it. at the standings. It. I looked at the standings here and Ooh. I think that line between 17 and 18 is an important one. Mm -hmm. Very important. We got Everton on Saturday. Need it. The old old Burnley coach legend coming back to Turf more this week. He coaches at Everton Uh, now? Yes. Everton was where Timmy Howard played? That's right. Okay. Do they have any Americans on Everton? I don't believe so. They got demoted. I don't believe so. They got demoted 10 points, and now they've won three games on the bounce. Why'd they get demoted 10 points? What they? Uh, Cheating. Some regulations. Financial financial fair play violation. What's that mean? They're just paying under the table to people? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there were some accounting things that uh, that went awry, so they got deducted 10 points and then now just decided to turn into one of the <laughs> hottest teams in the entire league. The oh, moment. yeah, I see that at the end there, WWW. Yeah. That's not a website yeah. or anything else. That's no. their streak they're on right yeah. now? Yeah, this is approaching yeah. uh, put oh, no. your mortgage on Everton territory. Whoa. We're, we're, oh, talking, oh, we're talking about no. some serious. Oh, Burnley, Burnley's hey. gotten results in two out of three. They're playing good ball right now. Yeah, look at that, WLD. We got yeah. Coach, we got a coach revenge game, and, and, and just taking a peek here, Burnley is six feet under already. This might be time. To, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. Connor. Maybe maybe figure your own teams out before you start yeah. talking about other teams. Oh. Oh. How about that, Connor? Watch it. How about that? How about you guys figure yourself out? Stop leaking stuff over there, left oh. and right. Oh. Oh. Figure it out. Yeah. We're under the draft, yeah. brother. It's sinking ship over yeah. there. Are you? Me. Who's who's picking? You don't know. Got who's who's oh. coaching the pick? Oh. Oh. Who? You don't know. Hopefully me. Hopefully they let me pick. I don't know if Robert Kraft. Okay, Joel. who are you picking? Joe Wall. Who are you get picking in here? Okay, great. So who's quarterback in the squad? Don't matter. We got Joe freaking Alt, brother. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. let's pivot away from Burnley. Let's move to New England. Obviously, yesterday you're on the internet. You saw it. It took off everywhere because the way the tweet was phrased from the green light podcast with chris long was per nbc now it could have said per nbc sports boston which is where it actually came from which made it even more legit i Mm -hmm. think on the internet tommy curran says after the germany game he was told from sources that know that the decision had already been made because they lost to the colts and then it hadn't got better that obviously is going to go if it has been decided that New England is going to part ways with Bill Belichick, greatest coach and GM of all time. Your thoughts on it all? And I, what Connor said in a moment of clarity after tearing down Tommy Kerr. Boy, yeah. I mean, 45 minutes. Tommy Kerr, you went for like six minutes yeah. tearing down Tommy Kerr. Connor was not happy about this particular report. But then he said, this is going to get settled with Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick going into a room. That's how this is going to get settled. It'll happen sometime after the season. He might come out of there with an extension. He might, they might come out of there with him moving. He's going to want your left. Who knows what's going to take place? What are your thoughts on it all? And Bill Belichick, the coach, GM, and what he's been able to do in New England, JJ? Before I answer, I have a question for Connor because he's obviously in the know with New England. Wow. Uh, New England notoriously uh, very – the media – obviously understands the dynamic there very well. So reports and leaks coming out of there are few and far between. Tommy Curran, I missed your rant on it. Is he in the know? Like, is this a very, very legitimate, or is this like a sketchy, where are we at? Tom Curran, nail on the head when talking about the football team and what how they're going to perform. I, I don't really trust anyone in New England when it comes to sources in the know at the time in the building. Okay. So that helps nothing. That didn't help me at all. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, was, no. So I would say this. like, I do think that kind of what AJ was talking about earlier, kind of like you were talking about ships in the night down the hallway. I think us in the outside world 
talk about things, speculate things, think that many more conversations are happening inside of buildings than are actually happening. Do I think that thoughts are absolutely going through Robert Kraft's head? Do I think that he's talking to some people in his circles about what he might do? Yes. Do I think him and Bill Belichick have specifically sat down to discuss it? That I'm not as sure about. I do know like from experience having been involved in whether it's, you know, whether it's trades or free agency or all sorts of different things, I think many less conversations actually happen than we in the outside world like to think happen. So I don't I don't know if they've had that conversation. I do believe that Bill Belichick has earned the level of respect and dignity to be able to sit down and have those conversations. I mean, you win six rings somewhere, you should absolutely be at least in the conversation and not just be completely told that you're on your way out. Yeah, I saw Peyton Manning get cut, and then obviously you move on from the Houston Texans, and I think what you were referring to, I'm burning some sage to get some good vibes out there. Yeah, I was going to say, what's going on? Yeah, it's just sage here to burn so we can uh, get good vibes in the studio as we talk about something that's very, very heavy here, obviously on all Mm -hmm. of our hearts. Mm -hmm. Robert Kraft, I do not envy his position. For you, it sounds like what you were saying, and you've probably been asked about this a bunch, you had no idea what was coming? Not a lot of conversations took place whenever it was kind of the end of your time at Houston? No, the end of my time was a very mutual thing. I, I actually went and spoke to them about it. I mean, there was it was there was some things going on, and and I wanted uh, you know an opportunity to go and be able to pick my next opportunity. And I had a very very respectful conversation with Mrs. McNair. I went over to the McNairs, and it was Mrs. McNair, uh, Cal, and Hannah, and I. I just was very clear with them, expressed my gratitude for everything, and also requested the opportunity to. Um, have a chance to do something else and i have absolutely nothing but love for for them and janice mcnair is one of the sweetest women in the world and i'm very thankful and um it was a very tough conversation a very tough conversation because of everything we've been through but they were very gracious and allowed me to go and do what i was requesting to do when i saw peyton leave Indy, and I see you leave Houston after experiencing what it was. It was like, okay, here we go. Business. This is business. We got to remember that. And also, there's people that are making decisions at places, even at the highest level, that aren't making necessarily the right or the proper decision or acting how you would assume that they should act. And I think that is goes along with what you were saying about how, like, the behind the scene convos that you hear about in like movies or in like maybe a business book, like, you should always be very transparent and you should be open with your feelings yeah. and thoughts with people. It's like, well, when you had humans in there and feelings and pride and having to deal with the people, it's not necessarily as easy to be like, hey, uh, I'm about sick of your yeah. shit. Hey, you're, like that is not an easy thing to do everywhere. So you're right. I think people do get confused about that all. It's going to be Bob and Bill. Yep. Just like it's always been. That's Bingo. Right. That's what it's always going to be. When he needs $110 million on the first day of free agency, guess who's in the room? Bob in Bill, when he's deciding to move on from Tom Brady or not making an offer that forces Tom Brady to stay around, guess who's in there? Bob and Bill. What? Now, they're going to have their most serious conversation mm-hmm. yet. By far. Could you imagine being in that room? I hope they film it. I do hope they film it. That would be a... Uh... They won't. <sighs> you never I'm fascinated just to know what it would like, the dynamic. Because like, obviously, they've been, like you guys are saying, they're like an old man. They've been together for years and years and years. So they have they have a relationship. They have a rapport. There's... I'm sure there's been squabbles and fights over the years, but there's obviously a pretty serious level of mutual respect there as well. Like, I'm man, I'd love to know. Like, is it something where Robert Kraft walks in and he, he like he's just he's over it, he's done, he just wants it to be done and wants to move on, and Bill's not, or is it Bill's ready to move on also and Robert's? Yeah, like, JJ, that's what I, I wanted to ask you, JJ, that's for real. What, what if Bill is? What if we're like missing this? What if Bill wants a new opportunity mm-hmm. somewhere else to go try to to find a way? Is that a possibility? You think? Mm-hmm. I, I I think it might be, you know. I mean, if you oh, think no, about it's... everything that's going on, I mean, we don't know. it's there's something cool about the the length of his career and the opportunity to finish it out there. But then there's also maybe he does want a new opportunity. Maybe there's so much of the comparison with you know, was it Tom? Was it Bill? Who? What? How? Maybe he wants a new opportunity to go and prove and show something that way. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe he's really comfortable there and loves living there and wants to stay there, and it's not his choice. Maybe he, maybe we're all making this shit all up, and maybe they're they're going to come out after the year and be like, I don't know what everybody's talking about. We're just going to keep rolling. Yeah, we never yeah. even had a thought of anything. It's like, never? 
Really? Sure. One year left on a contract. Bill, <laughs> savvy business person. Yes. Will he do one year left? Well, Bob, savvy business person. Yep. Will he not utilize if he's going to move on from it? It's a, it is a fascinating situation up there. That's why any piece of information that comes from anybody yeah. that could potentially know, <sighs> huge news. The NFL is an entertainment business, man. Like, don't let anybody fool you. Don't let anybody make you think it's something other. The NFL is an entertainment business. And it is entertaining as hell. It is incredibly entertaining. We, like we, like some. There's a lot of sports fans that like maybe their wife or somebody watches a reality show and they're like, oh, I can't believe they watch that. I can't believe you're talking about what that person is thinking. And in regards to this conversation, well, that's all we're doing. We're just sitting here oh, talking yeah. about what this person might be thinking, might be doing. It's our own reality show. I've got to meet you know a lot of our fans with these Friday shows and chatting with like significant others are with them sometimes. And, like, some significant others will tell me, like, he used to make fun of me for watching some trash TV, but then he'll watch games all day on Sunday. <laughs> and then we're watching your show just to talk about the things yeah. that we watch for five days. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing it again for six <laughs> months or whatever. And she was like, I get made. F that is this is the most ridiculous. Yeah. You've been a part of my life a lot. I just want to let you know. I'm like, I am so sorry for that. But it's pretty sweet. It's awesome. It's yeah. pretty sweet that we have yeah. this. It is pretty cool. And even the fodder with Bill, like you would wonder too, would he want to go to a team that's already perfectly set up and he doesn't get to build it on his own and the credit's kind of like, well, the team was already good? Or would he want to build his own thing back over? Who's that though? Who's, Who's that? Who would yeah. he be going to? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with New England and staying for another year is it's the perfect situation. He wants that, oh, the he, he wants that wins record, yeah. I mean, you go to a team like the Chargers and, and he wins, then he's proving that it was him because they have the quarterback, yep. they have the team. They Everybody kind of believes that the Chargers should have been doing it already. If he goes and he sure. does make that successful, mm. boom. If you would just immediately say that was Bill. If yep. you think that people won't say Bill chose the Chargers because he knew that they already had Justin Herbert and yeah. sure, Bill helped, but it, the team was already there, they would way rather point the finger at Brandon Staley for being an idiot and not winning with this team than giving I, Bill There's going to be haters for sure, but for like sure. when, when Doug Peterson came on, we were like, did you pick Jacksonville yeah. because Trevor Lawrence? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Sean Payton with Denver, you know, he had smart, a quarterback. you're not stupid. Why would you go somewhere that doesn't? If, <laughs> yeah. if you can choose, <laughs> like, I mean, as a quarterback, <laughs> this guy does. Like, here, let, me, let me go pick a team that has nobody and I'll almost you, look like hey, a genius. What, yeah, if, no. what, if, what if our angle after he picks go to a bad place, it's like, yep, Bill's dumb. He's He could have picked a place <laughs> with a good quarterback. Yeah. He chose yeah. a bad quarterback. <laughs> Bill has lost his fastball. That is, <laughs> but, there's like ways you can hate. I, yeah. I, Doug, Doug Peterson also spent 130 million dollars in the first two days of free agency. Christian Kirk, shut yeah, up. they can't. They, they don't. They can't do that with the Chargers. Yeah, the Chargers fascinating dynamic down there too because. What, a Massachusetts tax is probably insane too, huh? Uh, in, yeah, not to LA, but yeah. That's like Shohei Otani's deal. The Big way they set uh, that thing up, next level. genius. They set that thing up for like, let, can I move to somewhere other than California to get a lot of this money well, so that mm -hmm. California doesn't get three hundred and fifty mm -hmm. million dollars? And then how about the Lakers? Think about the day that California had. If they were just going to do a standard baseball contract. They would have made $350 million in taxes off of Shohei's deal. Yep. And then they would have got $250,000 from every Lakers player after they won yeah, that they, play yeah. tournament. <laughs> I actually thought of that when they were like, big day for L.A. They got Shohei Otani and then LeBron. And I'm like, look how much money California just made off of all these bonuses and contracts due to their state taxes. That is certainly something to think about. But if you get to, if Bill Belichick goes to L.A., uh -huh. yeah. he's the king of the time. Yeah. Oh, my God. He'll be wearing that suit that he wore on game day. Did you see how bleeding uh -huh. he looked? Do you know how often he'd be walking out of buildings with his shirt off because of the weather Ooh. out there? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Kidding me? He might surf. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, he might surf to practice. His boat looked great in the L.A. Harbor. Oh, my, the Seven Rings or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, L.A. Oh. doesn't have a harbor. Huh? He would have to do a they boat parade. Brady, Brady did it. Brady did it. Brady went to Tampa. They had great receivers. You know, he had a good defense. Went to nice weather. Why not go win one and have a boat parade? Why not be a charger? Yeah, well, especially because the ownership, too. We talk about ownership being in line with everything. It's not like their family hates each other and they've had a feud over the past <laughs> five years. It's it's more so just all flowers over there. Mm. Let's move away from Fans that like particular it. subject because I'm oh. not sure uh, we know anything <laughs> about it. Not was, there was a time, though, where it was being reported. This is not us making this up. No. These are things that were reported. Now, they have not gone to be one of the members of the Spanish family was trying to force the rest of the, the family to sell the team. Yes. Correct. That happened within the last couple of years. Do you remember that, AJ? 
Oh yeah, there, there does not. We we definitely know that there's not a whole lot of unity up top with the Chargers. It seems like, right? Oh. There's. Hold on, I think the brothers are. Yeah, right? is the sister. The sister, not that mm. big of a fan. Yeah. No. Of everything that got going. And they don't have the crazy amount of cash that a lot of these owners have, right? Well, that's what she was. She yeah. that was yeah. in that same hey, report. We're said. broke. Let's sell. We <laughs> don't have. I feel like that's happening a lot. Like now we're kind of getting almost into a generation where there's a lot of like second or third generation NFL owners now and. They're like, there's a lot of family feuds that seem to be going on where like some kids really want to sell. Some kids want to be, make it profitable so that they have cash. Other ones really want to hold on and keep the legacy going. I feel like we're kind of getting that with a few organizations. You know what? It's similar to farms, you know, yeah. in America. <clears throat> that is, uh, I don't want to say it's a younger generation doesn't necessarily want to do the same stuff as the older generations, but like with teams, it's the same thing. Do we want to just cash out from this? Like, cause it's enough money for us all just to live or do we want to put the work in and do this farm same exact thing i guess it's happening yes it's a we damn need, shame we need your farm we, we do need Love a farm. farm big time yeah. my roommate in college farmer right now shoot farmer dog i'm not he, he, he's working yeah he's out there yeah, yeah. yeah no he's service i told him i'm just gonna start facetiming him randomly just so that i could show the world of what like people are doing right now just so like people what's know. he what's he farming we got uh, we got beans. What? Uh, I think we got some corn. What? We used to be a, we used to be a big time chicken farm, but we Ooh. went away from the chicken farms because too small of an operation Pain. to really have any say. It, big enough to make a living. They've been a chicken farm, I think, thirty years or something like that. Damn. Had to shut down the stalls. They got beef. Get him on the horn. Get him on the horn. He's out in the middle of no. <laughs> What is it? Are we in harvest right now? What has Bill tried? No, has Bill offered on his land yeah, yet? Past harvest. So here's the thing. Like I think. Winter. Yeah, I think he is. Winter prep. His dad's still working, but like, he will certainly get offered a lot of money for his as soon as property. You know what I mean? And it's like this dude is one of the smartest guys I've ever been around. Great football player, and he's out in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Rarely has service, and he's living like he's an Amishman. That's what he, every single day of his life. That's right. He showed up in that flannel and those boots. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Loved everything well, about it. Yeah. What do you got to my well? I'm gonna wake up when the roosters start crowing tomorrow morning. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna go feed the cat. How do we feel about it? Would you would you would you be mad at him for selling, or would you say it was good? Like, is it bad that a big if a big company came in and bought it? How, how do we feel about it? He's okay. not selling. He yeah. He the, the reason why he is, I think he's taking a pretty big stand on the whole. We're not selling. No like, way. Yeah. It, it, everything I know about farming, and the state of situations there come through his eyes because he's like literally living it all. And I think a lot of people take the easy way out of just selling and then who knows what it becomes mm, and yeah. what it's doing. Who's yeah. buying it. And what the food becomes what, in the yeah. future. He legitimately animals. enjoys it too, doesn't he? It's not like it's like, you know. It's just way of life. I yeah, think. exactly. Yeah. It's awesome. He and I, polar opposite livings. You know, because we were just an internet show. Mm -hmm. mm. And then he's Amish person. Probably. Off the internet, yeah. Yeah, and we, uh, it's a beautiful thing. But you're right about teams. Next generation. Speaking of next generation, <laughs> this Miami Dolphins team huh? is in the next generation right now. And they're potentially in a situation where it's all crumbling down from the outside looking in. Omar Kelly reported that there was a players only meeting. Now, he was accurate in this particular statement, but this is standard operating procedure in Miami, mm -hmm. I believe. Now, when you think about this Miami team, Obviously, you think offense. I believe in them completely. But the defense with Vic Fangio mm -hmm. is going to have to, you know, keep growing and keep going. Mm -hmm. But they need to quit cheating. Darius has a hey, question for you. They did something on Monday night that uh, we used to do in New England, that late defensive shift. We used to do on some short yardage situations, but they got a penalty call for it. No penalty has been at the top yes. of the conversation. Uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? And did you guys used to do that in Houston? Uh, I do have thoughts on this. When I saw it live, I was very perplexed. You are allowed, like the ref, I believe he described it as a sudden movement or too sudden of a movement. Yep. You're allowed to move. You can move as fast as you want. You can move as long as you don't cross the line. You can move in any direction you want. The only thing that I can think they might have done, which the ref that called it, I don't, like, you can't simulate the snap count with your voice. So you can't say, like, set hot. You can't say go. You're not allowed to do that. That's the only thing that I can see that may have got them this call. But the ref up top gives a false start call. The players are all hanging their heads like they know yep. they, they're moving back. And it's, a, it's very similar to the, the Steelers uh, with the snapper. When the snapper moved his head, everybody on the field knew that was on the defense. Even the guy who did it, he knew it was on him. Like, if this, this was one of these things in this Dolphins game where you're allowed to shift and the entire point of the shift is to get them to jump off sides. 
and it worked perfectly. And instead, it got called on them, and now five yards closer to the goal line, and yeah, hand the ball to Derrick Henry. It's going in the end zone 100 percent of the time. Yeah. He's- so I I think it was weird as a defensive lineman. I don't know what they did wrong unless they simulated the snap count. Yeah, Derrick Henry's a defensive lineman, and normally if they do simulate the snap count, the ref will say that at, during the announcement. Yeah. To your point, he said something about the sudden movement. We have the call right here. Yeah. No, no, you're right. Delay game defense, number 92 for Buck Hoover. Unbelievable. That penalty to four half the distance to the goal. Yeah, you can move as abruptly as you want. Think about a blitzing linebacker running up to the line and stopping. Like, that's an abrupt movement. You can do anything you want as long as you don't cross the line. Like, what? And this wasn't even abrupt. That's not even close to abrupt. That's a standard shift. I'm getting more and more mad the more I see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the the ref saying that it was the abrupt movement, there has to be some sort of something somewhere in the rule book for them to say that, or this is just another situation of complete ineptitude from the refs. Is that what we're thinking? I mean, it, may, it very well. Like, I don't know. I've I, I've never in my life. I played defensive line my entire career. I've never once seen abrupt movement called. Maybe, uh, maybe it's in the rule book in some obscure way. I mean, maybe it also goes kind of along with the Chiefs play where they're calling a play at the end of the game that they would never call at any other point in the entire game. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. It certainly is interesting. It certainly is interesting. A lot of interesting shit going on. Go ahead, What's Connor. the call usually? Like if they yelled set for them to know to Delay move? Delay the game. Uh, so for the so line to move. I'll, I'll say this. We had calls where you do say, you do simulate it, and you just hope they don't catch you. Like we had, it was called uh, cheater. Uh, what was it called? It was called uh, yeah. It was called like Hertz or something. A moving company. What's a moving company? Mayfly. Penske. We call it Penske. 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 Ooh, uh, so so every, on Penske, somebody would say move, and all of us would move at one time. And a lot of times that shit would work. Yeah. And you get him to move off sides, and you just hope the ref didn't hear you say move. Like a third and another wrong with it. And That's one. football. A backer can come down and yell move, though. I know backers. I would have to come down and yeah. yell move if we're if we're shifting. So and smacking yeah, ass. Ways. Yep. And smacking oh, ass. Hell yeah. Ain't there a lot of that? And the crazy part about that play is they did not move fast. That was like a very and they were slow, side regular side. movement. It was, a, it was a basic like shift yeah. deal too. If you if you sat there and you kind of like lunged in your – you're in a four-point, Jage, and you like lunged a little yeah. bit, almost forward. I could see that being abrupt. Fourth that was my move. So I would be in a three-point with my right hand down, and then I, I would right at the last second just switch to my left hand down. And that would get guys to jump all the time. I got the Buccaneers to do it three times on one drive one time. It was um, I was literally looking at the guy like, dude, figure it out. I'm doing the same thing every time. <laughs> so, yes, like I yeah. agree. As long as you don't cross the line, you're supposed to be good. They do that on field goals, too. You'll see, like, longer mm-hmm. field goals. They'll shift everybody on the D-line, try to get a five-yard penalty on the offensive line. And to be honest, watching it, I don't know how the O-linemen don't jump. You know, because when it's like four guys very close to each other and at the same exact time coordinated, they all fly to their one side. It's hard not to just like react, yeah. you know, on movement. And it's like a good play. It's a good move. But once again, we would like some clarity on it all. Was there a simulated snap count? And if there mm-hmm. was, why wasn't that said by the ref afterwards, which is standard operating procedure? Normally they'll say fake auto or fake cadence or something like that to kind of clear it all up. Uh, the NFL, interesting, mm-hmm. oh, interesting yeah. times right now. Conman has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, JJ, interesting times also with the Cleveland Browns. Now, we all know how great of a quarterback Joe Flacco is. Oh. Yeah. When you watch Footsteps Flacco, does it give you that thought like, shit, if he can do it, I can do it. I might, I might as well oh. go back and play right now. I will say watching his interview after the game was really cool. Like seeing how how much it means to him and how special it is and how uh, obviously playing well, but just knowing that he still feels like that kid out there, that he still enjoys it. And I mean, he's playing at an unbelievably high level. Like watching him play makes me wonder like, what are all these other teams doing that with some of the quarterback play we're seeing around the league? Like how come nobody was giving this guy a shot? Like he's playing very good football at the moment and yeah, after the game, it was definitely cool to see him appreciate it so much, and I think that's that is really cool. How about how the, how he's playing though, JJ? Like, do you watch him? I know he kind of just blew by the whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're not coming back to play or whatever, but he's old. He's an old boy. Yeah. He is an old, very boy. old boy. He was ready the entire season, and then it wasn't until just three weeks ago he gets a phone call, and all of a sudden, not just hey, off the couch university, which is very real. He's leading this Browns team and spinning it. Like, not just like, 
hey, we'll have you throw it 10 times, 11 times. You know, we don't know where you're at. Let's yeah. get you back into game shape. It's like we're opening this thing up. Mm -hmm. We're flying around. We're playing the best we've played on the offensive side of the ball in some time. They have a lot of injuries, obviously, the Cleveland Browns. It's been a tough season whenever it comes to the injury bug. But why not the Cleveland Browns with that defense, uh, JJ? Is that what you're thinking? I mean, he's playing. We've all said all year long their defense is playing lights out. If their offense can kind of do what they need to do, that team certainly has it. I mean, if he's playing, if he continues to play the way he's playing right now, there's no reason. I, I don't think there's like, I think they're one of those teams that you definitely don't want to face them because it's always going to be extremely difficult to put points up on that defense. And then if Flacco continues to play at this level, yeah, why, why can't they be good? Why can't they be successful? And I would imagine only with more and more reps as he gets back into it and continues to knock even more rust off, he's probably going to play even better. Although we have seen a couple situations wow. this year where quarterbacks came in and lit it up in their first game or two and then kind of had regressions. I mean, Minnesota and Josh Dobbs obviously uh, yeah. is a situation. Yeah, we um, saw. We got a couple. We saw. Yeah. It's tough. The passion on was tough. That was a tough deal. Yeah, but they, they ain't. It was tough. They ain't <laughs> I was going to say, Fleck is a you know, yeah. Super Bowl Super MVP. Bowl. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think it's great. I'm also, I think I don't. I'm not a hundred percent sure of the rules of the practice squad situation, but couldn't somebody just scoop them up and just to keep them off the Browns? Like, we, if you were an opponent, hey, okay, you, AJ, D, but myself, I think we all were very confused about the practice squad rules. We all felt the same way, where it's like, yeah, got to go to the mm -hmm. other team. It's like going through waivers almost. Like, yeah, if you, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's not. I guess Joe Flacco uh -huh. can say. I don't want to go. Mm -hmm. You you could have had me three weeks ago, four weeks ago. You said no. This who brought me to the dance. I'm staying here. Allegedly, that is the case. Now they're gonna have to figure out a deal with him over the next four weeks if they want to keep him going. Because Stefanski announces he's the starter for the rest of the season, and then the next day he's cut. It's like yeah. what? What what is going on? Is Cleveland doing Cleveland stuff again? Uh, so you're saying we're not we're not smarter than everybody else? Like we're we're not we didn't have the brilliant idea that nobody else came up. Why did we all feel we that genius. way though? Why did we all feel that way? I wonder. Because I is think that that's how it, how it is? like with most yes. guys, that's how it is because they want to be on an active roster. So nobody Got ever it. says no to getting called up. Um, but yeah, I guess mm -hmm. it is funny to see like he's going to start for the next three weeks, next day, practice squad. What the fuck? Waved. What the hell? Uh, what the you got to be kidding. No, I didn't do it. 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 Run the tape. Run the tape. I didn't yeah. do it. Did I didn't you do it. Need did it. you see yesterday too? We didn't, yeah, we didn't even get I did. You, you did. son of a bitch. Two in a row. You, did, you had a simulated hard count. Well, Not even one day. Two in a row. Jeez. You got to K. I didn't. You got I don't think I did. You got I don't all think I the did. way to K. Normally you could stop at like C. Still counts, but you did hold back. It's like a check swing. Bingo. Yeah. Like halfway over the, the home I got a play. friendly yeah. up down the first baseline. No, I got no, a friendly no, no, up. No. What's yes, the guy's name? Dick, Dick, Dick Wolf. Yes, what is it? Dick, 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 yeah. Dick Buck. No, Dick Wolf. Dick Good. No, Wolf. Dick Wolf uh, Dick, created Dick uh, Good. Law and Order Dick yeah. with an E. He's like, yes, right here. Yeah. And then they're going to first baseline too. Like, wow, maybe another judge. He's both hands. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, <laughs> two strikes. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It what's was. your what's your uh, what's your out? If you're an umpire, what's your strike three call out? Let me I, see. I it. think I'm doing a full back you know, pedal. Yeah, yeah, I'm out, and then a full fade away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to do it. What was that movie? Uh, old white guy, really funny. Yeah. Like oh, really God, funny. Funny. Naked Gun? Yeah. Was it? Oh, yeah. Naked Gun. Naked yeah. Gun. Yeah. I like, be, yeah. Cool. I like to be a little person at a urinal always on my toes. Mm -hmm. You know, those types of jokes throughout for two hours straight. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah. I think O.J. Simpson's in there. Yes, he is. Well, he's good. Th yeah. He was a good thespian. He right? was. Yeah. He, in multiple he, facets. He, he was a good He was a good thespian. A good actor out there. Oh, yeah. He was a star in his yeah. biggest role, being a husband. Peace. AJ's pretty quiet Peace. for the OJ talk. What's that, AJ? Yeah. I didn't say the F word. Yeah. I, I, We're talking ain't about no a dummy movie. over here. We're talking ain't about no a dummy. movie right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? Let's move uh, along yeah, before. I mean, JJ just swore all over it's ESPN. Right now. It's disgusting. Can't have it. Town Diggs just... has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, I had a follow up on the Browns defense and why they're giving up over 30 on the road and then I think 12 at home. Is is that just who they play or is it is there something to do with that? And, how come TJ keeps getting kicked in the mouth? Is he all right? This fascinates me. It, this truly fascinates me. When I saw that stat for the first time, I was I was pretty – I mean, at home, there's certainly major advantages that play into your hand as a defender. You got the crowd behind you. The offense generally has to want a silent count. You can jump the snap, things of that nature. Um, on the road, you know, you don't have that per se, but it, it 
definitely shouldn't be a 30 point swing or whatever it is that they have and uh the other thing that people always say is defense travels like bring your defense with you you got to have a defense when it comes playoff time all those things and it is I, I honestly don't know what it could be to make it such a gigantic swing from home to away um and then I don't know why TJ got kicked in the mouth. He was making a tackle and just got smoked right in the face. So sometimes it happens. Yeah. Do you know he had a concussion immediately? Hmm. I what he I know he didn't have one during the game. Hmm. Oh, of Whoa. course, okay. of course. Okay. Oh. Sweet visor though. He should keep the visor. Yeah, he should. <laughs> he should. And that's because. Did you play with the visor? Did you play with the visor? I wish I couldn't. I can't see through that. Same here, dude. I couldn't see, couldn't breathe, couldn't live. Like I was, I thought I was gonna pass away when I put that visor on. I wanted to so bad because it looks awesome. Well, and when it gets steamed up, too, I don't know how guys handle yeah. that. That freaked me out. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd get bummed out. No if idea. I see, if like my periph yeah. was getting those people are mentally just on steamed, a different level. It wasn't bad. That looks sweet. You had one, didn't you? Yeah, deep I mean, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks open. awesome. What he had sensitivity to light? Is that what was going on here? Yeah. What? Are you, <laughs> nah, it's the, I don't think he wanted to get Whoa. poked in the eye. He didn't want to get poked in the Sorry. eye. Oh, he got knee in the he, mouth he, already. Yep. That's See you at ESPN. Great to have you. Good day. <laughs> too early? Too early? Too early? Way too early? I heard the music. Bye, ESPN. Love you. One more time. See you at ESPN. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Uh, Let's go. Uh, I think it got in. It was either right. It was right out, or yeah. it was right out. Pretty good. Well, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you one. So TJ, I was talking to him about. I mean, you know, he's in the protocol now. That's public knowledge. Um, and for he what? Has to go for through what? The test. For what? Uh, for concussion. Oh no! Um, the day after. I mean, it's like, yeah, later. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, that's that's public knowledge. Is that breaking? So you have to go through the protocol, and you have to go through all the questions and everything. No, and he, he I'm, I'm talking to him, and you have a baseline that you do before the season. like So that's supposed to be when you're all good and everything, you do the baseline test. And then you compare your yeah. concussion test oh, to it. Yeah. He called me the other day, and he's like, all my tests now are better than my baseline tests. So I was like, oh my God, man. So he, was, so like, he had a bad day. Get him day. on the field. He Get him a, back to practice. Hey, it's interesting, because those questions are fascinating. Like, that word has come yeah. up a lot whenever we're talking about it. It's because this particular league is so damn fascinating. Like this baseline test getting introduced during my time, I think, mm -hmm. in the NFL was not always there. This baseline test became the answer. Remember, it's like a 30 minute thing. Oh, yeah. You get guys are supposed to focus on this. Yeah. You know, and they're like, hey, need you to need you to really focus because this is going to save your life down. We also need 35 minutes of your day here <laughs> going in here and doing this. It's like, okay, yeah, that'll happen. <sighs> And obviously, in theory, this makes sense. In theory, this is the real thing. Once again, dealing with humans, mostly in training camp, sure. okay, going through a lot of stuff. I don't know if that baseline thing is the right answer. You know, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right answer. It just, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Like, you, you've done it before, right, obviously. So I was asked, because I mean, I'm fascinated. I've, I've never been in the protocol, so I want to know all the stuff and everything. You have to do that same test again to see compared to your baseline. But apparently, then you also have to do a bunch of pen and paper written tests. And, uh, I mean, I love my brother to death, not, um, but uh, pen and paper written test is not the strongest suit. So it's just, it's fascinating to hear about how it all goes. And like, I, I was asking him, give me some of the questions. And like, some of the stuff you got to remember, like, they do like the numbers thing where it's like five, seven, four, seven, five, nine. You got to try and write it back down. And then it gets longer and longer. That, I mean, that'll mess you up. That'll mess you uh, up. The shapes that got me. Five, seven, four, seven, five, nine. Why'd you pick those numbers right there? That was awesome. I don't know. Safe that was evident. Safe combination. Yeah. Oh, it, I, AJ, a AJ, AJ, zero combined concussions. These two? You say you never went to the protocol? Look at those heads. Makes sense. Yeah, never went to the protocol. Oh, okay. oh, oh you son of a bitch. No, that's, that's, that's just a factual oh, statement. Oh, that's that's a, just a factual this, statement. You never, held, you never guys, had to, right? These guys yeah. used to. No, I never had to go <laughs> in. Yeah. yeah. What, are you oh, going to no. volunteer if you don't feel bad? Get, 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 Stinger. Uh, Hurry up. Get up get I'm not a doctor. Trainer, I don't know what's going on. I'm not a doctor. Trainer. Stinger. Stinger. Got the wind knocked out of me. So I can say with certainty. I don't know. I don't know if I'm – I'm, I've already said too much. I'm an idiot. The, uh, um, but, like, I asked him. I said, like, what did – on the sideline. They asked me questions. So, yeah, I answered the question on the sideline, and I passed it. So, like, there you go. what more do you want? You want, like, pass the question, pass the test. Good hit. Stinger.
Got your bell rung? You all right? What happened? What did you do? Just stay. Do not say you got your bell rung. Just stay. I'm pretty good. Can I get the lights real bright, right? Jeez. Stinger. What are we? Oh yeah. No, it's wind knocked out. Yeah, that's what you got. I just got the wind knocked out of me. Golly. You tell these people to turn it down. <laughs> Stinger hurts turn more. Every or, time. or you, or you drop your mouth guard step. on the ground and you, you you look for your mouth guard for a couple seconds. Just you need a, you need an extra second or two down there. Stinger in my mouth guard. I saw a guy dead on the field. Cool. I saw a guy dead on the field. Yeah, he had mm -hmm. a stinger, right? Thank dead, you, Derek Carr. Dead on a field. And then, who was it, Ewald? No, who, uh... Derek Carr first, he saw me and, like, pointed, like, hey, hurry up, get out here. Popped up, shoulder, then uh, Ewald, great teammate, Eric Wald, one of my favorite teammates. Of he, all time. Uh, he reported me to the doctor at halftime. Uh, this guy was dead on the field. How'd you guys not see it? <laughs> Where's the unk? Can we please? Can we, we didn't have unk, no unk, so good old days. Did you play plays after? Oh, yeah. Two-minute drive. <laughs> one of the things you get kind of, you get irritated. You Do you remember the drive? Different. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Not. I, I just remember if, yeah. just irrationally just yelling yeah, at there. you know anybody teammates. Nice. If you knew though, D, but don't you think if you knew to fake a stinger, you were somewhat with it. You're okay. Okay. Yeah, but I was. Mm -hmm. I was good point. I was out for good, probably five seconds. I think oh, that boy. is. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, he was, it was out. He was dead body. Everybody kind of. What happens when you wake up, D, but in that moment, what is it? What is it? Uh. Don't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard don't, to tell. Don't remember. It was good. Thing, I think it was the last play. And then uh, we went to the sideline, and then we had a two-minute drive, like a minute and a half, maybe I remember something like that. I remember watching it back a few days later. But um, it's just funny seeing yourself on film and not remembering being that. Well, it's not funny, but mm -hmm. know, part of the game. It's That's a weird, sign up for. A weird feeling. It's oh, a weird feeling. It's an odd it's feeling. Yeah. Seeing my body do something that I will have never have recollection mm -hmm. of. Yeah. That's wild. Part yeah. Of hey, your the two, the two scariest play. moments I've had on a, or I've had watching football, neither involved me, but one, I had a teammate – get uh, knocked out on the sideline, and he went out cold, went into the fencing position. Ooh. And then when he came to, he started fighting the doctors. Like, he literally was so, like, in a state, he started punching the doctors. It was one of the scariest, scariest things I've ever seen. And then the other one, I was watching the game. It was the Steelers, and Derek, my brother, went down on a punt, got blocked in the back, and his uh, the punt returned his knee, hit him in the forehead, and he oh, went yeah. out cold with the with the fencing, and that was. And then TJ came out and like protected him, and got, I I was bawling, crying in my house. Like I have never been more sad, scared in my life than when I saw that moment. That was I literally was just full blown crying in my house. That you think you think sad. about the family members a lot whenever those things happen, you know? Because I think it was. Uh... I think it was Robert Mathis or Reggie. Reggie Wayne posted a video on his ex account, I think, and it was these highlights of those hits from back when you played and when you played and when you played at the beginning and like what people used to do. And Reggie was like, "Man, I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know how we signed up for this. Like, think about family members just watching like a line, like AJ. Like, think about AJ's family. Now, granted, they're from Ohio, so true. Mm -hmm. This is kind of just standard operating procedure. He's running his face directly into a fullback's <laughs> face in the NFC North." Every week for like ten years, they're just every play. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. and then AJ is getting to, like disgusted. Even if my family's worried about me getting knocked out every play, they need to have a little bit of respect for me. It's like think <laughs> about what these, you know what I mean? Like think about what these families go through watching this shit. I, hey, thank you to you guys that played those real positions. Yeah. Legit, <laughs> legit. I'm happy I didn't have to do that. Every time I made a tackle, I was sore for four fucking days. In that era, too. Yeah, that it looks so yeah. much worse when you're watching oh, yeah. everything. I think mm. everybody will speak to it. Like when you are watching, it looks. I, I cringe now every hit, every move. But when you're playing, it doesn't literally bother you in the smallest bit. It is crazy how watching, and maybe it's the cameras, maybe it's the sound and those microphones they have. But it just seems it bothers me so much more when I watch than when I'm actually playing. You and Bill Cower watching games right next to each other, or oh. what? When he's bringing you donuts and everything, how's that relationship? Yeah. Uh, I love it, man. I love Bill. He's the best. We we I love watching games with him. We sit next to each other. Um, I pick his brain. We talk about the old school days, and he he's just a football guy through and through. I love that guy. We also we do a little pick him where we you know we pick the games every week and just see who's who's better and who's not. And he's very 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 good at it. Um, and so he and I have some serious trash talk back and forth. And unfortunately, I'm on the Lose again to that trash. Yeah, he's right a Yinzer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is that's how that's going to go, JJ. Listen, you Wisconsin people, nice. I understand your, you know, shit talking abilities, especially the Watt family mm -hmm. dynamic. Sure. Mm -hmm. Bill Cowher is crafting Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Yinzer. I mean, he is. You know what I mean? 
through and through. He's, yeah. a, he's the best, man. I love that guy. Uh, we were just about to randomly FaceTime him, but he has a flip phone. We can't. We'd have to send him a Zoom link oh, yeah. and have him yeah. get in there. He's he's the green bubble in our damn – we have a NFL Today, our CBS show. We got you know 10 people in there. Bill's the green bubble, screwing it all up. Never going to change either. No. No chance. Never. At all. Ty Schmidt has a question for you, JJ. Yeah, JJ, I saw on Sunday uh, you quote tweeted the football czar uh, Warren Sharp because he was basically like shitting on Zach Wilson and you pretty much said like, yeah, you know, this guy's playing great. He'd go on to win AFC Player of the Week. But, you know, it's terrible conditions, wet field. I think he he was trying to make a play. He slipped or whatever. Um but that's not what I want to ask you about. Um, <laughs> it's it's Warren Sharp is is also on the crusade of basically saying like, listen, these hip drop tackles in the NFL are disgusting. Now, as a defensive player, made up the term. Yeah, made up the term. I don't think anyone really knows what a hip drop tackle is. Uh, we see it happen. Basically, apparently, there's like ten to fifteen hip drop tackles every <laughs> single week. Phantom. But are we trending towards like? guys just not being able to tackle at all in the NFL because it's weird that like kind of anytime you hear like a player talk about it, it's like yeah that's bullshit that's not a real thing I, who no one knows what this guy's talking about but then like the competition committee is all is also like taking this into consideration they're like you know what he's right we do need to get rid of hip drop uh, hip drop tackle so like where is that trending is it in in like five years is it just going to be impossible to play defense in the NFL yeah I have no idea if you ask me to pull up videos and show you what a hip drop tackle was, or if you ask me to demonstrate a hip drop tackle, I wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, I don't, I don't understand. Like I, I they're, oh, geez, I'm flustered. Like I'm just angry about it. Like, what, JJ? I, how, how many hip more? How many more ways? You know what it is. How many more ways are we going to take away from defenders being able to do their jobs? And like, like with the the fines, we got running backs now that can't lower their shoulder to protect themselves. Like you can't tackle this way, you can't tackle that way. Like if we are moving to flag football, let's just say it. Like let's just come out and say it. Let's just do that. Let's just move it faster oh. along. Let's not play this game, the song and dance. Like okay, we're going to take this out for the safety. Whoa. We're going to take that out for the safety. But we're still going to play on Thursdays. We're going to play overseas on short sleep and bad. Rest. Like let, if, if we're going to do it, let's do it. And let's not like joke about it and lie about it and try and like make people think this or that. Like it does. I, it, I don't know, man. Like it's football. You're going to get the, you got to get the guy on the ground. If you don't, you're going to get yelled at. It's a violent game. It's always been a violent game. You know what you're getting into when you decide to play the game. Like, I don't know what you want. Like, yeah. Does it, is there a chance you're getting hurt? Yes. That, that's football. Like, is a guy going to come across the line and chop my knees out from under me and that's going to be perfectly legal? Yeah. Guess what? I could get hurt on that. So if we're going to take this hip drop out and try and make defenders jobs a little bit harder, maybe we stop having linemen wipe out my kneecaps. That'd be nice. I would appreciate that if I didn't have my kneecap wiped out all the time too. Uh, quarterbacks don't get to have their knees touched, but defensive linemen do. Like, there's just all sorts of stuff that I'm like... Pick your poison. Like, are we going to make it safer or are we not? I, whatever. Yeah, for who? <laughs> for who are we making it safe for and for who are we making it dangerous for? And I, the funny thing would be, I don't think anybody's, like, running into a tackle. I might be wrong. You got all-time leading tackler for Green Bay there, mm -hmm. uh, ring of honor member for tackling people for the Houston Texans, and guy who played safety. What? And nickel. What? I mean, corners aren't making many tackles, but you get it in there. Like, nobody's aiming to do the hip drop tackle. Like, when they're running, it's like, you know what? Okay. No one knew what it was. Hip drop it was never a, yeah. no. I've never heard of it. Yeah. What do you mean? It's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? It's not a thing. It never was a thing. It's never been taught. Like, I think I've heard people say, like, oh, man, they you can't be teaching this. I, what is there to teach? What, you're, it's someone trying to do whatever they can to get no, a guy down. It's not, remember, a, it's not a specific technique. Yeah, but remember, when you watch videos of how to tackle, there's always that dummy there. Yep. Mm -hmm. You get your head out of the way. Yep. You wrap They're your arms. straight on at you. And, and then you run your feet. feet. Yep. Exactly. Okay? So there's no reason ever. I've seen that video. That is how the dummies tackled. Perfect. So there's no reason that you would ever have to potentially manipulate your body weight which is what you're trying to do to get leverage to get the person on the ground, which is what you were tasked with doing in the sport. You know, it's like, it's just the way the conversation has just become like, oh, that's a hip drop tackler. As if somebody's just lining up like a suplex or something. It's not how it works at 20 miles an hour while people are flying around on the, it's wild. It's just a crazy conversation. <laughs> Is, is people trying to make rules that have never done it. Like, like well, you've never done it before. You have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Like, 
Oh, man. And then they bring in like uh, I, I'm gonna okay, I'm say some things. Or get me bring, in in what? bring in what? <laughs> yeah, bring in what? Bring in some no because because like there's some. Then they point to former players and they're like, well, this guy's on the committee, so he said. And I'm like, oh, well, all right, like, <laughs> game's game's different, man. The game's different now. So JJ has some question marks about the people that are making some decisions Love potentially. It. And who's on the committee? Who, yeah, who are we? Who's the exact person? We're- I don't even know who decides those things. I have no idea. So I'm not even talking about one person or not. But I know they're gonna they're gonna point to somebody and say, well, we asked this guy, and okay, so that guy. <laughs> uh, well, whatever. I mean, it was the competition. Community. Same with the same with the fines. We're like, well, well, it's run by former. Okay, well, so that guy knows everything. Then, all right, I guess we'll just listen to him. <laughs> what about uh, JJ yeah, Wall? Pretty good game football checks player. Away from yeah. guys. Anybody, hey, by the way, saw the cell. Hey, kind of a victory lap. You should be a little bit. You should be taking one a little bit. You should. Jalen Warren. Yeah, hey. Jalen Warren got hey. that game check back. Yeah. Uh, and what? then, and then, uh, what's his name? Brees Hall. The same day, just gets smoked for a full game check for a perfectly routine running back play. So win one, lose one. Yeah, you're sticking your finger in the holes in the boat, and then yep. one's popping up on another right. side. So we got to continue bringing tension to this, though, because I think it's a good thing. When loud with criticism, also must be loud with credit. Ooh, very, very admirable and Eloquent. noble of you, mm. uh, JJ. Touche for the appeal process working properly on this. Ridiculous fine being completely rescinded. Players, always appeal your fine. Amen. Uh, even though they will try to tell you not to because your team will, they're not allowed to, but they, you know, they're humans. They could sure. potentially hold it against you. Upon appeal, Tom Pelissero reported the NFL has rescinded Jalen Warren's fine from this play per his agents, David Cantor. And it was like $48,000 or something for a young player in a game check. That's a lot of money, obviously. Yes. Anybody on earth understands that that is a lot of money. And it was a very normal play that they just kind of were picking through film but this boom bang this almost like an ai is finding when people's helmets like drop Mm -hmm. and not taking into consideration the moment or the situation at all and it's been happening a lot this year this tells me though that they understand that this may be getting out of control is that what you're seeing as well jj that's what i'm hoping that's what i'm hoping uh i also like i people that don't appeal their fines I, i i don't know what you're doing like you appeal no matter what if you're a hundred percent wrong appeal it like at least take a shot um i mean the ones we all know the uniform fines like if you're wearing pink shoes you're gonna get a fine that's just gonna happen every single time sure you should still appeal it maybe maybe you win but like those are the ones where people people tweet me and they'll be like hey talk about this this guy got fined just for wearing a different color shoes and i'm like well that's right i mean that is pretty clearly defined like you knew that was gonna happen like that's that's you said i'm gonna pay five grand to wear pink shoes for this game that's just what you told yourself Uh, yeah i agree there's there's levels to this you know it's Mm -hmm. like are things stupid that we don't agree with yes but also is there things that maybe the nfl abuses yes Mm -hmm. and this whole finding of random standard plays that has been happening only this year? Is this just this year? Feels like a debut, doesn't it? Uh, some bigger ones this year, but I, uh, it's always been going on. I had a clean hit with um, Thielen, big hit, and I think it's just kind of the refs, once they see a big uh, big um, contact, it's yep. their, their intention is to throw the flag, penalize it. Sometimes you can get that fine later, sometimes not. But uh, like, a, like JJ said, always appeal it. I didn't get mine back, but always appeal it. I did get some back for a uh, tenant advisor. Oh, and nice. Then I, and then I got away with it. Got uh, away the Tinder virus is a good one. You yeah. take the fine for that. That yeah. looks cool. Oh, you yeah. take that fine. He looks cool. He could deal with it, too. Whenever you guys were all talking about not being able to deal with it, Debo was like, we can deal with it. Please. Yeah. And I, that's I just told him it was clear. I was like, look, I'm just really dark skinned. Mm-hmm. So it just came across. That was your? Oh, yeah, legit. And then Merton Hanks. <laughs> Merton Hanks. Came in the locker room. That was your defense? Came in the locker room. He said, look, I'm going to come to the locker room. You showed me the visor before the game. And Frog, then we used to do pregame. I would go out with a clear one, come in, swap it out. Showed him the clear one, and I was good for like the rest of my career. Hey, good. Hey, That's good, awesome. good for you. Yeah. <laughs> good move. Wow. You got to do what you got to do, man. <laughs> good for you. Wow. What a Mert, move. Mert, Mert, look. Holy Mert. hell. Hey, you know, Because you hey. need a full doctor's note. Don't you agree like a oh, full yeah. doctor's situation oh, to get yeah. a tinnitus? This box. is clear. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys racist? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 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 Like why is that? Why, why oh. is that? It, well, it's Why can't we have two advisors? Because it looks better. sweet. Everybody would wear them. They yeah. can't see your eyes yeah. if you get knocked out. Exactly. Yeah. That's that it? Why? Yeah, yeah. doctors got to be able to, you know, yeah. check your eyes out if they can't take your helmet off. You that see sounds like time. just making up an excuse to utilize yeah. the grand stuff. Yeah, because they that can take the, the face yeah. mask off like Mason Rudolph's helmet. They did that one time. Oh, yeah. That one time? Yeah. 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 All right. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, we that. have some breaking news. AQ Shipley has sent us a photo from war camp. Wow. 
Oh, yes. Yes. Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> is he in public? What's going on? Is there a parking lot back here? Why is that guy? <laughs> is that guy behind him an and one shorts? What is going on? <laughs> hey, bud, stay what? safe down there. Yeah, and close. everybody else around that man right now, stay safe down yeah. there. The He's in war camp right now. He's literally a war Look camp. Look at the baby. gloves. Bunch of Navy SEALs and him and Jack Osborne. Yep. And <laughs> poor AQ too. Now that now that Rom got five fifty, six hundred million, he's never gonna get a chance to get in that group with Jay Anderson. <laughs> Owens burned. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Five How was the combo? How how'd the combo go last week? Did you see it? Did you watch it? He was good. No, he is good. He's yeah, he is good. He does he doesn't Are you good. sad that he moved to a nicer neighborhood now? Yeah. Moving on. Can't up. be friends anymore. New zip code. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated to see what he purchases. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the purchases. That's for sure. Five fifty, right? Was the number we were trying to? I was trying to read his face while we. Uh, what you know? Wait, you, all, you you tried hard. You tried hard. I mean, I'm trying to read his good, face. Good effort. Were one of the numbers correct? Fifty, maybe. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen them all. I haven't seen them all. Oh, he's got. It's money. a lot of money. I mean, it's got no years. Man. Man. Yeah, no How many years the deal? I'd like to know that too. Yes. Yeah, JJ, you you don't have to tell us, but you do know all the information. Twenty, eight, lifetime, five. maybe. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, two for as long as you can swing club. Hmm? It's a team name. That's why AQ's doing all this. What is yeah? The what team is the team name? He's gonna be security. Bingo. I know. I, I mean, I can't say. I can't say. Are you a part of the team naming uh, group? Mm -hmm. Uh I've I've had okay. I've had input. Is there okay? How many people are in that group? AQ mm -hmm. AQ's at war camp right now. Yeah, yeah. Might come yeah. back with some ideas. You know what I mean? Or also, can we just should we Facetime Rom right now and then we can also be a part of the yeah do a little powwow. We can be a part of the entire <laughs> think to he, he said I last time he, he was on he, that he wanted to be on with he JJ. Did he that. did say that. Yeah, he did. He said I like JJ. He did. He, he did. Yes. He, he asked me if I wanted to come on, but I, I thought that was his day. I felt like it was proper to be. He, he deserved. It's his day to celebrate. So he was on Fox News, I think, Thursday night. Yep. yep. Then he was on with us the next yep. day. That's mm -hmm. the same thing that happened with uh, who was on Trump. AJ's two favorite shows. Is it Kornacki? <laughs> Uh, it is, I believe. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yes. Um, yeah. no. uh, well. more of an internet. We, 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 uh, there's a lot of other outlets now. Ask Tone. Or what are you? What kind of sage uh, are you burning over there? We got a lot cigar. of sage going on That's in the show. Cigar, cigar sage. Yeah. Oh, right. hey, who was on? Was it? Who was on MSNBC? Are those books real? Or I, I, I gotta know this. Uh, I need every one of them, man. Every one. Okay, 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 don't be a don't, fucking hey, mark. Hey, Come hey, on, on, brother. Come I, on. I, I don't know. I'm really let it fly today. I'm, I mean, I'm probably going to check my Twitter after That's this, and somebody question. from the NFL is going to be very it, angry at me. So I'm trying to just turn it back into fun. I'm going to get, doctor? I'm going to get text. Uh, well, Doctor Drew was it? Doctor Drew? No, no, it was more recent than that. It was very okay. recent. Doctor Drew, yeah, he was. Doctor Drew was on the program during COVID. That awesome. ended up being quite a controversy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank that you, was awesome. thank you for reading yeah, my so PhDs. Good. People don't believe I'm a real doctor. That That's how I intro Doctor Drew, by the way, because Doctor Drew was just getting killed, killed, killed on the internet for everything he said. You know, like all oh, the sex doctors telling us what we need to do during COVID. All right, so when he came on our show. I did a little research on all the PhDs he has. Yeah. And I listed them off before we introed them. And he was like, thank you so much <laughs> for, for letting people know that I'm an actual doctor. <laughs> Turns out my time on MTV might have <laughs> kind of discredited me. Tainted it a little bit. He was he was very nice. He was yeah, awesome. He was. And he was right. Somebody said they were on CNBC and then on our show with it. Maybe Greg Sankey. Ooh, Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, what it was. was. Yeah. yeah, he was on. It was, yeah. he, he was on CNBC, I think, and then he was on our show within 24 hours yeah. or whatever. And he was like, "Wow, that's quite range or whatever." John Rom <laughs> had a similar yeah. Yeah. situation, you know, because those questions are coming from much different angles. You know, when you're trying to save the yeah. world and refusing to ever give up on that mm -hmm. and listen to anything anybody on the other side has to say, that's going to be a different angle, I think, for a conversation than us dumbasses just trying to figure out how much money it is so we can find out what athletes are getting paid in golf right now. Yeah, while, you know, we're, on, while we're on that. Can we book the repeat performance? Uh, was Kornacki, do we have Kornacki the day after the um, presidential election? Can we get him booked again for that next day? Or So Kornacki has now infiltrated football. <laughs> he was back on Sunday. Yes, this is what he was. He was back doing the last couple on Sundays. Sunday. Yeah. Playoff time. He's a big playoff. We are. What's that? Are those real? Yeah. Yeah. So those are massive. <laughs> 
They're big books. Oh, they're it. so yeah. big. Big, book, big brains. You go to a big library, you get Jeez. big books yeah. for big brains. You need big <laughs> checks for those big books. What's your favorite one? This, one right here. Uh, this one's the one. This one right here. The don't pull it out because you don't want to ruin the. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, no. It looks too nice. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. First edition. People is Saban is Saban leaving? You guys got any insight? Sorry, what? What? Excuse me. What? Where? I don't know. I was reading on the internet. Saban, there was there was a very very Whoa. deep Alabama insider. I was just reading the internet. Don't, I know. I don't believe Tommy everything Turin. I hear. That's why I'm asking. Where's he going? Is it Paul Assassin? I don't know. I was asking you guys. You guys are the best friend. Paul Assassin. They've been trying to Texas. spin that ever since he came on the show. Yeah, our show has certainly heightened the chatter about, like, you think Old Saban would be doing a show every single week like McAfee show? Well, he has been doing a radio show pretty much yeah. every week for, like, the last 10 years. So, yeah, yeah I think you, you see him smiling and laughing on that show, though. He's not as intense as he once was. He's definitely mm – -hmm. and, of course, he's near the – I mean – He's on a back nine, for yeah. sure. Yeah. We all understand that with his entire career. What did you read, though? Legit, this is brand new news to me. I did not. I don't, I don't know. I was just, it was just on Twitter. It said, uh, it was like, I mean, yeah, X, whatever. Uh, it was on like the deep message boards, and they were like, this guy's been right about a bunch of stuff in the past, which I'm assuming means like private jet tracking. Um, and Ooh. so it said like, Saban's on his way out for like a $30 million ESPN contract. So I figured. Who better to ask than the people on ESPN with $30 million contracts of their own that also happen to talk to Saban well, every week. So well, I'm doing the people's work on X. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I appreciate good journalism, you know, sure. and uh, trying to guess a deal's worth, you know. Absolutely. And that whole thing. Like, Welcome to the club. There's been a lot of people doing that, speaking matter of fact, as opposed to asking questions. <laughs> That's real, though? Yeah. I don't know. That's a real. Thing. I have no idea. I mean, I also saw him. He had a triple styrofoam cup in his Ferrari, so yeah. I don't know. It was pretty badass. And, yeah, I don't know what in, he's that, and in the and in the yeah. side pocket. Yeah. In the side, yeah. yeah, about fifteen bags of red man. Yeah. Whoa. Excuse yeah. me. America's best. Thank you. Yeah. Jesus. That's not that's what, that's not what it's called. That's, that's not what it's called. That was what called. it was named. That's not what it's called. If you're a Chaw guy, you'll never say America's best. It's Red Man, period. Sorry. You know, it just is what it is. That's, that's twice today. Yes. No, it that's is. twice that's today. To talk. Yeah, yeah, you with the F-bombs all over ESPN. Breaking news, highly respected sources have confirmed to MPG message board geniuses. Okay, sweet. <laughs> that Nick Saban will announce his retirement. That's my source, guys. <laughs> MBG, message board geniuses. Hey, it's congrats legit. to MBG. This is UGA Sports. It's a Georgia website. Don't too. get into the plane tracking <laughs> business. Look what, what happened to John Doing Morose. Mine. Did you see Georgia fans are trying to cancel all flights from Georgia to Nebraska, though? So Because that, uh, Ray Oli? Yeah. That was hilarious. Hey, that was a good question from AQ. It's mm -hmm. Matt Rule. Yeah. Hey, did you listen to that yesterday at all, JJ? Did you get to see any of it? Matt Rule was legit on our show. He was good. I thought he was really good. He's really good. He was really good. He is good. He seems to be good. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't get to see all of that, but I have seen his pregame speeches. They are phenomenal. Those were asked about, and he said those are those aren't prepared. Those aren't. It's like in the moment how you feel, which is nuts because some of them really like. Obviously, that one that got popped up was three minutes. Every single one of them gets you jacked up. That guy loves coaching ball, dude. Fucking loves not him. not thought about beforehand at all. No, I think he said it's not like scripted. Like basically, he was has to think of concepts for sure. Mm -hmm. Like throughout yeah. the day, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd assume you would have to think of concepts. You come across something, you see it, you're like, "That's a good little angle. That's a good angle right yeah. there. I could potentially use." Yeah, like the one we showed was for the breast cancer awareness. Yeah, oh, that game. one. Yeah, I mean, awesome. And he if you if yeah. you don't go out there and play play your ass off after that, you you suck. He said that that was to honor, you know, his mom, I think, his wife's mom and everybody else. Like, he uh, really from the heart there. I think he's building something special out there in Nebraska. He sold my ass yesterday. Yeah, yeah. scary. I uh, like to, man. Nebraska, when Nebraska's good, it's cool. Like, it's, it, you know, you kind of want those those programs that to be great. It's, I mean, obviously, they're in the Big Ten, so I don't want to be that good. I mean, I think we beat them every single time so far. But oh, why I do you want Ty? Nebraska. Amen, brother. That's how you and that's how Ty was operating yesterday, too. <laughs> I was like, Ty, I think Nebraska, that was a cool thing. And Ty goes, cool, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I used to love. I mean, I, I watched their tunnel walks from back in the day. Like, uh, like the, Nebraska is a cool program, man. It is just a cool old school program. I just don't. I don't know in today's day and age without obviously paying just a, an exorbitant amount of money. I don't know how you get kids to Nebraska when their options are, you know, some of these other 
That's just that's He's just right. honest fact. You, that's you that's don't that's know it. about Nebraska. Well, how come Wisconsin keeps bringing in transfer quarterbacks? It stinks. Oh, jeez. Oh, I mean, we got two Great Lakes. Uh, we have a beautiful. <laughs> we have a beautiful terrace with delicious beer. We have a phenomenal campus. And Fickle, we have a, figure it out. Fickle, Fickle's yeah, a dog. We have a bunch of great stuff. Just give it some time. I mean, I'm. I, I've said it. I've said it already before. I'm not overly excited to be playing the Heisman Trophy winner in the bowl game, number 13 team in the country on January 1st. Looking forward to the opportunity. Hoping we really rise to the occasion and step up to it. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, Certainly, certainly a tall task there. Uh, I don't know how we got matched up with number 13. I will say that. We are not ranked. We don't have a ranking, and we got number 13. That was one of the most Wisconsin-sounding things I've heard. Looking forward to the opportunity. Yeah. That was like uh, so classic Midwestern, like yeah. everything's good. Yeah. Woo. I mean, everything's good. Guy's got about 65 <laughs> touchdowns on the year. And, uh, so it's a Big Ten sc- uh, show. A lot of Big oh, yeah. Ten on this particular mm-hmm. program. Hell yeah, brother! A lot, juice. A lot of Big Ten. It looks very different. I, I owe a question. Uh, yep. I know the rule. Maybe we've talked about it before. I know that the stipulation with the contract before the season. Don't believe it was met. What are they doing at offensive coordinator now? Yeah, oh, yeah. That shit canned him weeks ago. He's done at the end of the season. Listen to this, Jay. For sure, that's over. Yeah, yeah. the yep. AD made the decision. Listen to this, though. After it came out, the AD came out right. Yeah, interim AD. I think she is the AD now. She came out and said that he will no longer be with the Iowa Hawkeyes after this season. Brian Ferentz, the offense coordinator who led the worst offense in football back-to-back-to-back years Mm -hmm. in college football, he protested the decision, wouldn't wear any Iowa Hawkeye logos on his stuff on the sideline, just all black shirts. He would He's... I'm getting fucked. This guy yep. led the worst. Merchant, I, I guarantee that he just plummeted merchandise sales. People said, if he's oh, not yeah. wearing it, I'm not wearing it. Yeah, definitely. Take Start, a stand. Good job. Take a stand. Good job. Really, I mean, way to step up to the man, you know? Uh, just that guy, though. Maybe put, like, just maybe getting put the ball upset the about that. Bingo. Like, just getting upset about that <laughs> with how it looks with his dad's the head coach yeah. and how bad it's been. Like, any other Big Ten school where that happens that respects its football team. You have one year like that. You're go- let alone like multiple years. You got like- out punted. You got out punted. More punts, more punt yards than passing yards and rushing yards than all yards. Well, wow. Tory Taylor's yeah. a great guy, award winner. Well, I mean. that's the thing. I mean, it doesn't. They went to in those three <laughs> years. They went to fucking two Big Ten championships. So it's like I know he, it's he, crazy. Yeah, he, like what could they have done? Like what could they have the done? Adder- that, if their defense is shutting people out. Yeah, the coach if you're interview. a punter, is there any better place to go than Iowa? I mean, there is no better place to go than Iowa if you're if, a punter. If you're good, yeah, for sure. But yeah. could you imagine that he had a bad punter like Tory Taylor? Legitimately, right. Was a game changer for that Iowa Hawkeyes team. Absolutely. If he's a bad punter, oh, oh boy, it's a different game. Case a lot. Yeah, yeah. wins five games, five six games probably. Hey, Tory, hell of a hell of a career over yeah. in Iowa. Iowa Great also career. had the most uh, first team All Americans of any team in the country this year. Oh, no wow. big deal. Couldn't get a, first a lot down. of offensive linemen. A lot of offensive linemen. None. They couldn't get a first down. You think your offensive line is going to win? No. No yeah. one on offense. How? Who, who was it? Punter, corner, linebacker. Boom. Ooh. And a corner. Can't wait. Yeah, to Cooper Gene. Actually, gonna... they're saying Texans might draft him in the first round next year. A lot of mocks have him going to Houston. Wow. You know who they're, they're saying is NFL compass? Jason Seahorn. Yep. You kidding me? <laughs> oh, shocking. Uh, that'd be crazy. Really? That's all. That would be crazy that's if he could perform at that level. That's they... what they're saying his comp. Are. Yeah, that's right. Jason Seahorn. Mm-hmm. You heard this, JJ? Do they pipe in music to Iowa Stadium? Absolutely not, brother. You've played there. You know how fucking loud it is at, at Kinnick. Come yeah, on. that's why I'm asking. It's so loud. It's That place is loud as hell. No, it's because people are tailgating at fucking 3 in the morning and everyone's blacked out by the time nice. kickoffs. And they're hopping on that train. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye Express. Hey, I love Iowa Hawkeye football. I'm very happy that they're going to have a new offense coordinator going forward. Saying Scott Frost, maybe that's who they're Ooh. targeting. That worked out in Nebraska. The uh, head coach, though, he offensive coordinator at Oregon, he was and it used no yeah yeah Nebraska yeah. guy isn't that like, isn't Iowa Nebraska like a pretty big rivalry? I mean, Nebraska going to welcome ne- in one of the uh, no nah, Nebraska wants to act like it's a pretty big rivalry, but like, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Matt Rule was on the show yesterday. Yeah, so he was great. He was. I, I'm not holding any ill will towards Matt Rule. I'm just saying, like, uh, they hard, play for they, something? Hard what did, been in play the for an axe or something? No, it's the fucking Heroes Trophy, AJ, okay? Every Black Friday, day after Thanksgiving, fucking every, everyone watches. Everyone in the country. Oh, um, mm-hmm. 
Coach Rule's got his eye on that hero. Yes, he, does. Oh, yeah. he does. Boy, they when does Mel Kuyper season start? I can't wait oh, for that again. I miss. Close. Yeah, we're coming up. That's one of my favorite things about this show. I love I, Mel Kuyper. I know. That's I actually thought of that like three days ago. I was like, oh shit, I can't get a haircut until April now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that scene last year, I can't remember exactly what it was. That is one of the funniest things I have ever seen on the internet in my life. When you lost your shit, uh, when, when you when you were you lost. What was it, dude? Yeah. Oh, what was the, it? The microphone mic did not work. work. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the Glazer Mel in Tampa. I, I, it's time. hard to oh, imagine yeah. that being passed. Not to mention the last one, two years ago, where it was the four screen <laughs> oh, of Sirianni. Glazer, Mel. MCD, well, there. this year, this year there is uh, quite a few more opportunities yeah, yeah, sure. in that entire. You know what I mean? With our new relationships, there is a lot more opportunity for that entire thing. There's a chance. You know, we had two lose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh huh. Think about it. Think about it. That would be awesome. Just what? Because his mind always. Oh yeah. And then you just right in return. Oh yeah, I, that thing might turn into a action. Mm-hmm. You guys might actually combust into a fire. Yeah, on explode. The screen. Oh, I'd cut him off so many times, <laughs> so many times. Oh, my God. Just <laughs> won't even let him get a word in. <laughs> he's, so, yeah. he's gonna be so pissed. Arm swing. He will hate yeah, you. Like bum fight. Yeah, be yeah. like the bum fight guy. Yeah, yeah. Or Dr. Yep. Phil. Yeah. We respect. You think that. Ryan Day will call in? You think he'll call in? How do you feel? Uh, about Kyle McCord transferring out of Ohio State after going almost 11, or did he go 11 now? 11 11-1. Yeah. Got beat by Michigan. Yeah, but that was 12th game, right? Yeah. 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 So he won 11 and 0. Yep. And then, you know, yeah. it's, driving, driving mm-hmm. in Michigan, you know? And then see you That's later. a tough college football. College football in general right now is really tough, man. I mean, I, I can't speak too much without being a hypocrite because I was a transfer myself. Um, but like the world today of, the expectation level, the lack of opportunity to give kids time to develop, the um, the fact that like you just have to be good right away, otherwise we're moving on and we're getting the next guy. Like that's a it's a tough environment to be in as a kid, and I feel bad for some of the kids who are just constantly searching for the opportunity to prove themselves and play without actually being developed, coached, built up in the strength room. Like it's just a different world. It really is a different world, and it is tough. Yeah, we, it is a whole new generation. Guys are getting paid. I think yeah. the NCAA, something big just happened. Something big just happened. I was reading it, and this involves a West Virginia uh, basketball player. Mm. Raekwon Battle, I believe is the name. Now, I've heard of the story and the situation going on with him and the NCAA, but I have no idea the ins and outs of it. I was going to try to learn more about it as it all kind of was being reported about uh, going forward. So he transferred, I think, it was the same thing as like Tez Walker situation. Okay. Where he ended up transferring, and the NCAA will not allow him to play. And I think it was for mental health reasons was why one of the transfers took place and what the NCAA says versus what they're actually doing. I think they were... You know, screwing over another student athlete is basically the way I was reading it. It was a West Virginia basketball player, and I guess this kid is awesome kid. Like, everybody that has basically spoken up about him is like, hey, this is a good kid. Like, we need to take care of This is what we're here for, is to take care of this and also let him play, let him live out his dreams. He's a great basketball player. Let's do this all. The NCAA, I guess some judge has ruled that there's like a 14-day juncture where they are not allowed to... Uh, rule on their transfer rules or something like that. It literally just got sent, I just sent it. into the into the group text here. And I know this has been kind of cooking a little bit, but it's from Mitt Winter at Winter Sports Law. He tweets that TRO has been granted. NCAA total restraining order has been granted. The NCAA can enforce its transfer waiver rules. It is in fact for 14 days, and that's a huge ruling. Okay, so that is for this West Virginia basketball player. So for 14 days, they can't utilize the punishment that they've been handing down to this. Say, I don't understand. I don't understand any of it. But it's- we got we got kids playing on their like seventh and eighth years. Like, I, like what? But do our rules like what? What happened to those rules? I thought you got to play for four years, no matter how. Like, what? What are we doing here? Yeah, remember your clock starts as soon as you enroll in college and you have five years to complete four years of sport eligibility with a red shirt. And then there was a gray shirt. Then there was a blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Then there was a COVID year. So now there's guys that are playing football and stuff for like the time you could become a doctor in college because of it all. But 
I guess the rule stands. And there's kids coming in behind that could be playing that are not because we got the quarterback on his eighth year. And, like, okay, like, I, you get four years, man. Like, however, however you got to do it, whether it takes five because of your red shirt or not, like, you get five years to get four years of playing in. I, like, that's, that's it. And then you move on, and you, if you weren't good enough to go pro, then you go figure something else out. Like, I did not I know, know you had a feeling. Okay, I did not know this was a thing. This is a thing, it sounds like. You've thought about this. You do not like I, this. I, 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 I haven't thought about it enough to speak overly knowledgeably about it, so I'm sure somebody's going to come in and be like, well, because of the COVID year and because of this <laughs> stipulation and that stipulation, then then that person got to play this many years, and so that's why it's fair to him. Well, I'm also thinking of the freshman that came in and thought that he was going to get an opportunity to play, mm -hmm. but this kid was just granted his fourth exemption, and now he's playing his eighth year, and th that kid ha can't, has to transfer, but he can't transfer because of this rule, and the NCAA won't grant that, like... I don't know. Like, yeah, it does kind of seem like the wild, wild west at times where you can do anything you want. You can get paid. You can play wherever you want. You can transfer. And then there's other times where apparently you can't. So I don't know. This kid from West Virginia, let him play. Let Everybody the else play. Play. Can't this play. play. Let him play. Now. This is just goes back to the NCAA. Right. That's the NFL I've gone after. That's the NCAA I've gone after. We already talked about Liv. We talked about AJ's affiliations. I mean, I don't know what else we want to talk about in today's show. We're... Uh, we've, we're, I'm, I'm, anyone else we should piss off along the way? I got time. Piss off? No, you're taking a stand. That's right. You're, mm -hmm. you're empowering people. You're changing things. Yeah. This isn't a bad thing. This is a good thing. Now, the bad thing was you said fuck on ESPN. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was ridiculous. I did not. I stopped. No, no. He, and Aaron already he did he it did. for me. He like, well, Who cares? Whoa. The 13-day streak was over. You guys were crushing it. You guys were crushing it. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I got ah, yes. this. I think I said yesterday. That's not a good stat. That's not a good stat for me. Picture. I, I should not be on that list. Piss, JJ. That is That's not – I mean, I'm on once a week. You guys are on every day. <laughs> yeah. This I think is not good. The percentage of airtime versus fuck words, yeah. very high for JJ Watt. Yeah, oh, leader yeah. in the clubhouse by a lot. Yeah. Getting to the quarterback. Proud of it. If you're going to do something, do it 100%, you know? No. <laughs> Not in this Rents place. do every day. Rents, <laughs> rents, rents do, do every day. That's guys. right. That's yeah. right. He's right. You're right. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. We appreciate it. the NCAA. Though sounds like uh, because of a judge, they're not allowed to do their bullshit. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's have a good two weeks. <laughs> like play. Like have fun two JJ weeks. Go Mountaineers. Go Mountaineers. Let's go Mountaineers. I hope he comes out and has a yeah. triple double first night. Boom. Let's go. Been pent up. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say JJ clearly uh, because he transferred feels very powerful about this. Mm -hmm but doesn't love it, and he was also, however, the exact person who should transfer smaller school, go to a bigger school, get bigger opportunity, mm -hmm. more eyes on you. But I assume at some point he brought this up, and everybody on Twitter was like, shut up, you transferred, you can't talk oh, about yeah. this. Yeah. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh, and yeah. that's why he gets so fired Well, up that's about. why he prepped it with, this is going to sound hypocritical, yep. because I did Bingo. transfer. He said, I get it. But also, you probably felt like when you did it, it was the right time, went about the right way, faced some adversity, developed a little bit, and went back to a place your dreams as opposed to just uh i'm out of here because there's potentially more money that you don't even know if it's real or not and then once you sign to the second school you're stuck there until you graduate because the ncaa's rules are stupid so it's a whole fucked up uh, situation i would i would have moved for a free subway sub if somebody offered me that i would have gone to whatever school could have gave me a, a free five dollars foot long so you know what the issue is I, uh, with subway hmm. so Heard? well well i saw what happened with one particular gentleman yep and the amount of weight he lost. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sweet onion chicken teriyaki. Yep. That's, That's what the he only ate. thing. Mm -hmm. But I was like told through visually and through the messaging, mm -hmm. Subway healthy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Look right. at this guy. This guy ate sandwiches. I love sandwiches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This fucking guy ate sandwiches. He did a lot of other stuff. Yes, Ooh, he fucking did. ate sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And he lost a lot of, a lot of terrible stuff. Not tough. But during that process, he ate sandwiches. And look at his pants then. Look at his fucking pants now. Yeah. Mm hmm so I started getting these tuna sandwiches from Subway. I'm like, I'm a healthy guy. Yeah. I'm a super healthy guy. Very healthy. They're worse than like two Big Macs. <laughs> like they were fucking pumping those things with so much just to make it there. There's a couple healthy sandwiches in there, yeah. but not all of them. No. There's a lot of like things that are worse than McDonald's and pizza in there. Mm -hmm. sure, I didn't know that. Make sure you read the labels. Like if you go to Panera, do not get the juice lemonade. <laughs> yeah. Amen. What did I, I got to know about this? I, I've been seeing that. Oh, this oh, is boy. like, I feel like the algorithm got hacked because that is everywhere on my social media. Well, that's just lemonade. That's Two because it's, it's electric, by the way. I yeah. don't know about that from tone, but yes. I do know yeah. that Connor explained yeah. the situation True. to me the other day. And I don't think if there's 
I still have not looked into what the real situation is because of how good Connor explained it to me. Connor, what happened with this woman and her significant other at a Panera the other day? So essentially this lady was going to work in a Panera, and this is very slow speaking-wise in comparison to her, but she was working at a Panera, and she doesn't drink caffeine She didn't normally. work there. She, she was doing her job at a Panera. Excuse me. She was working in a Panera, not at a Panera, mm -hmm. in a Panera. And essentially what she did was she was drinking these uh, hyped-up lemonades, and there's free refills at a Panera, so you can get four to five refills. <laughs> a day so she was drinking four to five of these a day and then one time she was going through the drive through with her boyfriend and her fiance and her fiance wanted to try the drink and so he looked up the ingredients to the drink because he's a type 1 diabetic and when they looked it up there was 86 grams of sugar in one Jeez. of them cool. forget about the 86 grams of sugar the 86 grams of sugar is not the big deal the big deal here is there <laughs> were 260 milligrams of caffeine in every single drink and she was having four to five of them each day and then her diabetic boyfriend took a sip and died on the spot now, I don't know if that that's last. true at the end there, but yeah, basically this lady was grandstanding that she wasn't having caffeine. Yes. Like, I get this work done without caffeine. I'll have the lemonade just that's because it. I'll pay my respect. <laughs> and then, turns out, she was having, how many How many is in a standard coffee? In a, sta uh, a shot of espresso is, uh, I believe, 62 milligrams of caffeine, and there is 260 milligrams of caffeine in everything. I think the coffee was 90 Coff milligrams. Coffee's like 75 to 100, Man. somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Basically doing cocaine. Yeah. Doing people have died. People, people shoot the joke about her husband being diabetic dying. Not true. He is diabetic. Not true that he died. But there actually have been two people who yeah. have died. Jesus. From the caffeine? Shut up. From lemonade? Sugar. Actually, yeah. From all the shit in Saint it. Yeah. normal lemonade. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean. Free refills. This is for lemonade. For local For lemonade. what it's worth. For what it's worth. The uh, conversation about it has made me want to try it. I will say that. <laughs> Yeah. JJ. We'll try four or five of them and then not die and then say, here you go. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. All right. Let's get to a break. I mean, you're a physical specimen. Of, yes. like, yeah. I mean, it's not killing anybody. Those people had something else going on. Let's get real. Like, they didn't <laughs> well, take a sip of lemonade and pass out. Oh, you are talk about... Uh, <laughs> So we're talking yeah, about dead digs. people here. What are those called? I'm jumping into Diggs' territory there oh, yeah. if I'm talking about that. <laughs> yeah, what was it what was it called? Uh something conditions. Uh underlying. Yeah, underlying conditions. Pre-existing. Ten people, five hundred bucks. No, this is the worst one. This is a tough one. Uh, that's why I said it. Oh. oh. Good throw. Oh, good try. Good try. Good try. I'm figuring it out. Hold the phone. I was power cradling earlier. I forget what we were talking about, but <laughs> I had to do what I had to do. JJ, appreciate your time today, pal. I hope that hope that TV show went well. It did. It did. It was great. It's coming along very well. When is uh release date? Um I mean I, I, I uh can I tell you? No, there's music playing. That means we gotta get out. Okay, so you have a release date. That means yeah, yeah. huge. Oh, that's big. No, that no, we don't. We don't have. It's not sold. The trailer, the trailer, like the the sizzle to be sold is is prepared. You you guys are in it. You guys are in the sizzle. Because uh, right. we talked about it. Yep. Right down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> right down. The I'm sizzle, not not for public, not for public consumption. Don't matter. No, I'm joking. Why not public consumption? The sizzle should be public consumption. So then there's public pressure on people to buy uh -huh. it. Boom. Pretzel. Yeah, it's called what it takes. It's about it's about what it what takes. It takes to be great. All right. What? That's. But what? I want to tell you what. Serious, I like the sizzle show. and I like the steak. Yes. We want to see the steak real. Keep the sizzle real private. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Jay appreciate Jay. you guys. Good yeah, luck boy. to Burnley. Go yeah. get him, Jage. Yeah. 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 Go on, Jage. What are our travel. chances against uh, Everton this weekend, oh. Gumpsh? Uh, they're plus two twenty on the money line at home. What's normal? Underdog. Uh, Double chance you get them at about even money, which I, I like. You get a you get a draw, double chance win or draw for Everton. I'm yeah. just saying, like, no. what, what is the uh, what is a normal underdog, like pu plus two twenty? Is plus that plus two twenty is heavy? Everton's beaten Chelsea and another very good team on the bounce. Like Everton is rolling right uh -oh. now. Oh yeah, hmm. uh, good yeah, run. Don't hey, be he said, that on. didn't you hear him say his goalie, but he was stood on his head yeah. and had 10 saves? I've never seen a soccer game where there was 10 total shots on goal. For AJ, they, they, were, they, were, they were under siege at the end Belgium. of that game. Fuck. Really? Oh, okay. Brighton was like ripping <laughs> It's a fun game to watch then. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it was entertaining. It was an impressive effort by the goalie. <laughs> yeah, zero percent chance. Wasn't a KG match? We got the Euros and Copa America coming oh, up this thanks, summer, Gump. boys. Sweet. The Europe's. <laughs> Come on. Copa, Copa America is in the U.S. U.S. is in it this year with Argentina and Brazil.
We're playing Argentina. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh oh, no. yeah, that'll be no. great. We, Why? The we want to be in the Europe's. Tell them we want to play in the Europe's. We don't want to play in the Argentina one. We well, don't want to play against Messi. That's how we got uh, the NFL to do a game in Brazil. Was we got to be in the Copa? Oh, that was part of the negotiation. It's a good mm -hmm. trade. We got the Olympics. Qualify for the World Cup yet? Yeah, dude. We're hosting it. Yeah, you automatically. I know, qualify. but I'm saying, is that automatically qualify yes. if yeah. you host? Oh, yeah. so that's the old thing. Hey, guarantee we're in, which is hosting. Which has caused quite a controversy in the past yeah. for Especially some of the places. Qatar. Yeah, Qatar yeah. was not a good club. Yeah, yeah. Did they compete. You're gonna kill people no, and force us no, to watch your poopy they, team. They stunk. Let's get to a break. We'll be back way. on the other side. We got <laughs> everything DB presents: good D and. Mm -hmm. Bad. Ooh. Hell yeah. That should be an absolute blast. Also covering all the other stories that happened today while we've been live, since we've been live. And oh yeah, Draymond Green has been ejected for the third time this season. Uh, Whoa. What? what? Uh, Whoa. But yeah, it happened. For what? I didn't see that. He did a Draymond Green move uh, right out of the Draymond Green book. Sheesh. Hashtag guy. new media. He doesn't take no shit on a court. No. Mm. Be a friend, tell a friend something. Nice. Here it was. Oh, you want to you want to push me out? Huh? I'll box you. Ah, boom! <laughs> right in the mouth. He wasn't punching. He was it, just it, trying to get out of there. Yeah, trying to get out of it. Jurgens didn't do anything. He's just standing on the same court as him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Look how Draymond flops after he hits him too. It's all over him, Ty. It's so awesome. He is all over. Get him. off yeah. me! Oh my God, you're playing defense against. You can't him. push you from behind. You can't push me from behind. Yes, you can. Yeah, you're allowed. Uh, close. I think you're allowed to do that. that. Post, you he wasn't battle, even doing yeah. that. He wasn't. He barely. No, even he had like his <laughs> fingertips on him. Maybe. <laughs> what I do? What, what, uh, why'd you punch me in the face? You, you stand too close. What do you mean? It's basketball. In one of the replays, they, it's right in front of the Warriors bench, and the one guy who's right in front of Draymond just. Why'd you do that? Yeah, who's on the Warriors? <laughs> but you can see him like, what the hell are you doing? He's an adult now, right? Draymond. How old oh is yeah, he? super old. Yeah, thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah, at least. I love it. I love that he's just still doing it. Lunatic. Draymond Green still has his Draymond Green shit. Bingo. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. Gotta respect it. And he'll just have a job forever because? Just because? He's a mean cuss. Oh, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, he just signed his last deal probably. But Hell of a run, Draymond. Maybe maybe just like we should stop being surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. Things you can go on his podcast. He's going to talk about it. Yep. It's like, hey, he's got a good little racket going. Yeah, yeah smart, truly. Pretty smart little maneuver. You know, smart. They led 30 minutes this morning. Twice. 30 minutes. They were talking about it right after our show, too, on SportsCenter. Oh, so we didn't get the memo. They had Wendy on it. We were potentially offered Wendy. We yep. said, not today. <laughs> we don't have time. On a Wednesday? When real basketball news happens. We bring in Wendy. Yeah. The man. Yeah, yeah. But us as a program, we don't see what the... He smacked the guy in the mouth. He got ejected. That's bad. That's Draymond Green yeah. baseball. Not to, yeah. Here we are. They move on. Will they miss him? <laughs> Wasn't even the most egregious. Probably not. Ejection last night. Yeah, Joker getting ejected on oh. Serbian Heritage Night Can't in Chicago. Cannot have that. In the second quarter. That needs to be. That needs to lead the thing. Yeah. They're, they're lucky his brothers weren't in the stands. Exactly. These refs need to just figure it out. We get it. You got a little bit of power, but a guy's allowed to call you a motherfucker <laughs> if yeah. he wants to, which is what Mike Malone pretty much told us yeah. Joker yeah. said that a ref, especially on Serbian Heritage Day <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. oh, in they, Chicago. They probably fucked up so many tickets. No. Oh. It's Joker. You don't oh, ever God. kick Joker out. Why would you kick him out ever? Best player in the league. Yes. The champs. You heard him after the game? Mm-mm. It's like... I wish I would have pulled this off. We should have tried this in Serbia. Yeah. Been interested to see how that would have went. That's what he said? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just for talking. He didn't make a – he didn't bump him. He didn't push him. Just for talking. Mike Malone afterwards. Can, we'll talk about this on the other side. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take – Fight! Bye. 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 We have some massive news. A lot of blessings pounding out that I ain't even wish for. No, let the wolf for y'all. I'm locking the fridge door and the crib cutting hits. I read through the catalog, came to conclusion. No one's touching this. Just finished the main one. I've been on the main one. I said I'm trying to kill them off. Whatever the thing I seen the boats. I'm at home. I'm selfish with the goals. I could give a fuck who try and get along. 6'3, you can't look me in the eyes. Welcome the incomparable Pat McAfee. But as soon as we get backstage, I see Serena Williams like six feet from me. 
I'm like, oh my God. Hello, hello, hello. You look fantastic. Massive room. Did not expect to see this many incredibly important humans to the media world. And then all of a sudden, guess who pops by? Ryan Seacrest. Bro, Ryan Seacrest, how are you? Yeah, Congratulations. You are legend, bro. And holy shit, Ryan Seacrest is here. Thank Honestly, you. your work, I think, is something that people Thank you. like we like really Thank inspired you. Guys. Why am I here? Great question. Sweet cowboy hat. How you doing, dude? Makes me look thinner. The Kardashians? Bullshit. Come out in an elevator? Hey, good luck out there. Thank you. My show, my guys and I, will be joining the ESPN universe. And we are so incredibly pumped, honored, and thankful to be doing that. And a lot of people are wondering, you know, why would you ever want to do that when you run a couple hundred million dollar valued company with full independence and the ability to kind of do whatever I want, whenever I want? with my crew that is one of the hardest working group of men on this earth. And it's because I had the incredible opportunity over the last two months to chit chat with the leadership at ESPN. I go up to a lounge, Alex Honnold, you know, the guy that was oh, climbing? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Holy fuck, that's that guy who just hangs off the side of cliffs mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> and I think the future of sports media is certainly something that we're kind of creeping in on, digital has become an influence. It has the structure. It has the ability to reach millions and millions of people. Dan Orlovsky, after his riveting performance uh, <laughs> on the stage, which it was. Gets a Shirley Temple. He comes, no, he got wine. Okay. okay. The future obviously says that linear television is going to be dead. ESPN, the channel won't be able to exist. But when is that? Is that a year from now? 10 years from now? 20 years from now? Can we get a 25, maybe 30? 35, 40. By that time, I'm 65, 70 years old, and I've completely missed out on the powerhouse that is ESPN Linear. So when I was talking to Jimmy and Bert Magnus and the Bob father, Bob Iger, somehow got a chance to be in his office for an hour and a half in Burbank. That was bananas. He's now talking, I think, to the leader of France. Dumbest life of all time continues. But they all very much understood that we need to embrace both what tomorrow is and what today is. And I have the exact same vision. Then Joe Buck, Troy Aikman come walking in. I'm very thankful to announce that we'll be on ESPN, ESPN Plus, the ESPN app. And for the first time, I do believe in all of sports media, we'll be live on ESPN's YouTube at the exact same time. Jimmy, Burke, Bob understood that 98% of male Gen Zers use YouTube on a daily basis. So being live there and on ESPN, we should be able to reach the entire world, hopefully, if I don't fuck it up, which I might have just did by saying the F word in this room right here. You uh, met the real DeMar Hamlin, okay. not Michael B. Jordan. Are you sure? Not the actor, uh, not the clone. How's he up know, front? He is in Disney movies. His clones look exactly the same as real people. That's yeah. the actual clone type. It is an incredibly special time for me. This is my first time out of my house in two weeks. My wife and I actually, boom first baby. She just started farting two days ago. Real deal. That was a game changer. But my wife, my baby, my guys, and everybody that I know are honored to be a part of the ESPN family, and we hope that we'll be able to work with all of you. Cheers, and have an incredible day. Good, man. How you doing? You good? Oh, keep running the world, though. Hey, no, that's you, dude. That's you. That's you. Trip to New York, I think, was a success. The upfront was hilarious. I had no idea that room was going to be that big. This is awesome, isn't it? That was the most suits I've ever seen in my entire life. We're pumped to join the family, and I am very grateful that they're going to let us do it our way. And I said, fuck it at Disney upfront. So. This would be a pretty legendary thing later in life. You can probably look at it and say, oh, that was a pretty good decision. All right, the next chapter begins. Ain't that right, Mickey? Hell yeah. The old time. Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pay! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice, could change their life. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Wednesday, December 13th, 
2023, hour three of the program starts now. Football! It's happening tomorrow night as week 15 of the NFL season kicks off on Prime as the Los Angeles Chargers take on the Vegas. Las Vegas Raiders in a divisional bot that we will want to watch mm -hmm. with Kirk Herbstreet and Amazon's only <laughs> Al Michaels. Yeah. That was big news yesterday when it hit the internet. That's A.J. Hawk. The talk to table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One after the hammer. Don. Don. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here. And a man who will be hosting everything DB's good D, bad D, just in a matter of moments. Nine year NFL vet Darius J. Butler. Good boy, good boy. Can you see this about Al Michaels, A.J., yesterday? Yeah, I did. So he got pulled off a game that he thought he might be doing for NBC? Yeah, so NBC has multiple games during whenever Super Wild Card and the playoffs come. And it was a nice little treat, you know, to see him back on NBC coverages mm -hmm. last year once he became the Amazon Thursday Night Football announcer and Mike Tirico took his job on Sunday Night Football. Now, I guess a move has been made by NBC to get him off of that game and he will no longer be working with NBC for the first time in oh, forever, yeah, seemingly. Yeah, right. I did not read the entire article. Todd? I believe you did. What did it say, and where are we at in that entire situation? Yeah, so he he has been. Apparently, they've been moving to kind of try to do this for a while, and someone uh, like m mentioned this to him, and he basically said like, "Well, that's part of my contract. So if this is the case, like you're privy to something, and I'm not privy to it right now. So you've heard more than I have." But the article made it seem like NBC has kind of been maneuvering to get him off this game for quite some time now. Okay, interesting, fascinating. I don't think Al Michaels knew that. Will he have a little bit more juice tomorrow? Ooh. Potentially. Uh, what do you think, Al Michaels? Or will he just be the consummate professional that he is mm -hmm. and not even respond to any of it? I think he got asked about it, right, by somebody at yeah. some point? Yeah, right. And that's when he yeah. said, like, yeah, I'm not aware of this. Like, So if you are, you know something I don't know. And I think a lot of people said it was because – that him and Tony Dungy weren't very, you know, like ecstatic or over the top because they had the Jacksonville Chargers game last year, you know, crazy comeback and everything. And people were like, it just, it just didn't, you know, it didn't feel like they were into it. So I think, oh no. It, but again, I don't hey, know. If, I so do who's not doing it then? Envy. Who's taking a spot? Yeah. I Good question. To your point, I do not envy the position that NBC yep. is in to mm. figure that out because whenever you replace Al Michaels with Mike Tirico, it's like, all right, you know. Mike Tirico's already known. Yeah. When Mike Tirico's on, it's a big name. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he like it feels Good big. Dad. We talk about that. Like yeah. when some people call sports, it just feels big. Yep. Like Chris Fowler, whenever he's on a game, all right, he's calling something big. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's tennis, it's something big. Whenever it's football, it's something big. It just feels that way with his voice. And that has only built up over a matter of time. That's not an easy mm -hmm. thing for young broadcasters to just be able to create. I think Adam Amin is currently creating his own yeah. little yeah. lane. I think Noah, what's his name? Eagle. Noah Eagle is also kind of yeah. up and coming yeah. doing his thing it's like there's not a lot of those spots up there at the top in that particular profession so there's a lot of people trying to get there it's like what a what a tough line of work i was about to say bad line of work but it's obviously you get to call sports so yeah. it's a great line of work mm -hmm. awesome. but it's not easy to get that that's a big role that's about to be opened up for somebody unless Tariko just does both of them i'm not even sure if that's possible yeah, I, I think they did say like that's kind of what they're looking at is that Noah Eagle potentially will be on the call with whoever he does. I don't know who he does games mm. with weekly for NBC, but they, I think that's who they're kind of eyeing for that, that secondary game. College, right? Yeah, he, mm -hmm. uh, and he also is like he's part of like the uh, the uh, Brooklyn Nets broadcast too, and obviously his dad is you know a legend. So, so we're not just gonna say that nepotism once again strikes again. No. Okay. Because Joe Buck, Jack Collinsworth, now Noah Eagle, you know, yep. Sims family obviously having either right. do it. like that. It happens a lot. Todd Blackledge is who's Noah Eagles with. Okay, so it feels like that type of thing happens a lot, you know. Uh, but we should not judge the person for that. Nope. No. Not their fault that they potentially got to meet mm. the right people at all these places. That is not their fault. Now, if they suck, we should. Yes. Right. That's when. That's when. You know what I mean, AJ? That's when we should let it be known. So we're pulling for no. Good luck out there, pal. Good luck, no. Good luck out there, pal. Not easy game. Excited to hear Al Michaels' response from it. I have an update um, on a news story from earlier today. Okay. I have some good news. Great news, actually. No way. Man, call us the great news show. All of a sudden. Okay. War pig? Alive? What? IWA East Coast, which was the promotion in which I wrestled War Pig in down there in Charleston, West Virginia. Whoa. 
Just a heads up, any reports of Warpig and his passing are untrue. Wow. Oh, my God. What? Yes. However, no. we can confirm that multiple attempts to create a Mrs. Warpig in the same lab that created Warpig has only led to random offshoots of designer meth. Okay. So, they <laughs> right. still got their fastball. Still got it, yeah. They still got their fastball, and that was that was direct word from IWA East Coast, which was the promotion in which I wrestled. Warpig still got his That's back. great news. That's great to hear. After Beck told, Holy that was shit. Fun. Dude. <laughs> this is like when Jesus came back. Down. Jeez. Why you got to ruin everything? <laughs> what do you mean? Yep. Pretty much. Well, what's that, AJ? Down, why'd Same you take thing. You took it too far. What are you talking about? Just too so far. is he dead or not? Not dead. No. Still kicking. A lot. Okay. I didn't know how to take that, That uh, you know, the statement or the, it's just confusing with the ending and all of it. No, the ending pig. was they were trying to cook up an our war pig. Instead, what ended up happening yeah. was just meth. Some more meth was Smoke being created, meth. which we don't love, so obviously. We don't love that at all. War pig was created in a lab. Right. Yes. War pig is not just out on a farm. Gotcha. You know, of course, right? yeah, yeah. Warp. yeah. Headline in WrestleMania probably coming up. Fingers crossed. Could be. I hope. I don't know how many cigarettes have been smoked since the time I wrestled him to now, mm -hmm. but his <laughs> lungs are in the spot they need to be for WrestleMania over there in Philadelphia. Yeah. Him putting butts out on Super Hummin's face. Oh, oh my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Super Hummin still has his fastball as well. Uh, well, um, people are questioning that. You all uh, are the only ones. Well, That's just because we've seen these other stunts that are being done in these middle school gyms, and there's one guy that went off the top rope through a plane or pane of glass six six of them. into a concrete yeah. floor. These death matches that are happening in the wrestling mm. world, oh. if you just get that into your algo for a day or two, you're about to see humans that just literally have the fuck it mentality yeah. more so than anybody mm -hmm. that has ever been documented. It's yeah. great. It's I love it. I, I cannot respect the art in its purest form. It's not so beautiful. After the match just so we know, like that, I I respect the fuck out of these people that go and just yes. beat the hell out of themselves to a dangerous level for other people's entertainment. Yes. So other people will have a good night. Other people have. I respect the hell out of that. Me too. But professional wrestling in its purest form is not that. I, that, that just what? needs a. No. It is a form of professional wrestling. I'm not saying it is For not. For sure. And I've been and seen a death match before, oh. and I respect and appreciate oh. everybody that does that. But like, you get a lot of those old heads that are the purest form of professional wrestling, and they're like, why are these guys trying to kill themselves in our profession? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, well, it's called a death match. These dudes are insane. Not mm -hmm. jobs. We're talking about jumping off like the top of barns. Yeah. 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 Top of Barnes. What are you landing on? Anything? No, the cement. Yep. Yeah, it's better. I hit on the cement. That'll be good. <laughs> it's like, what, dude? That is not the right move. And then well, guess what? Argue, they kick out. Yeah, of that course. Is the purest form. No. No. Purest form is Dean Malenko versus Eddie Guerrero. Just no holds barred. I don't know. Ric Flair probably took somebody on in an Iron Man 60-minute match yeah. down Ricky there. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Yeah, that was probably yeah, it. Yeah, there actually. you go. That oh, was right. actually the one. Lesnar take. Yeah. How about... Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, and Kane triple threat match, Ooh. Royal Rumble, yeah. 2018. Wow. Yeah. Got any highlights from that? Uh, one video has been making its way yeah. into my algo. Let's go. Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar had a fight in the middle of the ring. They did. And Brock hit him with a two-piece body shot, mm -hmm. head shot. Yeah. And it's like the things that are said about Brock Lesnar is like he's the best professional wrestler when it comes to everything. He got needed in, in the head. Mm -hmm. And boy, Braun Strowman's like, what, six, seven? He is... Oh, yeah. Big son of a bitch. Rock is a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just those two guys just in the middle. Imagine the fans just being like, holy, holy shit. fuck, look at these guys. Guys are actually... Look at these guys. fucking dudes right here. They're doing it right now. What if he got knocked out, too? Brock Lesnar. Think about Brock Lesnar, just the human being, real quick. You know, we talked about Maya Lesnar. What was that, last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two weeks ago? Last That dude, have you ever seen him live in person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just different. It is different. It's a different thing. Have you ever seen him, AJ? Have you ever seen that? I don't believe. I, I don't think I've ever seen him in person. He's like a spectacle. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like his arms, his hands. His hands are his so back. big. His back is mm -hmm. so big. He, he's yeah. like, and his hands, though, like if he was to straighten his arms, which he can't because his fucking lats or whatever yep. is so big, he is like a, he actually has like a squirrel suit at all times mm -hmm. because of what his back <laughs> yeah. is. If he was to straighten him, I think his hands would go to his actual ankles, mm -hmm. yeah. like if he wanted to. And then you see him. He can sit down and like touch his, like put his body flat in between his legs, like he's like what? Yeah, dude. yeah. He's athlete. Like great. He's, he can run and jump too. Like he is an absolute freak. I, can you imagine if he like took his kids to a public pool somewhere, took his shirt off with a sweet tattoo, and the, like go all the way down his Lord. chest as well? Like, man, he's 
He is a specimen. He walks by in just regular clothes, and you're like, that's a fucking thing right there. That is something. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what that is, but that is the biggest what I have mm-hmm. ever seen. But then whenever he does get all, you know, his boobs are about four feet tall, yep. it yeah. like. It's yep. absurd. You know what I mean? And he's, yep. he bo- it's like, what a fucking freak that guy is. Yeah. Absolute stallion. What a stud. One of one. And Braun Strowman, you know, he ain't t- he, he, Walked around and found out. He won a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we talk about old football. Could you imagine if Brock, Brock Lesnar? Lesnar? Yeah. Full time football. Is Bingo. Like. Yeah. Like out, outside mm-hmm. middle linebacker. Whole life. Yes. All he focused on was football. Yeah. Let's say he was in Ohio instead mm-hmm. of uh, Dakota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was like, this is what you do. His fucking arms, what he would do to people. Mm. And he, had a, he, he does seemingly, you know, UFC mm-hmm. heavyweight champion, whatever he wanted to. Just, yeah, I'm going to go do this now. Mm-hmm. Seemingly has the ability mentally to be like, yeah, I want to, you know. Mm-hmm. Put you down. Yeah, yeah. Through, through the ground. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Through the ground. And he's still properly jocked. Yeah. Properly. Haven't seen him in a while, right? Mm-mm. Yeah. Has he been on? I don't think he's been around. No, I'm sure. Where the hell is he? Hibernating. Probably Canada. Getting bigger. Stronger, faster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tougher. Defi- define father time somehow oh yeah what a stud dude what an absolute beast the best all right let's move along let's wrap up the show with a probably the best segment we have pump for this you know in the trenches is obviously fantastic sure Mm -hmm. but that's focusing on one particular part of the game Mm -hmm. we used to have coach p's keys but due to the ability for chuck to talk about everything as opposed to just one particular Mm -hmm. thing we kind of save chuck from himself Mm -hmm. we want him to be a part of the whole conversation so segment wise chuck great segment this is the only segment where we're learning about all 22 people on the field. That's right. right. It's offense. Yep. It's defense. Right. right. And it's great breakdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for everything DB. Good D and bad D. D Butch, uh, that's that good D up on the top yeah. there. But I do believe Ooh. we'll be beginning with the bad D, and then we'll end with the we'll end with the good D. Uh, week, Dirty. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think the way that Dirty has done his work mm-hmm. since having a baby has been nothing short oh. of phenomenal. Hey, way to go, Dirty! Hey, hey, baby, baby, Dirty. 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 Dirty's going through life buds. That's the first few weeks Thanks, of having a kid. That. Yep. Hey, no, nope. Dirty with that. Cool voice. Mm-hmm. Dirty, you've been killing it, pal. Uh, He's gone. back. Oh. Oh. Sorry, real. thanks, y'all. <laughs> all right, here it is. How you well, feeling, Dirty? I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling good. Have some coffee. I'm all right. Nice. Okay, hey, maybe have some lemonade from Panera. Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 Well, I, need, I have a lot of Don't give it to your nighter, I can do that. Hey, dirty small guy. Don't. You know what I mean? Not too small. You know, I get properly sure, sure, proportioned. Sure. Yeah. Properly. Yeah. Normal size. Yeah, I don't have a size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Properly proportioned. Yeah, you know, he is, <laughs> yeah. he's yeah. a little dirty. I'm not saying anything we all don't know. Hey, it is what it is. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. One of the smaller humans in the office. Bingo. So that's not your fault. No. It's just, you know, and we don't say anything about it ever. But what I am saying is like... I don't think you should have two or three of those lemonades no. from what I'm here. It is four <laughs> loco lemonade out there. Yeah, yeah, we need to take care of ourselves. Oh, my God. Probably half a lemonade will get the job done for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Could you there imagine you if we had these lemonades during, like, the real heyday of our drinking primes? Oh, my yeah. God. What what would have been done oh, with these things? Man. That was when we were in New York Sunday night and Monday, yep. Indianapolis, mm-hmm. Thursday night football game, then game yep. day. <clears throat> is that bang for you guys? Yeah. yeah the bang was, energy? I think it was a bang run. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. It was so fucking bad. It at was. the end, it was just it like was. those big Celsius gained 50 pounds. <laughs> 50 pounds that's my pen. <laughs> well, you keep dropping them, no, and they, they make a loud noise every time you do it. I, I anytime I it, that does happen, I do stop and kind of reevaluate what I'm doing, but I'm hot right now. I've spun this in like 50 times, yeah, but you've dropped it two times today. Today, yeah, you had one in Java literally. No, uh, that was yesterday. Nope, yesterday you had Come three on. in Java. No, 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 yeah. You did. You picked it up. Right, yeah, I dropped break. three today. Yeah, I dropped three today. Damn. <laughs> yep. He just picked up one, and there's two underneath my seat. Yep. And there was one in Java, too, so that'd be four. I don't think there's one. Is there? There was. In hour one, there was one in Java. You definitely picked it up then in the middle of the commercial break. You said you're a goldfish, literally, on uh, college game day. I think you're right. Like, mm-hmm. you think about, oh, you know what? I just I banged this pen off the microphone, mm-hmm. and I threw it across the room. Oh, shouldn't do that. <laughs> All right, where's the next pen? And then you're right back into it. I do I do keep five here, and I should just keep one. Five. Just to stop myself. This guy's got five at bats. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got five at bats uh-huh. in the last three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Typically, I only remember the bad things. 
So I try and those are just right in the middle, neutral. Not nice. good, not bad. Like hey, you that. know what we need to get back into? Huh? Those spinners are awesome. Oh, yeah. the, the fidget, fidget spinners? spinners? Why Ooh. people stop with no, this? We need to invent. No, we need to, we need to start our own. Yeah. Those things, that their time has passed. We need to fucking okay. come up with it. It'll look exactly like the fucking fidget spinner. Mm-hmm. And spin and, the other way? And work the exact same <laughs> way. The exact same way. <laughs> yeah. It'd be the exact same size. Yep. Those things were perfect. They Was were that awesome. before iPhones? Or am I... No. No. Those were five years ago. Yeah. Those were awesome. Yeah, they were. Yeah, I, never I ain't got doing that there. shit. This it generation was, That was while, while we were doing this show, Foxy. Unless I... Where I found yeah, while we were doing this show. It was like three or four years yeah, ago. Okay. I thought I remember in high school for some reason. Were iPhones invented three or four years ago? I mean, I was just saying, because he thought fidget spinners <laughs> might have been before the Blackberry. IPhone. I remember hating on fidget spinners when I saw them on the internet. I'm like, these this fucking generation sucks so bad. These kids suck so bad. Like, well, if you're ADHD and maybe you are fidgety, this is not a bad way to kind of focus your energy into it. I'm like, Sarah's so soft. Everybody's so soft all the time. Just fucking deal with it. I'm fidgety. Obviously, I have ADHD. I don't need this shit. It's hard. And I got my fingers on one of those fidget spirits. I was like, oh, this is fucking yeah. You sweet. have uh, yeah. yo-yos back in the day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to be able to walk the dog. Yeah. Yep. 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 Silly yep. putty. <clears throat> it says 2017 was the heyday for the fidget spinners. Makes sense. Six years ago. Those were awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I need one. They just disappeared. Why is it? Probably because of... People just... They say they, they broke <clears throat> very, very easily. They were huge for people with ADHD, and then people with ADHD just moved on to the next thing that <laughs> solved their ADHD. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. funny to think about the ADHD. Like, this thing sucks. What are we... What's <laughs> it broke. Get me out of here. Those were awesome. The Silly Putty was like my sweet. go-to growing <clears throat> up. What was that? It was basically just like a ball of like clay, essentially. Like you it was like, like the stickier, next iteration of play doh, stickier, yeah. shinier play doh. Yeah. yeah, got you. And it made noise. That it was made my go-to. What was the stuff that Robin Williams created in the lab? Flubber. We need similar to yeah. that. Kind of like flubber. Yeah. I need. We need flubber. We do. Mm-hmm. That'd be sweet. Bullshit. We didn't have flubber. I know. Yeah. yeah. Now we got AI. Thanks a lot, technology. Yeah. Nickelodeon Gak was sweet. Gak was sweet. What was Gak? What's that? Similar to slime. Yeah. No. It was similar. What, what were we silly doing? putty? Similar, very similar to silly putty, but like more. I didn't fuck with it. Actually. More slimy. Yeah, it was just nice to have in your hands because it was just something to do. Because like the ADHD, it does. It just goes off. All right, somebody figure it out. Figure it out. Speaking of figuring it out, this guy has it all figured <laughs> Let's out. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Darius J. Butler. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get to let's, the let's, bad D. Hey, good O. Good O. Bad, bad D. D. Okay. Let's get to it, man. First play. Boom. Ooh, good. So we talk about, pause it real quick, Pat. We talk about all the time. Speed at three causes issues for defense. You got Jamal Adams on the back end of the defensive coverage. Not a great coverage guy, all right? Whoa. Guy you want in the box around the ball, I think blitzing the quarterback in the run game. And right now you see Debo Samuel line up at two. But if you pause it right here, late motion, kind of similar to what Miami does, but obviously San Fran does it their own way. Now he's at three. And when you're playing this Seattle defense, a lot of times you drop this safety into this uh, hook curl zone opposite of the speed, opposite of the passing strength for this route, literally for this route. Third and 11, Debo Samuels running this over route. Oh. Jamal Adams is trying to, you know, sitting there making him go over the top, which he does, and just an absolute seed to Debo Samuels, Man. who's a little faster than most people yeah. give him credit for. He's faster on the field than he looks on the film, ran smooth pass. Jamal Adams, and obviously this is some bad D. D. Do you think there's a chance that uh, right here Jamal Adams thought to himself, there's no way Brock Purdy will throw a deep ball? Here. <laughs> no chance. Yeah, because Jamal, I mean, Jamal can't run. And he's in the, this is honestly how you would almost coach it up to play it. It's third and 11, so you do want to kind of be around those sticks. This is a post safety. He's leaning maybe a little more than he would like to. You also got a deep third corner who's being uh, occupied by that curl. I mean, that's a, that's a great ball. That's great. Obviously, uh, Debo doing a great job turning on the Jets. But, I mean, good ball. Obviously, people say Brock Purdy system guy, great players around him. Game Kyle manager. Shanahan, game manager. Mm-hmm. All this shit, which things you want your quarterback to be. You want your quarterback to be a game manager. You want your quarterback to be a quote-unquote system quarterback. Make the right plays. Make the right throws. But you just can't find anybody that can make these type of throws. That's on the street. So Let's great go. play, great execution. I love Brock Purdy. He's making a lot of people look bad these days. Yeah, he yeah. is. There's more bad D, but it's also great O. Uh-huh. Great O, great O. Once again, so now in the back end, you see this corner right here, young corner. We're going to have almost like a quarter, almost like a quarter shell, four across. This is third, third and 17. Yeah. So third long, late in the fourth quarter. Big time drive here. Isaiah likely down here opposite of the four by one. He's going to chip. So if he's chipping on third and 17, if you're this quarter's corner, 
it's no reason for you to <laughs> chase that crosser. That's when you give it up, you let Isaiah likely catch this. These are just, this is the first down marker way up here on the four-yard line so we can rally and tackle that tight end. And then this is almost, if you throw it, go back to the beginning, this is like uh, everybody's ran and thrown this route on Madden. These crosses, right? Oh, yeah, one four crosser, verticals. One behind, one behind. They're all going to run across the field. And you'll see Lamar Jackson with this chip step up in the pocket and make this throw to Zay Flowers. Big time throw they needed this. Took the lead. Had a great play for the two-point conversion after this as well. Great throw, great route. Oh. But once again, you're that backside corner. Sink back. If you go back real quick, if you sink back with this safety, because this safety is going to be occupied, but if you sink back, this safety will be able to drop that first one and get back to that second window. So if you pause it there, if 44 is back here around this 10-yard line, he'll be able to pick up that first one. I believe that's Aguilar. And then Zay Flowers will be coming behind him, and that safety will be in a better position to help the other safety out. But this is great offense and bad D on the defensive side of the ball. Big-time play from Lamar and then uh, Todd Monken led offense. Yeah. Hey, that's a 34-yard strike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this rope. the best he's ever thrown the football? Lamar. Yeah, in, in, the, in the National Football League. The MVP year, he did. He, he, he was throwing the ball well. He was spinning. I think he led the league in touchdown passes um, that year. But he's throwing the ball well, and he's throwing it more. It's more of a, a more sophisticated passing offense. He got better weapons, probably the best group of guys that yeah. he's had. Regardless, I know they've drafted guys in the first round or second round or whatever, but Aguilar's playing decent. Zay Flowers playing really good. OBJ is coming along. Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews' absence is playing well, and the offensive line is playing well. Also, but uh, he threw for over 300, and this, weather, this was a bad weather game. Yeah. Both of these quarterbacks were, were spending it, him and Stafford, in a game that, uh, you know, wasn't ideal when it comes as far as weather. Once again, this is first, first and 10 now. Quarters coverage, something we saw last, I believe it was last week, with Derek Stingley had that catch, uh, that beautiful mm -hmm. pick mm -hmm. on that dig and go route. Same thing here with OBJ. He actually said he ran the wrong route. We have a double move here, a double move here, and I believe a double move here as well. <laughs> In the alumni section, right, around that logo. Empty, you don't see a bunch of double moves from empty. They do it here, you're going to get a dig and go. So a typical route is option here in the slot, a dig from uh, Odell Beckham. But he put some sauce on it, dig and go. Now, when this, this safety drives it, when Fuller drives the dig, which he's supposed to do, the corner, that corner has to drive high and protect that double move. He does not. Eyes are in the backfield. Lamar Jackson stepped up. Doesn't make the best throw. But put enough air on it, gives OBJ enough time to adjust to oh. it. Boom. Wow. Back in the end zone. Yeah, OBJ's back, AJ. Hey. He looks good. D-butt, that's, that's a known thing, right? That, that corner has to just start getting vertical instantly, right? When he sees him cross his face or he sees the safety drive down on that dig, he's got to know. Like, you just got to anticipate that, doesn't he? You got to know. It's one of those things that you do, but it, honestly, you don't see it a lot. You don't see You see the dig and mm -hmm. go route. You know, you don't see it that often, especially from empty. So Ooh. you can kind of get lazy. I guess it's probably the first time. I believe that's Witherspoon. No, nah, not the first time. He's been around long enough. You mm -hmm. got to drive, but it's something you don't see often. That's why it was so great to see a young corner like Derek Stingley be on top of that and drive it and make an unbelievable play. But it is a, that's, that's exactly what the safety is supposed to do on that route. He's supposed to drive that. He's anticipating any in-breaking route, a curl, a dig, and a post. He needs to be underneath, and you got to be over the top. You oh, because people back. are blaming the safety here. For yeah, sure. I'm got sure. Yeah. yeah, for yeah, sure. They'll say it's a blown coverage from the safety because the corner, you look at the corner. On, on paper, it's, oh, he's playing his quarters. He's doing what he's supposed to do, but no. And lazy, kind of lazy, too. If I was coaching him up, if you, if you run it back, that's to me. That's that's lazy technique. There's no sense of urgency with 44 there. The, his whole demeanor, like you know, you're a deep quarters guy. So like right here, that's Odell Beckham. I know he's a little older, but he can still run. He still got some tread on his tire. So great route. Good job having vision once again. He he came out and said he ran the wrong route. So that's a great job by Lamar. <laughs> seeing him, seeing him, and saying yeah. He said the double move was supposed to be on the other side, but Lamar obviously stepped up and saw him. And made that throw. What a play. He, he's a play. young guy, but uh, if you're a quarterback and you see 44 at corner, is that immediate like, hey? Well, hey. well we, we, we well, talked about it not that. with uh, whatever his name is. Well, the kicker. Playing for the Rams. Definitely. Randy Bullock. Definitely. There it is. Definitely. And it, uh, well, you got a red dot on you sometimes, especially if you know when you go into certain situations, that whether it's red area, whether it's empty. You At this point in the year, you are who you are, defensively, offensively. So you can know, okay, Connor's going to be out there at corner. We're going to have him at quarters. 
this is the route we're going to have for Connor for this situation. So absolutely, this is going to be a thing. Well, not just white people in general, right? Like if you see a white corner, <laughs> you have to throw well, him. Well, I mean, I heard the Bussin' Boys, what do you call it, a milk check? Mm -hmm. Or Josh Allen. Josh Allen said a milk check. Yep. I'm not sure. But uh, we got we got a guy coming in the draft this year to That's make right. change all that. Jason forever. Seahorn, they're saying. Yeah, ask. I yep. don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't seen that comparison. Whoa. You haven't seen that? No. What's what he getting? Mean? Like Revis? It's the only comparison I've seen. Just wait, oh. you will. It's That's, coming. You think it's going to come? It's coming. Right down it's the coming. pipe. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy, there's something about him. <laughs> so, uh, it reminds me, can't put my finger on it, but he reminds me of Jason Seahorn. A lot of yeah. Seahorn in his game. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like the way he. He's even handsome like Jason. Nah. You think they'll do that with receivers too? Like This guy's kind of like the Cooper Cup in the second. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah they yeah. do. That's, yeah. that's yeah. normally yeah. where that's it is. Super Cup, Jordy Nelson. Yeah. Who's that dude out of Texas A&M and ran like a 4-3 or something like that? And they were like, this guy, like Dallas Clark, this guy will be able to, uh, I forget who it was. It was like, uh, I don't think, this guy is a, this is deep ball. <laughs> this guy is going, yeah. this guy's going, he's like Wes Walker, you know, he's like uh, Danny Amendola. It's like, I don't think that's what he, there's one thing I get. Uh -huh. We get that he's white. Well, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, you're letting everybody know. Underneath those pads, Caucasian dude. Yep. Sure. Got it. Okay, that's where the comps stop. Anyway, speaking of comps, hey. this Niners team don't have many. Bro, no. you saw him a lot on in the trenches. You've seen him a lot today. Just going to put this safety in the bind. If you run it back, going to put this safety. Anytime you are a, a flat defender, which he is, any single high coverage, these guys who are responsible for two, they're going to be some type, type of flat, either a curl flat, a seam flat, whatever it is. This late motion from Juice, he's going to come across, and they have plenty of run plays that look exactly like this. 44 comes late, 85 comes late, and they hand it off to C-Mac, and you better be there to help once he sets that edge. Better be in there to make the tackle. You also have coverage responsibility down the field. He runs this fake, this wow. play-action fake. Yikes. Boom. Mm, that's Jeez. tough. That's so tough. That, can that be, is a tough that, play. That's really tough. You're in the bind as a safety, and also as a <laughs> corner, right? As that's a corner, impossible. if you are a deep third guy, I, I would assume he's a deep third guy because he's rotating down. You've got a deep safety corner, Woolen. He should be back, in my opinion. He should be deeper because technically this is the number one receiver right now. Now, 44 is going to come across. He's going to become the final one. But as a, as a deep third guy, you are a primary pass defender. You are a secondary run defender. So you what? react to the run, and your first, your first duty is pass down the field. But Julian Love is in a tough spot. You get the play action. He grabs him. It's not enough. Kittle runs to it. Wide open touchdown. Watch Kittle take a look down as if he was going to come down and help oh, yeah. block. Yep. Look at his mm -hmm. turn his head yep. and then, okay, I'm going to go block. Yeah, because we've seen this play a thousand oh, times yeah. on In the Trenches. Yep. Boom, pull. Kittle blocks down. Juszczyk picks up one. 55 picks up whoever else that's, is that's in there. It looks like a run play. Yeah, that is exactly what it is. And then all of a sudden, boop, nope, I'm out of here actually. See ya. So tough. That decision, too. Like, okay, do I want to get pancaked and laughed at by George Kittle? Or, or do I want him to beat me on a deep ball? And score a touchdown. So, so, <laughs> yeah, and, and you'll see it from the tight copy. Even tougher. Even impossible. more impossible from the back end. Because, once again, everything looks the same. You see the bind that Julian Love is in. Once again, I think Tariq Woolen could be back. Help him out. Because right now, that is the number one receiver. Tough, tough job for 20. And this is why they do it. You Alumni always have to section. have plays. And then you have to have plays off of it. You have to have counters off of it. I think uh, Dan Orlowski talked about that uh, when speaking about, forget which mm -hmm. offense, but he was saying they don't have plays that mirror each other. I think New England. This is the reason why. <clears throat> Probably New England. Yeah, potentially. There's other places as well. Could have been. You know, it's not great seeing bad D, but it's every not. once in a while it's just good D that makes bad D. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How about some good D? Yes, yeah. 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 We got a lot of good D guys on this particular graphic, don't we? What a bunch of studs on there. Great D guys. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. All defensive player of the years. Where is uh, I don't see Will Fork. Yeah, I believe oh, so. Sorry, we don't or, have we don't we need we need to get nose tackle in there. You're right. Yeah, Larry Guy, no. Oh, a couple we're, we're Ravens, big a couple Ravens there. over this. Huh. Yeah, no Steelers. Yeah. I did have a Steeler on there. Who was that? And I swapped him out. Who was it? Joe Green. Troy? Troy, it was Troy. Oh, oh really? you went at oh, Reed instead? Troy. I mean, yeah. Wow. Troy Paul Mola had an opportunity to potentially be on this. Hey, Troy, I want to let you yeah. know. I thought you deserved what you did to He's me. A, he, Unbelievable. But yeah. I mean, Ed, Ed or Troy. Brian if I Dawkins. I make the choice. I got to go ahead. Hmm. That's just me. I know that helmet. Sorry. Sorry Brian Tom. Sorry, Dawkins. Or... I paid good money for choice. Didn't you? Yeah, we, we all would. Ooh. We all would see him. You did. Fourth and 10 against the. 
I don't know if they're the same old Lions. Oh, no. The the Lions. Good. Oh, no. I'm not Dude. sure right now with these Lions. turnovers. Bears, I'm not sure. good D. I'm not sure right now, but Jalen Johnson, what I am sure about oh, is yeah. he is an absolute stud. Just watch him with vision. Great cornerback with vision. Keeping everything inside him. Getting width. Getting depth. Depth. Fourth and ten. Been aware of the sticks. Been aware of the routes. Outside flood. One, two, three. Mm. Boom. Cookies. Goof. Hey, that's a good D. That's a great D right there. Love this okay. from a young corner. Pay the man his money. You know, you went and got your pass rusher. Lock your corner up. Figure out what you're going to do with quarterback, whether it's keeping Justin Fields or going and draft one. That's great, D. Understand the situation, understanding the route concepts, and then going up and finishing and making a play. How about them paying yeah. old buddy yeah. and then the defense responding? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it has been a vastly different team over oh, the yeah. last few weeks. Congrats to you, ZD, baby. Yep. Oh, and, yeah, bear down. And most of, the year, if... most of the year, Chicago has been a good run, uh, a good yes, defensive team against the run. But now, these last few weeks, obviously, you bring in a stud pass rusher. That helps well, things. Especially when it's cold. And then they, you know, getting healthy off. in the back end as well. Got some young, I like, got some good players on that back end as well. Brisker. Yeah, him and Brisker. Flus calling yeah. the defense again? Oh, well, yeah. I'm not sure. Is he Cito? Yes, he is. Here's nice. another great defense, dude. This hey. team might win a guy. No, I'm not saying it. No, no, it's say real. It. Say, it. say it. It's real. Say it. Say it. With footsteps. They might win a playoff game. Yep. Okay. This team might win a playoff game out there. They could go on a run. Why not with this defense, especially with the good D we're about to watch right here? Absolutely. Fourth quarter. Trevor Lawrence. Tough, tough, hey, tough son of a bitch. Got mm -hmm. out there and played 31, three picks Yo, we, this game. We haven't talked about that enough. Hmm. How'd that happen? <laughs> How? Yeah. Seriously, though. liability. How like, was he you... running around the field, too? He was running everywhere. Yeah. I thought How... he was done after that know. hit. What do we think? They they this labeled like... it a high ankle sprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the second time we've seen this from him, right? I think he's just yes. a fucking dog. Me, man. too. I yeah. think there's a chance. Yeah. Tough cuss. Yeah. There was also a game last year against the Lions. Didn't he, like, get his knee? Oh, yeah. 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 His knee was in half. Basically. Thought he was going to be out for the thought year. Thought he was done for was the year fine. for sure, and then he came hey. back. Hey, Trevor, we appreciate yeah. you, yeah. buddy. Just yeah. need more of that. Hey, AJ said back. yesterday, love, love seeing the tough guys, especially at their quarterback. Position. Not granted, he threw three picks. So. He did. He did. And this but is one of them. Still it's a dog. Yes. Bad one. Yes. This is a bad one. Third and one. Cornerback Greg Newsom is in his bell position. So when you're in a bell technique as a corner, the number one route you cannot give up is a deep go ball. Just a straight go. That's the one you're waiting for. That's the one where you basically turn into the receiver. Newsom has been playing a lot of inside. Denzel Ward has been out, so he's playing some outside, just tracking the ball. You know, Trevor Lawrence, I'm going to take a shot, give it to Ridley. And as a corner, this is exactly what you want to see if you get tried. Because you're getting disrespected at this point. Because mm -hmm. you're getting disrespected. If I'm open and I'm looking at the quarterback and he's looking at me and he just throws the ball, I got to go and make him pay. Now, pause it real quick. Anthony Walker, great heads up player. I'm sure AJ has seen this and done this a ton. So empty, empty. If you want to, let me see how, how far we can get back. Because they go to an empty check, which most defenses have, especially a good one. So uh, Jacksonville comes out empty. Defensive usually makes adjustments. So you see everyone communicate, everyone touching their shoulders, right? That's our empty check. All out pressure. We're sending pressure. Now what offenses do, obviously quarterback, hey, I'm going to check protection. Let's bring the tight end to protect it. Anthony Walker, former coach. Hey, call it safety in. What did you guys used to call this, AJ? Um, where if he stays in the blocks, you add on to the pressure. I mean, we would just call it hug rush or whatever. We would win okay. through him. You take him and run your guy into the quarterback. Basically. So hug rush, usually it's with a tight end or a running back. That, that safety is responsible for him in coverage. But if he blocks, you add on to the pressure because we'll always have one more. So mm. great job by the linebacker wow. getting his safety down there because yes. he can't do it, obviously, if he's eight, nine yards off the ball. He's just helping nobody once Ingram stays in there block. Did, he's sitting there covering nobody. Did you happen to see Ingram's look uh, when Trevor calls him in and yeah. then he yes. looks at who is across from him? Uh, you could see. Oh, Miles Garrett? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when he calls him in and then he looks at Miles Garrett, he's, 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 he doesn't seem thrilled no. about it, uh, which is just sure? hilarious. Please Evan, let me run this. Evan, Evan, in, coming in, then he goes and looks at him. Are you sure about Okay. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he was probably better off, honestly, just throwing a quick hot route to Ingram okay. with 33 wanna. off the ball. Cause. <laughs> Whew. That's what they did with uh, Gronk in the Super Bowl. They brought oh, yeah. him in, and then he did, like, the fake block release touchdown. Yep. Evan Ingram 101 with Miles Garrett. Hey, hey, did a decent yeah, pretty yeah, good. Did pretty yeah. good. Did a Got decent his body job. in front of him for sure. Did a decent yeah. job. A great job finishing the play, and I love seeing that great communication up front by my guy, A. Walt. Hey, that hey that's good leadership hey. right there. What's up? Was that the best feeling uh, when playing football, intercepting the ball in front of the other team's sideline? Ooh, yeah, especially if it's to end the game. Mm -hmm. If it's to end the game, I had one of those against uh, Seattle. They were on a roll one year. They came into the 
to the live the house, house and uh, made a play on the like first or second down and then the last place, place the erupted place yep erupted. places yep. loud you're right there i was right there in front of pete carroll he was crying or whatever i just kind of gave him a little yeah. talk little shit to doug baldwin yeah <laughs> that's awesome a great great moment so everyone's so bummed i do hate this though guys you get a pick and defense is down here you're going to run all the way to that end zone. So I'm, if I'm your teammate, I can't be a bad teammate. I got to run 90 fucking five yards to come celebrate with you, take <laughs> yeah. a picture. Or if I don't, it's a bad teammate. Yeah, because you could come this defense. way. Yeah, you could come this way, buddy. You're about at the 50. So G knew, come back that way. But obviously all these guys, well, he probably, I would say he probably got about six. Well, and he knows too, like, hey, we got Joe Flacco now. Like, we're yeah. going to be on the sideline for a little bit. They're going to put together a nice job. Be able to rest score. up, boys. Yeah, in great field position. I don't want to get a hey, loaf from Jim Schwartz either. This is my favorite of the week. Bingo. Now, I had Carlton Davis on here a few weeks ago. He had a rough, he had a rough one. But corners, we got to have short term memory. Trap coverage, flat defender. This guy's been watching ball. He's been watching tape. Big time player for them, B. J. Robinson. Late motion out to the flat. Ritter does a little play action fake. Oh, I'm just swinging out. We got two blockers. Nope. Read it like a book. Wow. Made a play. Ritter. Unbelievable play. Ritter, huh? Hey, they got numbers, too. If they block those two, they got two on two. They got some numbers and mm -hmm. some space. Yeah, so they got the look. This is the, the exact look Arthur Smith and his offense wants. Unbelievable look, Nobody adjusts, play. really. Yeah, Carl Pitts out to lunch out there. Yeah, Kyle, you know, Kyle, when a guy reacts like this, though. Well, Bijan's mm. in motion, so he can't. You can't have two guys moving at the same time. No, he, he can't move for sure, but that, that's a tough block to make when that corner is yeah. dialed in like that on, on what's going on. So a great play by him. I mean, you got to give a little more effort. Yeah, what are we doing? You got you to give <laughs> a little on. more effort than that, Kyle Pitts. That's, and that's why they put a tight end out there. That was probably one of the keys mm -hmm. that popped up. For Carlton Davis, I got a tight end out here. Bijan's in motion. And usually when you motion, especially one of your star players, a lot of times it's as a decoy, unless it's like a Tyreek Hill who you just get him a running start to make sure you don't get hands on him. So when you motion a guy like that who was probably one of the game records coming into that week, you know you're going to have some eyes on it. But that's an unbelievable play from Carlton that's Davis. That's tough to put that on Ritter, too, though. Ritter will get, like, reverse pivot around. and Like, he's got to pull yeah, the trigger. he did not know. No. Yeah. He's told, throw that thing. Yeah. yeah. Fire. Yeah, look at look at the action in the backfield too. Like, come on now, he didn't even get to look at him. See you. Go. Unbelievable play though. These are the ones you dream That's about. That's tough. Yeah, mm -hmm. these, are, these are the ones you you dream about. If I see this formation, if I see this, I'm going after them making a play. Hey, yes, Patriots. I don't know if yes! they've been on here a bunch. Jabril Peppers. We did it. A great it's year. that good D. Finally. It's that good D. It's that Finally. good D. Hey, it's the Let it go, Patriots. It's the Woo. finale, too. We got, some, Bill. we got some simulated pressure. So we're going to bring two DBs. Two linemen are going to rush. Third and ten. These guys are going to be around the stick, especially Jabril Peppers. Reading Maserati Mitch. You see him go back. Get back to a half. Get a great read on him and come back down. I believe I saw a tweet. Uh, bashing the tight ends for some lazy route running. Oh. Not sure if this was on Muth. Not sure who this was on. I just think this was a great I mean, play design. I you know who it was on. I'm not sure it was on, Tom. Great play design, great break, and a great job finishing the play. Now, once again, this Let's is the simulated go. pressure. You only got chest. two down linemen, a couple of DBs dug around here, hugging around, and they're only going to bring one, two, three, and the DB's going to come off the edge as well. So a simulated pressure where we're only bringing four, but you're still going to pretty much have a free hitter coming. Which has caused that pressure. He comes inside. Hey, go back. Deep if you want it, back real yep, quick. Yep. From the back. back end, what? Just basic football. One. If you go back a little bit, watch the guys coming off the edge on looking to our to their right side. Watch the first guy he goes underneath the back because if he goes outside the back, two can block one. Yep. One can block two. So watch. He's coming here oh, underneath the fullback, so I can clean it up for the next guy coming over yep. top to have a clean shot at the quarterback. That's just like basic stuff that. It's not surprising that the Patriots do, but sometimes that guy might take the bait and go upfield, and all of a sudden the back blocks both of these guys. Yeah, and when you bring that simulated pressure, if you run it back a little bit, Pat, look what it does to the protection. You got one, you got like they all one, two, left. three, four guys basically blocking one, and then like AJ said, you got this back who essentially is responsible for two. So that's the look. Who knows? You only got two guys down. I don't know. AQ will have to tell you who they, who's the mic, who, what was the protection, but you see him pointing left, you see him pointing left. They end up both going that way. Great, great job by old Bill dialing this one up. Wow. And then the guy's executing. And once again, like AJ said, coming across inside that, because he's got to take most dangerous, which is always the inside guy. And then you bring his speed. Is that Bryant coming off the edge? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Mark Bryant. Boom. So, yeah, see, it wasn't Maserati's fault. 
I mean, that's just genius right defensive space, right play calling. Space. Yeah, I don't know what else you want. And, and scheming and strategy. Scheming. That's that's good strategy. That is right a here. good D. Players in position. Ladies and gentlemen, everything DB. Good yes, D. sir. Yeah, Thank you, D. Butch. Great work this week, pal. Uh, you too. Another week down. You know, with Darius wow. in uh, oh, Thunderdome. It's crazy. It's been a fun run this yes, fall. Let's continue this thing tomorrow, shall we? Yeah. Big program tomorrow, AJ. Big one. Thursdays are always huge for us. Huge. I might go three straight days with a shirt on. Ooh, oh, whoa, I like whoa, that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It looks good. Let's go. Thank you, Foxy. It looks clean. comfortable. Thank you. Got some people calling me a sellout. It's like it's 30 degrees outside. Who the hell? Let's get a boat. Do cool. what you want to do. Yes, I'm, I'm sure they wear tank tops to work every day. I had a lady come up to me at the uh, Army-Navy game, uh -huh. and she said, I just want to let you know that I do not mean any offense by this. <laughs> Nobody can pull off a tank top. <laughs> even, oh, <whoa>. you. <laughs> even you. I said, thank you. Jeez. I said, thank you. She said, nobody should wear those ever. I was I like, mean, okay, I'll put you down in the not a fan of the tank top. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Not a fan of the tank top. She was very nice. She did deliver it in a very nice way. Mm -hmm. But the message was cold hearted. I'm like, damn. Yeah, whoa, lady, lady. You're pretty savage, lady. At least she said it to you. Where did it originate? I actually yeah. got asked this last night at the bar. I don't know. I Why just started, you wear tank top? I just started doing it one day. And then it was like kind of hilarious that we're doing daily sports. Mm hmm. And I'm wearing a fucking tank top every day. And everybody wears a suit all day, every day. Mm -hmm. have, to, have to wear a suit to talk about sports. Have to. So if you can go the complete opposite of that, mm -hmm. which is a tank top, that's a pretty funny little thing. Yeah. And, and then I started falling in love with them. Like, these things are so comfortable. And then every day my life got very easy. Just like, what am I wearing? Well, I, I'm 60. I'm wearing these. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing this. And I was, the arms started. It was like. Perfect. This is what I'm supposed to wear. So then for like a good eight to nine month period, it was like I was super jacked to wear it every day. And then I would like, a shirt would show up that my wife either, either bought or I saw or something. I'm like, I man, I really like that shirt. Good shirt. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> can't ruin a gimmick though. Like I often wonder if Steve Jobs ever saw like a t-shirt. He was like, I fucking love that t-shirt. Yeah. yeah. I love that t-shirt. Wear it around the house. I love that t-shirt. But then he's like, I gotta go turtleneck. Mm -hmm. Gotta go. Gotta go with the uniform in there. So tank top's not gone forever. But it, that's how it started. Just I think it was, uh, I bought like six of the same tank top. Mm -hmm. And just once it got, I was like, this is so comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then it just became like a, yeah, this would be hilarious, actually. And then it just one thing led to another. Yeah, once you got the iteration that you liked, it was blouses. Yeah, shout, uh -huh. to, shout out to Amazon creating a fact that I could just buy double XL tank tops and they'd be in my house literally the next day. Yeah. Uh -huh. it was like, you think about it, what is more ridiculous? Wearing a suit at 10 in the morning talking about sports or having a tank top on? Well, you ask a lot of people, they would say the tank top for sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I heard from them. I heard from them. But the whole you got to wear a suit to talk sports thing, I, I, that... that uh -huh. That became wild to me. Other countries don't do it. That isn't like, you know? No. Just became like the thing. And I understand respecting people that are watching and dressing up and everything like that. I get it. We're in airports and everything and should at least look professional. I understand. And I thought it was a very professional tank top. And I tried to stay in shape. You <laughs> know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, right. uh, Respect. I, was I was respecting everything that was going on. I was trying my best. But it is nice to be able to wear another shirt every once in a while. I've kind of cracked the code, cracked the seal on it. And because of how fucking bitterly cold it is outside. Uh -huh. yeah, it's chilly. It's chilly. It is. Yeah, no snow. Cold. No snow. That's worse. What's Snow's going gone. It is. There really hasn't I been. What is going it never, on? It never snows. It never yeah, snows. It's not it's a lot of snow. snow. It's get, December. Really? It's December. We got nothing but time to wait on the snow. I'm a firm believer, though, that it is colder when there isn't snow. I agree. 100%. Even if, oh, even if yeah. it's the same temperature. You know, and people, a lot, people, the science people tell me I'm wrong. It's like, well, you never fucking been outside when it's snowing. Mm -hmm. when it's not snowing. Yep. Exactly. Even if it's windy snowing, when the snow is there, it feels warmer. Yes. That's just the way it is. I love snow. And you can appreciate True. winter more. For me personally, at least, when there's snow on the ground, I can appreciate mm -hmm. it. This is not Joe DiNardo's reporting, but the internet is telling us that snow might be coming to Indianapolis on the 27th, two days after Christmas. Christmas is soon, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Next week. The 27th. Nice. Right around the corner. Sure they know. They know. They got weather reports two day. weeks out. It won't, definitely that. won't change. Not that won't real change. Between no, now. not here in Indiana either. You know what I mean? That's Ooh. not the case. I have 46. So, so it ain't thick. <laughs> I don't think it's going to snow. Yeah, it's not sticking. Boy, oh boy. AM snow showers, 32 in wow. a row. If they, if they pull out the flash freeze again, hot. I'm out. I'm done. You're talking about the whole... Oh, yeah. That was fucked I'm up. I'm done with weather if they do that again. Weather had it rain. <laughs> done with weather. Weather had it rain here in Indiana, and then the next day, coldest it's ever fucking been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was literally like a, a freezing of the rain. That was a one-two punch that... 
I didn't think Mother Nature still fucking hit. No. Very icy. Yeah, that was very, everybody. Everybody yeah. was off. It's a slow ride in. Mother Nature fucking brought it. Oh yeah. That was a real. I can't believe she's still in the kitchen cooking up new fucking shit. Seriously. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. She's in the lab fucking. Well, making... she's got new ingredients. Huh? She's got new ingredients. Like what? Bro, right. that thing was crazy. No. It was literally a setup. It was an alley oop. It was like you get somebody from like South Florida experiencing their first snow. It's like let's have a snowball fight. You got it. Easy trick. You, you just get two snowballs, mm -hmm. and then you're throwing one up in the sky, and then it's like, oh, look, that's fun. Get out of the way. And then you got one coming right down the fucking pipe, you know, with the head up, bang. This yeah. is a, this is a setup. This is, is a jab. Yeah, exactly. Into a yeah. into an entire. Remember a thing? couple years ago, Atlanta, when it starts snowing, and it was like four hours of traffic. They can't deal with it. They don't have they don't have salt trucks. Yeah, Mother Nature still got it. She still got it. Yeah, that's like Vegas. Remember when Vegas got two inches of snow and yeah. they had to shut down the city because they have one snowplow in the entire city. Yeah, and then there was like what? There was snow in Cali. Yeah, last year? Cali, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Southern California. Yeah, yep. I think that was during that flash freeze time. What's going on? You mm. tell me, Darius. No. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Darius J. Butler? Nine years. Ask Al Gore. No, are we talking about they shot him in the head. Just thinking if Bill's going to take. Oh, he's alive. Weather That's weather right. I saw room. him speaking. He he uh, he was on a TV that was walking past in a cafe the other day. I actually said, "Oh, internet! The guy who created the internet." Yeah, yeah. there he mm -hmm. is. Yeah, definitely still. Oh, on. I did see. I saw a clip of him on uh, X. Yeah, I forgot me, what he was talking about. I don't think it was X. I saw him on the TV, but he was. He's the creator of it. That's all. Mm -hmm. I, I think that guy's the creator of the internet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also the other stuff I've heard. Inconvenient truth. It's the movie he made. <laughs> don't look up, dude. He, yeah, seriously, he didn't make that movie, but I'm sure he loved it. Does Bill take his weather Isn't machine? Isn't it awesome with him? that? Yeah. What's yeah. it, pal? Yeah. He when he leaves New England, if he leaves New England, no, does Bob he take probably his owns that. Yes. Yeah, I was going to the weather machine. I was going to. Yeah. That was going to be my question. That would have been a real ambush question. Mm -hmm. So how do you control the weather up mm -hmm. here? Tell me. Bill Polian told me that you guys control the weather up here. He might have pooped his pants on the air. Robert Kraft. Yeah. He was sharp, dude. He talks slow. Yeah, he's still with it. You know what I mean? He he talks. I don't know if that's how he always talks. Yeah. 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 He's always talked this way? As long as I know Ooh, him. Yeah, I mean, at least from 2008 and on. He still, though, like, the questions I was asking, like, obviously. Yeah. It's just like Jim Irsay. Like, if you can get past how he's talking, like, the message that's coming through mm -hmm. is, like, one that is, you know, coming from a place that probably knows sh more shit than you do. So, like, yes. should listen, you know? Bingo, yeah. Should absolutely listen. Especially when it comes to, like, football and stuff. It's like How about dude, Bill Belichick though? Whenever he was up there, dude, it's unbelievable. That was a cool moment. That, uh, he was seriously great. like he was that great. was the best Belichick like in public speaking that I have ever seen in my entire life. Is Lombo still on his show right now? We should have him on tomorrow. We'll have Lombo on tomorrow. Yes. I wonder what his takes were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. Bill on the show, like yeah. the people that know Bill, yeah. how Bingo. they feel about him on game day. Yeah. I wonder. I I would assume it's just like yeah, it's Bill. Yeah. Because they, they I'm. Is that how you? Yeah, yeah. He was pretty good on uh, the top 100 too. Yes, yeah. with Rock, with Eisen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They won an Emmy, I think. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they won an Emmy for that thing. Yeah. Every, a lot of people are saying he needs to just go do TV. Go do TV. It's like I'd like to say if he's going to do TV, we would certainly like to get involved in that. Yeah, yeah. but also a too I don't know if he's going to just yeah be able to step I think away. Bill wants to give it his take on Draymond's, you know, ejection every single day and do that. There's a lot of help. jobs in TV. AJ. Yeah. There's a lot of jobs. I'm just saying, Bill's Bill to me feels like a coach. Coach is coach. Yeah. And it's always fun to think like you'll just be able to walk away. Like Aaron, you know, going in, into the Rex is trying to get back in coach every time. And Rex has a great gig and he's great at it. Well, I'm talking like these these football lifers I'll say. Oh, yeah. Like they all think like, yeah, I'll be able to just walk away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I understand. I don't need the game. And then like all of a sudden they actually start to think about what life will be like and they're like, Nope. No, I can't do that. What am I? I got to do life? I got to do like human stuff? No way. Get me back in the film. Coach and GM. So much time doing football stuff. Yeah. His whole life. You just remove that. I think none of nobody believes he's done coaching, right? No. no. He's got to no. get that record. He's so close to yep. the record. Yeah. The, without a doubt, he is going to get that record. And like you just bring up coaches calling it after being lifers. Like a lot of the times it's. I want to spend time with my family, all that shit. Like his two sons coach on the team. Mm -hmm. He does spend time with his family every day because he coaches football. How are the Cincinnati Bengals fans reacting to us? Uh, wondering what Zach Taylor was saying out there. I saw that one dude um, who normally replies to you. Drew? Yeah. 
He's a good guy. I liked him. He said you obviously took it the wrong way or some shit like that. Okay. Um, All right. All right. I'm happy to hear that. Gumpy, and, has there been any any other Bengals responses for that whole thing? We're just list, we're just reacting to what we're seeing. Yeah, there's not much. You can't debate what he said. Like he said what he said. What is uh is anything really pissed anybody off today? You know, that's always a fun time with Gumpy, because Gumpy's posting the uh live videos on my ex account or whatever. That's Gumpy's phenomenal at ripping, posting, yeah. searching, Bye. finding. I mean, he's the best in the world at it. And after, you know, it's like, pal, didn't expect a blah, blah, blah. To, or they'll be like, oh, this one's really going. Yesterday, for instance, Nebraska fans. Yeah. Very, very active. Loved it. On X. Very. Shout how's, out to the Cornhusker. How's the hashtag PMS National Filth League doing? Yeah, I wonder. No yeah. issues with it. Yeah. Okay, good. People good. are mad about J.J. Watt saying he couldn't demonstrate what a hip drop tackle is. <laughs> Suck it, JJ. Yeah, why is why you but also, always lying? Also, people are happy that he said people that don't play football are trying to make the rules. So, Ooh. Oh, so oh, I see. Yeah, the uh, wrestling and rugby people are upset because you know it's in rugby and stuff like that, and you could definitely demonstrate it. Okay. All right. Shout out rugby. Shout out rugby. It's a tough sport. Yeah, man. it is. If Travis Kelsey keeps throwing the ball and everybody else starts doing that, it's going to start looking like rugby spread out. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're going to have to start defending mm -hmm. people that are also on the, the field. It's going to be a whole new animal. Could add a little added element, but also all you need is like two of those getting pick six the other way, and all of a sudden you'll see coaches going, yep, hey, guess what we're not doing? Yeah. Ever. Never we, again. We got Never the, again. We got the first down, so we're going to line it up again mm -hmm. with a full play that we've taken. We've spent hours putting in. Mm -hmm. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to gain some yards with that one, get back in the huddle. We're going to do it again. Yep. But if you're Travis Kelsey and you got the freedom and the ability, <laughs> hey. Odell Beckham Jr. is next. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, those, yeah. Those guys with great arms. Tyreek. Tyreek can throw the shit out of a football. Yeah. I mean, just so fucking filthy, dude. Yep. Like, if that boy. It's just so many bad things that can happen. So it was close to getting this, tipped right so off. So yeah. close, yeah. It was this close to being terrible. Full speed. Full speed, <laughs> like, too. Watch this. Why it's filthy. Almost gets hit in the elbow and mm, almost gets bro. pulled. Could you imagine Dart. the narrative if that gets tipped and why he made that throw? Oh, my God. Yeah. You're right. Uh, Taylor's in the fucking stands. He's showing off. This motherfucker yep. doesn't care about winning. He got his new girlfriend in town, so he wants to say, I could throw like Patrick. Right. Script it. I appreciate the fact that Taylor Swift has fallen in love with football, by the way. Me too. Could you imagine that? She's talked a lot about it, about how big of like a fan of football she has become. She loves it. That's sweet. Welcome yeah. to football. You think she still is? After what happened? Yeah. I just, can you imagine, like, because you saw the IG post from, you know, significant others that were involved in that game. Could you, like, imagine her in that suite and they're all freaking out and she's like, what the fuck are we doing here? How? How so? <laughs> You, are you Keep saying? going. Keep going with this. You're, you're in there right now. You might as well get your way out of there. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta on, find what do you mean that was the end of the story? No, no, no I don't think so. Yeah. It seems like Everybody you're about halfway up yeah. the ladder. Nobody what do you knows mean? who you're talking about. Yeah, you, want in, you put yourself I mean, into just, a hole, and, picture, and now you're I, halfway I up the ladder. I just picture like B-Rit screaming at the top of her lungs about the refs. Who's B-Rit? T-Swift is not – you don't just do that with everybody. in the. It's not like B-Core for Baron Corbin. Yeah, that's not what you just do. And Taylor's just like, I mean, what are we doing here? There's a lot, you know. You think she thought maybe it's a football game. We need yeah, to. Yeah, maybe. I think she was probably so bummed for Trav. She was probably bummed yeah. for Trav. Bummed out. Bummed out. She was probably bummed out. Yeah. I hope she told him <laughs> that, though. Like, hey, I'm sick of listening to Brittany talk about Patrick being good at throwing the football. Can you just throw the fucking ball once on the field, please? Imagine if Taylor is like, all right, what route are you running? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's your sl why don't you run a slant for me? I got a couple you tips need to for be you. More. Ah. You need to be yeah. more. I see Tyreek do that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would be phenomenal. Yeah. We hope that she's falling in love with the game that much. Yeah, that's the yes. dream. What if she's just watching film every night? All right, so Travis, tell me why you're Watch choosing. the All-22 yeah. earlier. And, um, what if she starts using her big-ass fucking brain, too? She starts drawing yeah. up plays. Let me, show you, let me show you what the Niners are doing real quick. See, see how Kittle kind of fakes this block <laughs> and then releases inside? Like You need to be doing that, Travis. You know, but to do that, you got to set that up. you got to block first. <laughs> yeah. So we and need people. at least a good three, four plays <laughs> of you. What if she that is? That would be sick. I, I wouldn't put it past her. No. Neither would I. 
fucking genius. You watch that documentary, you're like, oh, uh-huh. big fucking yeah. brain on mm-hmm. Taylor Swift. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, Foxy's going to announce all the winners from the past week yeah. uh, on the way out of here. And as the holiday season draws near, obviously, let's continue to enjoy every single moment. Let's be grateful that we're even alive. And let's hope that if we had a bad year, next year is going to be better. And if we had a great year, we're going to continue that momentum into next year mm-hmm. and enjoy the hell out of everything. Big show tomorrow. Big thank you to J.J. Watt for stopping by today. Obviously, A.J. Hawk, the boys, you guys crushed it. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.